I mean, I don't see how we can't be happy about that. Decomposing uh, even bunker. It should. afternoon good evening raider nation as you can see there's a slight little difference right slight little little change you know turf's got on a different kind of hat you know i'm saying different shirt you know i'm not rocking that raider stuff too hard you know we still always keep it raider nation but yeah today's show is an absolute just doozy I don't I don't even know how to even begin. I could never uh intro this uh as as best as you know the real thing if you will. Um I can only do as, as good as I can from that respect when introducing this uh individual. You guys already see the ticker, so you know who's who's the uh guy for the day, right? So I'm just gonna jump right on in. I'm jumping right on in and I am going to <clears throat> Give people the synopsis, right? The the read, if if you will, because I'm sure not everybody's uh you know paid attention to it, right? So we're gonna make sure we jump right into it. And I'm gonna dive right in. <clears throat> in the heart of the Philippines, beneath the shadow of the majestic Mayan volcano, a legend was born. Angelo Reyes, a name now whispered with reverence in the halls of combat sports, began his journey in a small, vibrant village where the spirits of fighters is woven into the very fabric of its culture. From the tender age of five, Angelo's fist spoke the language of determination and resilience, and he's navigated the rough and tumble playgrounds of his youth, not merely surviving, but thriving amidst the challenges that shaped his indomitable spirit. Call of Destiny led Angelo's family to the shores of the USA, the land of the promise and the opportunity where dreams are forged in a crucible of hard work and perseverance. Angelo, with the heart of a warrior and soul of a champion, found himself in a new world, a vast mosaic of cultures and possibilities. It was here, ladies and gentlemen, amongst the bustling streets and the neon glow of opportunity that Angelo discovered his true, absolute calling. Boxing and mixed martial arts, MMA became the conduits through which Angelo channeled his boundless energy and fair spirit. The gym was his sanctuary, the, right his al the ring his altar. Under the tutelage of seasoned fighters and sage trainers, Angelo honed his skills from the precision of a craftsman sculpting his body and mind into weapons of war. His fists were not merely instruments of destruction, but extensions of his will. Each strike a testament to his journey from the humble streets of the Philippines to the sprawling urban jungles of America. Angelo's transition from fighter to trainer was as seamless as it was inevitable. Having danced with the shadows in the ring, faced down giants and tasted both the sweetness of victory and bitterness of defeat, Angelo sought to impart his knowledge, his passion, and his spirit to the next generation of warriors. His gym became a temple of transformation, a place where raw talent was refined into disciplined skill, where the heart of a lion was instilled in those who dared to step through its doors. Today, Angelo Reyes stands as a colossus in the world of combat sports, a bridge between two worlds, culture and disciplines. His legacy is not just in the titles won or the battles fought in the ring, but in the lives he has touched, the fighters he's molded, and the, and the indelible mark he has left on the heart of the warrior's path. From the vibrant landscapes of his native Philippines to the bright lights of the USA, Angelo's journey is a testament to the power of dreams, the strength of the human spirit, and the undying courage of a true fighter, ladies and gentlemen. 
You guys got in for an absolute treat today. Please, let's get ready to see this. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my guy, I'm just so excited to bring him on. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on, Mr. Angelo? Hey, Mr. Terrence Crump, thank you so much. I'm very humbled by... Uh... All the things that you were saying, and, and again, as I've told you before, I I'm not deserving of, of all such praise. Um, oh please! I, I, you know, I thank you uh, for all of you guys. You know, uh, thanks to everybody who's uh, listening right now to the Ultimate Raider Fan 32 on his podcast, Turf, as you know him in the Raider Nation world. For all of you guys who have been paying attention to all the Raider uh, content, uh, you guys would know me as Raider Transplant, but our our good old friend here, Turf. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, he was nice enough to, uh, come into the Captain Jack Rackham show while I was the guest host a couple of Sundays ago. And I surprised him because when I do interviews, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I do my homework and I got to watch a lot of his old footages and yes. all of the different, uh, ways. Cause I'm a football fan. And, and again, coming from a different sport, coming from the professional fight world of boxing and, and mixed martial arts, uh, it's, it's, it's different to be a fan of something. So when you're a fan of, of, of a sport, like I am a fan of football, I really, I look up to, you know, athletes like a Terrence Crump because I say to myself, wow, you know, like at any level, but if you, you cross that high school level, you get to that college level and then you go a next step above that. I mean, Terrence Crump, like he said, man, uh, you know, at different times, like you never know, you know, you never know what would have happened if maybe he would have played closer to this era. <laughs> maybe we're talking about Terrence Crump, the professional football player, but nah. I know that he will start to uh, start showing some of those old footages because I know a lot of you guys have been asking, um, and he's, I'm telling you, man, yeah, I surprised him that I knew about that uh, yes. Montana yeah. State versus uh, Eastern uh, Washington. Washington game where he uh he uh, he's actually the reason why they uh they won the upset it was his touchdown that led the way so so yes. i think this is his way of, of getting me back. no I, <laughs> dude this is he has no idea this is awesome I, hey look we're, we're jumping we're jumping right into this buddy we're jumping right into this okay uh so first and foremost um, what I do want to do because this is totally about mixed martial arts for the most part. We'll get some Raider stuff in there for you guys when, when possible, right? But first, I, I want to, you know, start this one because it is mixed martial arts. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu are my first two uh, loves, if you will. And I was brought in by the great Team Rabati, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai here in Pflugerville, Texas. And um, our master, our professor, our sensei is Professor Robbie Rabati. And uh, unfortunately for the Rabati family, they lost uh, you know, their, their leader, their father. Um, this is fairly recent. So me personally, I like to give condolences to the entire team Rabati and uh, Robbie Rabati family for that deep, deep, uh, tough loss. Uh, serious, uh, yes, condolences, and you know, uh, Robbie is a lot to me, uh, as uh, you know, Angelo will be able to explain to you. Nobody can take the place of that person that's teaching you something that is so intimate, scary, deadly. I mean, this is a sport where people are taking advantage of, unfortunately, uh, and I am one of the most luckiest people on the planet to have run into a team of body uh, and, and be able to train and really understand what it's about before having to go through all the ups and downs of different kinds of gyms, et cetera, and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into all of this because I want to bring Raider Transplant all the way back to the very, very beginning. I, I, I have nothing written. I have nothing scripted, Angelo. I, I'm telling you guys, I think this video, this 
this could go on all night. I don't think I don't know if y'all know about Angelo. Angelo, Angelo can talk, and I don't know if he realizes that I am about to pepper him with every and anything I can think of from this perspective because he's absolutely a legend to me. And I just can't wait to hang on to every word this man has to say about everything that brought him to where he is to this point today. There will be some ups and downs, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be afraid to shed a tear if you have to. Trust me, turf is going in with this one. So, so Mr. Reyes, Mr. Ray Transplant, tell us, how did this all start? I want to know as far back as you can remember. Where, where, where can you start? For me, um, I mean, I, I think we've talked about this before, uh, you know, privately, but um, I'm not, uh, I became a naturalized citizen, but I'm not originally from the United States of America. Um, I was born in the Philippines, right? Um, and in those mid seventies, um, there's still, I, I, I mean, if we're going to get to talking about boxing, man, yes. uh, I believe, uh, that my, my mom at the time who, um, unfortunately for me, and it's an all too common story, uh, uh, Mr. Crump, that uh, my mom had to raise me as a single parent, right? But growing up, my mom was actually quite popular uh, in her earlier career because she could have, uh, as you know, with Filipina beauty, uh, my mom, she was in a trajectory to be, she was actually uh, earlier, like even before I was born, she was already uh, on TV commercials and doing different things in that standpoint. And when she met uh, my, bio my biological father at that time, his family is one of the richest families over there in the Philippines. And the, the sad thing about it is then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the firstborn son of that family, but I guess, you know, it was, it's this weird, like the rich family didn't really like my mom because she's coming from the province. Um, so, you know, there was already a divide right there. And I think the last time I even saw my biological father is when I was seven. So, uh, I ended up growing up pretty poor. Um, but I, you know, I, I, uh, and poor in the Philippines, as you know, Terrence is, is not <laughs> yes. as poor in the, uh, in the uh, United States, but, but, uh, you know, again, I, I always give so much credit to my mom because growing up that whole time, all the way up until I, I was even in the United States, I never even thought we were poor. I, you know, I just, I just thought that, you know, like life was happy. Everybody is fine. Roof on, uh, on your head. Um, I, you know, so uh you know when we get to talking a little later on i remember after getting my black belt coming from taipei and then having to come back to the philippines and seeing how my mom had us living it really like opened your eyes to going wow the sacrifices that my mom had to go through in order for me to have the life that i had right but uh but anyways <laughs> in 1975 you're probably familiar with the thriller in manila right absolutely so, okay. So during that time, um, I believe my mom actually had the opportunity to go to that fight in the Philippines, but because she was taking care of me, she didn't go. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like, like she wasn't that big of a boxing fan. You know I mean? She's a fan of, of, of Muhammad Ali, but like, like at the time <laughs> you know, she could, she care less, but, uh, who knew it was going to end up being the fight that it was right. The legendary, um, super hot humid i mean like you want to talk about the brink of life and death for the sport of boxing yes. right i mean for for everybody who's listening to this now and 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 um mr terrence crump here is going to ask me a bunch of questions about boxing and mma but <laughs> i always like to reference it to people where i explain to them look man before you start um criticizing a sport like this it is very different than any sport that you may think you played, whether it's basketball Absolutely. or baseball or even something as violent as football, because all I got to do is show you the tape of uh, the thrill in Manila, Ali Frazier three, Oof. two people who already we could agree is already probably a little past their prime, but in terms right. of their mental, their mental and their heart as warriors, they weren't at all. They were still at that point where they're willing to die they're willing to die right? right and you if you watch it if you actually watch the old footage and you can sit and watch through 14 rounds of this grueling fight of heavyweights man these, this isn't like these weren't little guys these were 200 pound men like just beating each other and neither one was willing to say no right. neither one was willing to give up and in fact 
you know, I hate to spoil it to you guys, but spoiler alert, alert <laughs> um, going into the 15th round of that fight, it was the great Eddie Fudge who stopped it, it on Joe Frazier's corner with Joe Frazier begging not for him to please not stop it. And it was in Muhammad Ali's corner with the legendary uh, Angelo Dundee who had to keep convincing Ali just go out there for one more round. And then history is is made as, you know, well, Ali wins it because Eddie Futch stopped it. But in terms of like fight lore, a lot of us who got, you know, who had the opportunity to be in, in the boxing world, we all kind of know like Frazier and every, you know, if, I mean, who knows what would have happened too, right? Like who knows what would have happened? That's the one thing I will say is you never know. We always hear about fighters dying after a fight right. because of, the brain damage or a brain hemorrhage or and, and again when i this is what i'm saying guys is that i love football i love it as a fan and you know this uh you know terrence that when i watch it like that's great but i don't expect someone to die at the end of a football match correct okay? it's just all correct. too often real man that every year someone does die of a boxing match somewhere around the world more than one person always ends up you know a cause of death is is and 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 the sport continues so if we go all the way back to 1975 the year i was born terrence like just that ali frazier fight alone man i mean yeah. legendary uh, ali frazier three legendary and there's a story that leads up to that so um the philippines as you know i mean that the joke in the philippines is when you're growing up you're and you're going to go into the sport world you're either going to go into billiards boxing or basketball those are the <laughs> three right like those are the three and 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 we joke around sometimes that Filipinos pound for pound are the best basketball players in the world. <laughs> so, you know, we we laugh about it, but there there is. We had, I mean, we have our own Philippine league, and absolutely. And, uh, um, but I, you know, growing up, when you're a Filipino like me, I was kind of small. So my mom, before she started sending me to school, wanted to make sure that I learned how to fight, right? And fighting in the Philippines, it's kind of a common thing. Like you have to. <laughs> You have to kind of know, like, like, like. I mean, you're either gonna know one way or another, so you might as well, you might as well learn an actual art, right? And there's a lot right. of different arts you could learn. Um, my mom put me into uh, uh, karate-based martial arts when I was uh, younger in the Philippines. And I was in the Philippines until '85. So uh, in 1985, uh, for some of you old-school people who might have lived through this era <laughs> of the '80s, you might remember that we had a president named Ferdinand Marcos. Um, a lot of these youngsters don't even know who that is, right? But he was essentially um, a, 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 a terror as a leader, um, and he did a lot of really bad stuff. But the probably the most, one of the worst things he had ever done is um, he actually, on world global TV, physically uh, like ordered an assassination of of of. Uh, uh, Mr. Norman Aquino at the time um, and his wife Corey Aquino ended up going to the United Nations and begging the United States and everybody else to please help out and then that's 1985 is when what we called the people revolution was happening so mm -hmm. it was during that time that my mom was already trying to get me and at the time my little sister um, out so that we can go to the United States Right. And my grandfather was supposed to come with us. Now, my grandfather, he was the head, like the head. I, it's like higher than a mayor, but he's the, he was the head of the province of Batangas. And um, and during that time, he was caught up in that political kind of war that was happening. So yeah. unfortunately, he was one of the people that was assassinated. They ordered a hit on my grandfather. Um, you know, he was shot in the head. So it was a you know pretty traumatic time for a lot of us and um, and at the time you have to understand I mean I'm I'm like I think I'm nine at this point okay. when yeah. this is all happening so all not sure if you know man we're the same age seven yeah <laughs> okay all right all right yeah. so we're both we're both gonna head to our fifties right there you go uh, okay all right um, but uh, so anyways like when I got when I got into the United States you have to understand in 1985 going into 86 i'm a short little filipino dude right <laughs> my english is good because my mom was able to send me to a private school and in the philippines i don't know if a lot of people know this but english is like a very like you have to speak english language they force you to do it so 
it, to the school I went to, you got in trouble if you didn't speak English when you were inside the school. So you could wow. only speak my my language, Tagalog, outside of the school. Or wow. if you're talking to your friends. So, yeah. But English had to be your number one language. So I always found it funny when I came to the United States where everybody would always say, you know, because I look the way I look. Um, and at the time in the 80s, you know, we're going through Reagan and, you know, like I, I'd be lying, right? And you know, Mr. Trump, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say there wasn't a bit of racism in, <laughs> in the mid 80s. We all have dealt all with right. it. So, uh, so I, don't, I don't know. think I'm saying, yeah. I, I think I, when I say the, these things now, I feel like I'm having the pref I'm having to show a frame of reference to the newer generation of people who grew up from like 2007 on because right. everybody else it's like it wasn't that long ago guys you know right. pretty racist country <laughs> absolutely you I know, mean, like, like, hey, like it is what it is yeah it, it was what it was like it it was what it was and, and and uh and again I was very fortunate and I was very blessed that we were able to uh, come to the United States I love America I mean I I love the you know, I love being an American so um yeah. but yeah but during that time I'm short I'm small you know I'm going to get picked on. You know I'm getting picked on. Right? So, so then my mom wanted to make sure that she continued. So my martial arts training pretty much continued right there um, from 86 all the way uh, through. Uh, and that's the first base was that what Frank Mirror had talked about right there. The Kempo Karate Kempo. was the first base. Uh, and, and for again, a frame of reference for everybody who doesn't understand what that is, is so uh karate is usually known from the japanese culture right but like jujitsu is also known from the okay. japanese culture but then when you talk about brazilian jujitsu it's right. a different it's a different sect like it, it, it then it, it, yeah it, it ends up it, it ends up coming a different uh way so oftentimes uh karate as a whole gets thrown into one into one form when the truth of the matter is actually kenpo karate which is the one that came from Okinawa is a very it's a very mixed style of fighting it was really if we really go back it's one of the first forms of mixed martial arts because you're mixing a very hard form in karate in a karate base and a very Chinese style of hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, you know uh, almost kung fu like also being mixed together so then that's what uh, the Kempo karate base was like uh, and uh, and yeah, I was studying it right there in the island of Alameda, where the Raiders were about to. <laughs> after leaving, they were about to come back in '95. Uh, so yes. um, so started studying over there, uh, and then um, as you know, back in those days, uh, and I know you didn't start your martial arts journey until later after your college career, but right. um, in those days, man, they didn't even have mixed martial arts. So really, when you're fighting. You just fought. You just fought in the <laughs> tournaments that happen. Like you go to the open tournaments and then it's full contact. And then you go ahead and you just, you know, you just, I mean, like, I don't even know. They weren't even really like checking your medicals or sometimes you're now fighting in your own weight class. You know, you just, I mean, it just, it is what it is. Cause, cause really when you think about martial arts, um, it's, it's about your skill base, right? Your, how good are you skill wise? more so than maybe even weight and, and height and everything else so um uh and then uh I, I was telling you like during those early years i already started getting a chance to teach it at 14 right going right. into my high school year and the fun raider story that i always share is i got a chance to meet john gruden in 98 so i graduated wow. in 94 and in 98 he's so 95 they go to alameda Right. right uh the the headquarters is right there over there on uh on on one forgot the exact street address but it's on it, we called it bay farm island it was on the other side you had to cross the bay farm bridge and then uh right over there is uh the raider headquarters so in 98 when gruden came in mm -hmm. he wanted the linemen the defensive backs and the wide receivers to learn how to do karate like hand to hand how right. to understand inside leverage and how to use your hips. So I, I was one of the teachers at the time. I was still in the, I was a, what we would call a head instructor, which you're familiar with that terminology, right? Um, I was the head of the dojo in Alameda. So I was, a, I was one of the people that got to go. Little did my martial arts, uh, 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 my other martial arts uh, teachers at that time, they didn't really understand. I was a huge Raider fan. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they have no concept because they're not, Raider. they're not a football <laughs> fan. So they can throw right. it. They, 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 you know, they're looking at these athletes and they're like, sure, we're going to go teach them 
uh, you know, some hand to hands, right? But for me, I was like, oh my God, that's Desmond Howard. <laughs> <I've been laughs> you know, like, and I'm having a one on one conversation. Desmond Howard's asking me, like, hey, man, so explain this to me again. Like, how do you yeah. use inside leverage when you're running? And, and, and it was crazy. It was just crazy to me. So, so at the time, uh, um, you know, unfortunately, like, had I, I honestly for me, if I was the head of the entire, you know, how like you're with the team or body and then there's the head of it, right? That right. You were talking about earlier. If I was the head of our system at the time, I'd have just said, I'm willing to teach the Raiders for free. <laughs> you guys have the resources that you want. I just want to be a part of the organization. Can you yes. please allow yes. me? To put the Raider logo in our in our karate uniforms. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I would I, I would have just I would have done anything for him. You know. I, can I please uh, you know just have lunch with uh, Mr. Davis like you know, <laughs> you know once a month or something? Like yes. I, I'd have done it for anything. But it was it was a very fun experience. And then um, and then during that time and that so that's ninety eight. The next time I actually got to be with the Raiders again wasn't until. Uh, Trace Armstrong became one of my martial arts student, students, and uh, okay. that was in 2003. So shortly after the Super Bowl, and uh, I got to go through that. Uh, the, I got to go to every game. So I don't know if you remember this being a, a Raider fan, but they used to do those lunches or those like after game meals with the families next to the airport in that mm -hmm. in that ballroom. So I went to every single one of those. It was crazy. Like you know, Jerry Rice would just be walking by and. You can just have conversations with everybody. So it was pretty, I mean, it was, it, it was definitely very fun. But, um, but as far as the boxing and the MMA goes, I, uh, when you're like, like, you know how you ended up becoming doing, um, jujitsu for 16 years and then took you 15 years to get to the black belt. Right. But you, you probably during a certain time, uh, a certain period, you always want to learn another form of martial arts to kind of enhance the martial arts that you yes. already know. Right. absolutely 100 okay so um so for me going from uh kempo karate and then advancing it to a kung fu level and then going to the world kung fu headquarters in taipei right um around this is around 96 uh and like i told you i went back home to the philippines in 97 without ever realizing what it was like for my mom like you know just i just grew up like my mom just treated me like everything is fine. Never made me feel like we were poor. Never made me feel like we were struggling. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. Very, sh the strength of a single mother, like how how a single mom can really unite the entire family to, Absolutely. hey man, don't complain, work hard, you know, just shit your mouth, work hard and grind and go get it. Um, but when I got a chance to go back because of all of my martial arts journey uh, from testing in China to coming back going through japan um i went to the philippines and when i saw where my mom raised this uh, right. uh terrence it was crazy man because then you like you grow up in the united states and then you 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 kind of like when they talk about like the the poor areas of the u.s like i understand like the right. like, don't get me wrong there are some really poor areas in the united states 100 percent economically challenged for sure but in the philippines <laughs> the people were living in the trash dump man yeah. like i mean it, and it's different and it's a common thing it's like normal right like that and there's some of the happiest people and then there's some of the most trusting people too like they're not gonna rob you because just like what would they rob you for you know like that's not their the their base or their. the way of thinking as a filipino you don't think that way you just it's don't not their that dna way. It's no, not in the DNA. Yeah. The culturally, and it's a very religious based culture too. So, you know, we're, you're always, you're, you're always afraid that God will strike you down. Um, um, <laughs> and some, you know, something worse is going to happen to you if you do, right. something, if you do something criminal or bad. So, um, but anyway, uh, I want to say like, it's, uh, right before that I started wanting to incorporate boxing because, and here's, and here's why I want to talk to you about it because you told me the reason why you got into Muay Thai is in your head you were thinking and this is you coming off of playing college uh ball right you're playing right. you're playing college football in montana state um you know you finish your last game in that in that epic uh in that epic back and flow game against montana right yes. um uh, yes. and then yeah and then you were like well i want to learn how to box you know and you want to learn how to box so in your mind you thought that muay thai 
was equivalent to boxing. Now, for me, coming from the martial arts background, I, I mean, again, I'd already, I've already gone from Kempo Karate, Kempo Karate to Kung Fu, right? So I yeah. understand, like, you know, you could, you could pretty much watch a, a, a martial arts set, whether it's jujitsu, and you'll understand the base of where it's coming from. When I, when I started to look through Muay Thai to be something that maybe we could incorporate right away the one thing i had that i said wow this would be really tough for me to teach this to all my students mm -hmm. is it's so punishing it is one of the most punishing arts you can take and if, and if you take it in thailand a lot of people man, your career is over by the time you're 18 years old or <laughs> 19 over. years old because because your body is just like done hammered like like completely injured, done. right um so i didn't want to do that i i didn't want to teach that so then I got into learning how to box and, and then understanding the principles of boxing and converting the principle, the principles of boxing. It's really neat because now looking back at it, having had the experience of, of uh, being able to learn from, uh, you know, the legendary Freddie Roach. Right. right. And then being right. able to learn from uh, the late, great uncle Roger Mayweather. Right. And, yes. and, and learning from all of these amazing people like. I think that for the most part, people who watch the sport of boxing, they look at it and they think it's a common sport. Right. And they don't really understand, don't understand that at the highest level, being a boxer is like being a samurai. You have to be so good at using your one sword cutting in one direction that it's first guy to get the cut wins the game. Like that's, <laughs> you know, and, and it's always life and death. Yes, it's never a game. It's ne like at the highest level, it's never a game. It's right. like there's no way I'm going to give up, man. So, so you know, there's that one on one battle that emerges that only two people could really do right. in a squared in a squared circle. Right, as right. Said, exactly right? the square uh, circle. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so 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 um, so again, to, you know, because I don't want to talk too long, so I, no, I, I don't want to give you a chance to ask the questions, but. About 2004, I'd been doing really well, training some of my students, bringing them to Colorado um, right. at the Olympic Training Center. We're always going to the different tournaments across the nation, yeah. holding gloves and blah, blah, blah. Um, a couple of my fighters end up being ranked. And in 05, I brought some of my fighters after a police athletic league national tournament uh, in Oxnard, California. I said, mm -hmm. hey, guys, want to jump in the car and let's go meet Freddie Roach, right? <laughs> so, then, so then we go into Wild Card Gym. Uh, during that time, most people don't know. Like this was the, at a time when Freddie Roach was not super rich, Freddie Roach, and exactly. in fact, it's well documented. He was like kind of poor, Freddie Roach, and he was living in the gym, right? Um, and uh, and that's where I got to build that relationship. And this right. is and during that time, I got to tell you, uh, Mr. Crump, 05 to 012, 011 is some of the greatest fighters you will ever see <laughs> oh, go to a gym man like oh, it, was, it was the craziest time so um it was in 07 that he took one of the amateur fighters that i'd been training and wanted to train them professionally and actually yep. turned uh uh had her become uh his second his first ever filipino world champion his first ever filipino american world champion but his second ever female fighter only to see a record Right. It's Lucia Riker, then her, then and to her. So, um, so I got to learn through all of that. I got to watch everything and learn everything, and 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 it was it was really fun. So, so I figured that's what you you know you're gonna ask me some questions yes. about boxing. I'm sure. asking you questions during that time. You, you're probably like already watching it, and there's probably it's, some storylines that you want to know. Absolutely. So, Dude, is you know. So and, and, and I'm so, I want to address the chat too. I want to thank everybody who's yes. in the chat so far. I see you guys. <laughs> Who's, who's saluting me um thank you so much and if there any of you guys have any questions just put it on the chat yes, um uh, exactly if it gets to be right. a little boxing mma heavy just understand again this isn't my show man i'm, <laughs> I'm used to giving you guys raider content too because i'm a raider fan but this guy wanted to hey. ask me about boxing and mma so you know this, what kind of a friend would I be if I can't if I can't answer some of these <laughs> questions? So dude. go ahead, Mr. Crump. No, ahead. absolutely. This show is it's show and tell. It's questions. Just ask. You, you guys heard Angelo, right? He said, "Hey, if it were up to me, I'd be giving these Raiders training for free." Can we put the patch on? Look, this is this is show and tell as well, ladies and gentlemen. I got a few little cool things over here, and it just so happens he brought that up. So I thought. You know, who would I, why would I not 
give the fans what they're looking for when it comes to some things. Look, you you talked about that. This is a Raiders gig. This is a a, a, a Raiders gi. Yes. This oh, is what? Gi. This is my gi. Right? Now that is awesome. It's got the, that is awesome. It's got the senior body there, but also uh, on the pants, I got the Raiders patch. That's Raider awesome. Nation, baby. But, but last awesome. but not least on this gi, because as a martial artist, we got we gotta look good, right? Hey, if if, if, if Muhammad Ali, we gotta it's look good. Really good. It's, very, it's uh, actually a very martial arts thing. It's very yeah. important to look good. But this is the interior of my gi. Oh, Raider Nation, Nation till I die. And then it's got all the awesome. holes and bones of all the other teams. We whoop ass them. But this wow. is my group, man. This is one of my official uh, custom, super duper custom geese uh, made by Roll Bliss. And shout out to Mo and Roll Bliss. I love those guys. Shout out to Mo and Roll Bliss. That yes. is awesome. I, um, I do not give free advertising to anyone. But if you are a part of martial arts and you love, uh, you know, geese, any kind of equipment, attire, Check out Roll Bliss. Let, now, let me let, let me yeah, ask you this, Kirk. Did you absolutely? Is that a gi that um you actually competed in? And is there yes. a video of you competing? Oh, I that wish. is that is crazy. I, know, I wish. I, and, and hey, it's not too late because it is certified. I can wear that in IBJJF. Okay. Uh, it's certified. That's one of the other reasons why I'm giving you guys this plug on uh, Roll Bliss, Mo Mo Siddiqui. Check him out. Tell him I sent you. Um, you're not going to find a better gi. And, and again, awesome. the, the thing about it is he literally gets you exactly what you want. I, he went through the heavens and hells to get all those pieces. The interior of my gi is lined with the it, 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 I'm just telling you guys. That's awesome. Not many people can do that. You know what I mean? Awesome. I've been very fortunate. You know what I'm talking about. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. You don't get these kind of blessings. Gi. Depending on your martial arts and what you're competing in, having the uniform, especially if you're competing within that uniform. Again, when, when we're talking about martial arts history, man, I'm talking about thousands of years of martial arts. Yes. History. I'm not talking about like, oh, well, you know, it started in the 1960s. I'm like, no, no, right. no like, like fighting is a it, it's a long historical art and uniform of fighting is very important to that. So right. in nowadays, it is very difficult to actually like for me, even still, um, some of the gear that I would choose to uh, have to purchase back when I was in it prior to my uh, to my liver transplant. So for uh, so again, just for context for everybody who doesn't know who I am, I I'm right now 20 months recovering from liver transplant. Yes. Um. I as you guys know, I've had a lot of time in terms of my recovery, so I've used a lot of that energy and my Raiders fandom to give you guys information and stats on a lot of the shows, whether I go on Protect the Shield with Chris Kimber or uh, your or the Ultimate Raider Fan 32 on your show, Turf, sure. or Captain Jack Rackham's. I mean, like, name the show, and I'm giving those facts. But yes, in my prior life, prior to me almost dying, literally being told I had less than 30 days to live, and right. then having the second chance at life because of organ donation, um, uh, I was a martial artist. I was in deep into the boxing world. I was deep yeah. into the mixed martial arts world. And as Turf showed you, I mean, it's not hard to Google it, guys. Like, I mean, I, I and Turf knows, I, I don't even like bragging about it. I don't even yeah. like talking about it because honestly, for me, I, it's a very martial arts mentality. And I think Turf right. has the same mentality where it's like, okay, we did it. Now that's over. Let's move on. Like, you know, like yeah. you don't, you don't talk back about you don't really talk uh, about it again unless you're like having a meal with your buddy turf and you guys are just kind of chatting right then you talk about it but you don't know, like it, this is not like party talk man i'm not <laughs> i'm not going to the draft with chris let's say and then like you know a, 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 let me tell you guys about the old days like no man if you're if you're a martial artist you, you don't even talk about it you, you actually right. don't say anything at all because you don't nope. even really want anyone to know, which is also another secret of being a real martial artist. If exactly. no one knows what you got, then exactly. if something were to go down, 
it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to come exactly. out because yeah. nobody even expected. Like, who the hell is that little Filipino guy? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely I'm right. Look that dude, right? You know. Yep, and trust me, we're gonna get into all of this, guys. I, this show is probably gonna be the longest show ever. Hopefully, uh, Angelo doesn't kick me off. Uh, because I got a ton, ton. I mean, all right, all again, right. We're, so we're going back. I want, I want to talk about it all, man. Do you remember your very first tournament, your first official real match? Yeah, Whether it was, oh, yeah, the, yeah oh, exactly. Man, let's, in the eighties, bro. In the oh yeah, no, talk about it all. I want the nerves. Did you have nerves? Like, yeah, tell me yeah, and, you, and you know like, what I'm talking about I when you do. get nerves, right? So, so <laughs> I gotta paint this picture because most people don't even like, especially like people who were born from 05 to later. They don't understand that tournaments were done in like, in like those hardwood floors of like a basketball <laughs> court because you usually yeah. have to go. The, the 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 federation had to go uh um, rent out like a gym right <laughs> or like at the time i think was, I, I, i'm trying to think because we had to do it all it was all of northern california so i'm trying to remember um it wasn't the richmond civic auditorium although i've had some epic battles at the richmond civic auditorium um mm -hmm. uh, so some of you guys who, who who grew up there in the bay area you would know that place I'm trying to remember, it, it might have been in Vallejo. Vallejo, uh, it, it's one of the, either one of the colleges or one of the high school. I think it was, might have even been Vallejo High School. I'm not sure, but um, but it was on that, uh, it was on that hardwood floor, man. And yeah. you had to compete, like, karate gi and all, like, uh, uh, and then you had to compete in technique. Technique, kata. Um, I, at the time when I, when I, in the very beginning, I didn't get to do weapons. So technique, kata, um, and then uh, it wasn't until later that I you get to do sparring because at mm -hmm. that time, they won't let you spar until you get your purple belt. So, uh, but my first competition, yeah. Yeah, like uh, technique, I think is a very important part of, of it uh, because if you don't understand base, if you don't understand the base of stance, right? Understand balance understand right. how to strike uh, you know and what the purposes of striking are then you won't know and then showcasing that in a in kind of like an essay format so to say for martial arts um it teaches you structure um but yeah but like uh, like it was i think it was like the next tournament after that i got to do my first sparring competition and there was two forms there was there was actually three forms there was uh no contact half contact and full contact Mm -hmm. and i did i we would practice half contact but i i i didn't like half contact that much if i'm going to be honest because <laughs> half half contact to me was like so you're asking me to sort of hit turf like, <laughs> like, like I mean, i'm either gonna hit turf or i'm not gonna hit turf like, exactly. like you got you got to pick one or the other right? not a <laughs> like, so i i really did not like that at all and i i don't think i competed much in half contact non-contact right. i did uh and non-contact showed control so that's, it's that, that's where you had to be able to go full on, but right before you hit them, you have to pull it out, and then you have to do it fast enough that it's recognizable to five judges. I don't know if you remember this this style, right? And then, of course, we did the full contact, which you guys saw. Um, you know, Bruce Lee would do this, Ed Parker yes. would do this. Like, this is the old, like, this is the 1960s, 1970s format of how karate worked. You go right. into these tournaments, and then you just you basically just, like, you know, you're hitting each other, and uh, it probably was not the healthiest form of, <laughs> At all. of, of, of combat. But, but, it, it, but uh, you know what? It taught you, it, it taught you a lot of discipline, taught you a lot of skill. It, it, it definitely taught you how to how to understand the idea of focus. And, I, and right. I think when I bring this back to like, for example, um, you know, Terrence Crump there playing football when he was in San Diego Mason being the, uh, you know, uh, running the most yards in 94, right? There's a level right. of focus you needed to have yes. in order to know I'm about to get the ball. And when I get the ball, I'm gonna go hit that hole. And then everything after that is at first when you're learning it, it's reaction but when you get really good right. everything that you do you see it before it even happens right. and then you 100%. you 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 move so, so when you ask me like beginning a lot of it is you know if you're talented and i and, and fortunately for me i was I, I was pretty talented as a as a young man doing martial arts um a lot of it is reactionary because you're reacting to the 
to the move like oh shit like you know so and so just threw a shot and then you're doing the move that you 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 learned but right. when you get better and you get closer to that black belt like you got right and you know you do this in your jujitsu too like you start to actually see what somebody is trying to do before yeah. they do it so then you're yeah. able to counter it like seven steps before they thought about it and yep. then and then later they'll ask you they'll be like yeah <laughs> dude i was trying but i couldn't and then and then, and then that's when you gotta tell them like listen yep. man like look it took me like six years to understand that this was this is the this is the normal progression of how everyone so thinks. then this is what you were doing so all i really did is i already I already took this shortcut to this highway and I, I exited over here. And then, you know, you, you there wasn't anything you're going to be able to do, man. I was going exactly. to hit you with that point every single time because there, you had no chance, buddy. You, you, yep. you know, so, um, so, so, uh, so a lot very, of times. Very people, humbling, man. It's very humbling. It's very humbling. It's very humbling. <laughs> and I think a lot of times, too, a lot of people nowadays, and, and in fact, let me bring it back to football to some of you guys. Uh, nowadays, a lot of you guys are like sitting there and you go, hey, let's trade the form to go get Jaden Daniels. And my problem is Jaden Daniels isn't a black belt to me. He's right. still progressing. So yeah. I don't know. He might suck, right? Like versus go get me a black belt. Like at least Tom Brady knew what he was doing. That guy was a black belt. <laughs> so at, le at least I know like, man, nah, maybe he's not as fast, but the way he sees the game is yes. fastest, right? Yeah, so it's the same thing. It's like when you're doing martial arts, or especially in the in the in that level of fighting. Like, if I, I would rather have someone who's seen it. Correct. I've seen these strikes so many times. I've been hit with this so many times. Like, I actually know it before the guy's even thinking about throwing it. Right. And if you if you then take two different level fighters who have had like similar experiences, and then they clash. That's when you get like Ali Frazier, man, because that's man, fights. That's yeah, where the now it's like it's not fights. really the physical game that's entertaining for me. It's the mental game. Yeah, You're like, exactly. oh, oh man, he set that up, and now he's setting him up here, and and at the same time as they're playing this mental chess, they're also like their bodies are getting hammered. Correct. So it's a game of attrition. It's like, how much more can you take, man? How much more yes. punishment can you take? Um, which is kind of like what we sort of saw a little bit in this uh, Fendura, uh, yes. um, Sebastian Fendura, fight. Tim Zhu fight this Tim last Zou. weekend. Although, again, guys, like, I don't disrespect those youngsters, but I've seen way bloodier, uh, harder fights than that. Like, like I've, I've seen even harder battles than, I mean, like, that, that was a hard battle, though. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to say that it wasn't hard, but... Um, I think that the level of fighting or the level of boxing that we watch now, and I think you asked me this privately before where I was like, right. look, man, like, it's not like I don't like Devin Haney, but Devin right. Haney doesn't, doesn't bring me to the same feeling that I would have when I would watch Juan Manuel Marquez. Right. Haney, not at all. Not at all. Not even close. You know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't give me that Eric Morales feel, that, Mike, no. that uh, Marco Antonio Barrera feel, like, like you know like i like you dude but i don't know man you're you're a little soft to me driving I, that you know, like, i'll be honest man yeah I, I don't think we're going to see any of those kind of guys anymore moving forward and it's very unfortunate i mean we were blessed with watching some absolute warriors in boxing i i mean man we uh the golden years am i right i i don't think there's a better uh time to live when it comes to the sport of boxing as far as right those 70s 80s 90s it doesn't get any better than that uh, i mean yeah. I, I mean it's sad right it's sad to say that if we talk to someone like let's say rundown's age now right and i were to ask him about boxing he'll probably say the word jake Paulden, <laughs> which is which is to me it's just sad because it's like yes. like i don't that and again i say that to never dis i i will never disrespect anyone who is willing to get in the ring Absolutely. because that shit is real. It's like, it's, you can't fake getting hit. You're going to get hit and it is going to hurt. <laughs> like, like I, that's, oh, really? you know, uh, so I, I would never uh, say that, but to try to put his, uh, Jake Paul's name in the same breath as Mike Tyson uh -huh. to me is insulting. It's like, like, look, man, that's ridiculous. Then, then why don't Monica. I just tell you that I think that the, 
greatest, you know, whatever quarterback was, uh, I don't know, like Jake Paul too. You know what I mean? Like, like this doesn't make sense to me at all. And, and, and I, I don't under, I, I don't, I, I'm one of the people, you know, I'm very old school when it comes to this. I don't support yes. it. Me I don't, I don't want to put any money behind it. It's nope. like, Hey, do you, that's fine. If you have an, uh, this, this new generation of Twitch audience that wants to see someone who didn't go through the grind of the oh, amateurs right. to go to the Olympics, to go ahead and then go get his first crack at a world title and then right, on and right. on and on to finally have the honor of getting a chance to fight someone as great as Mike Tyson, right? right. Like that's the way the progression and ranks of, of boxing works, right? Yes. But in the new era, it's like, Hey, this chef wants to fight this <laughs> porno star, and that somehow that's boxing. And it's yes. like, well, it's not, man. And I'm it's not gonna support it. And you I'm know, I, I agree. I, you know what? There is one thing that I will say for these guys. Um, maybe they are the ones that get us back to the reality of what we really want to see in this sport, right? Let's be honest, right? Let's maybe they bring the money that will. You know what I'm saying? Get the juices flowing again when it comes to to the boxers and what they deserve, because eventually people will understand what is entertainment, aka Jake Paul, right? And and the and the guys that are just doing this for fun, if you will, uh, versus the guys that literally are putting their lives on the line yeah. every day of the week, twice yeah. on Sunday. So yeah, it's I, I'm hoping that it goes in that direction, but right, one can only hope. And that's a big thing. Like when Turf just said that to you guys, um, at the highest level, when you're around these warriors, these 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 boxers who are laying it on the line, and I'm talking about these boxers are coming from Mexico and Argentina and Japan and the Philippines. Like they're not trying to really fight for fame. Like that's not what you're doing. You're trying to fight so you can put food on the table. It is a means to an end. You're getting as good at your crowds. Right. You can, you know, you can put rice. I mean, Manny Pacquiao, that's what he used to fight for. He was fighting for not money, but for bags of rice. Like, like that's like, like this is just, it's, 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 I think that when I see a Devin Haney as young as he is being able to drive a super eight BMW or whatever, it, it doesn't relate to me in that, you know, Marvin Hagler didn't exactly grow up in the greatest part of, the right. East Coast, you know, yeah, and yeah. being a black man at that time, too. I'm like, come on, man. Like, of course, yeah. Marvin Hagler is the way he is. Like, and, and you don't want to mess with that guy. Like, you don't want to mess with, with Marvin, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, man. Like, you don't even want to look at him wrong. Exactly. You know? <laughs> man, I, man, I, ladies and gentlemen, I have another boxer aficionado. Uh, and obviously, Mr. Reyes knows exactly who I'm referring to. His name is John, Iceman John Scully. Shout out to Ice. Shout out to Scully. Uh, yeah, he is well known for helping out fighters. And we're, we're sitting here discussing and talking about, right, fighters that are putting their lives on the line. You got your Gerald McClellans. Uh, there are a lot of guys that nobody knows about anymore that they are literally on their deathbed and their their family members you know my sisters brothers people are taking care of them what i love that john scully does is he gets any kind of aficionado uh, you can imagine uh and i have some show and tell i absolutely could not wait to bring my show and tell because right. again this is every dollar that i'm showing as far as what i've purchased specifically went to a boxer that absolutely needed it again i don't know if people know boxing was my first love period over football all of it it's weird i never really truly tried to do it uh got in plenty of fights i can't wait to tell a few of my stories right and and, and discuss with angelo because i i can't wait to hear some of his right we've all had fights right we've all thought we knew how to fight for angelo he started early so i'm, I'm sure he knew he knew how to fight Me, yeah, there, there is a different like, yeah. there is that difference between like difference. when you're growing up in school and then um you're like okay i'm angry so i can't i watch someone make a fist versus if you study it and you guys are, you'd be surprised like in china they teach it to the kids like it's pe 
Yes. In Korea, Taekwondo is a part of their physical education program. Right. Like, it, like, that's what I'm saying is, is, is it's like it's different when you actually know, well, this is how you throw a kick or this is how you do how you do a karate trip or this is how you do a flip. Right. Like you just right. look at it as science. Yes. So then now it's not about size. It's more about like, oh, OK, so I see this guy and this is the leverage point I'm thinking of when this person attacks me this way. I'm just going to wait. And then I'm gonna wait. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna try my best not to really hurt him that bad. Right, right. Because really, when you're when you're deep into martial arts, your goal isn't to hurt someone. At your all. goal is to actually defuse them. Like you want to just defuse the situation, and you know, you start with your words, right? Start right. with defusing the emotions before Absolutely. it escalates. Because because uh, oftentimes, if you're a real, if you're a true martial artist, like. Uh, like Terrence Crump here, who's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, or anyone out there who is a real, who considers themselves a real martial artist, then you believe that you already lost if it had to escalate to a fight. Correct. If it had to escalate to a fight, you really not, now you're just like you're 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 breaking emergency. You know, you're break you're breaking glass in case of emergency. But you were supposed to be able to diffuse the entire situation. Like One. don't even like <laughs> one thing I. I yeah, one thing I always used to say, uh, 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 Mr. Crump, to a lot of my students is, if if you if you came back to me and you said, "Hey, you know, so I, I you know, I got in a fight last night, and this happened, and I got punched in the face," everybody always thinks of the situation, and my first question is usually like, "What were you doing out late that night, anyways?" <laughs> all right, you all know, right. and and then okay, so all right, now that you explain to me why you're out that late. What were you doing in that bar in the first place? Okay, and then and then now let's go to the like you start peeling the layers of the onion, and yes. you start to realize that the whole scenario never even had to happen in the first place. Right. If you'd have just made, if you'd have just taken certain paths, that was the correct path, and yes. that, ladies and gentlemen, is what being a martial artist is. It is. It is it really a true, path man. and sticking to the path. Yes. Even if it's a path that you, you know, yes, is it is it cool and fun to go party at 3 a.m. in the morning, go to your <laughs> friends at a bar? Right. Maybe. But if it ends up in a fight and you end up getting punched in the face, maybe that wasn't the best idea in the world. And why are you why are you mad at me? You know, like, or right. why are you even telling me if I'm your teacher? Because then I'm trying to explain to you, <laughs> dummy, how many times did I tell you to, right. to not oh. put yourself in this situation? Do right. That. And you know this being on the judicial jitsu man it's like i'm sure your 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 professor has told you like well you got yourself in that situation that's why right. you have to break free from the from the hold bro if you bro. never put yourself in the position if i had a penny for every time a student would ask how do you get out of something and you have to tell them you don't get that far into it to begin with i would be rich and wealthy ladies and gentlemen it's like you're already way too far past your point. <laughs> there is no eject button. There is no break glass at this point. The yeah. only thing you can do, tap. <laughs> and and that's a good thing, by the way, guys. If you guys out there who do try, if you, you, you train in any form of martial arts, there is no right. shame in tapping, man. Tap. At all. Tap at or, all. or say mate. Just like, it's cool, man. Just like, just... You live to fight another day. Do hey. not try to be that guy. No, There's or, or W's and L's. Exactly. There's W's and L's, right? We know how they go, right? Wins and losses as far as football. In martial arts, it's wins and learning lessons. Yeah. There is no such thing as losing. Because I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> there are so many levels to this that your mind can't even process. I'm, I'm just telling you. Me dealing with regular average people as a right black belt martial artist and people calling me professor is drastically different than me as a professor talk to a Victor Hugo, who just so happens to be literally the best heavyweight in the world at any jujitsu, uh, you know, realm, if you will, whether it's gi, no gi, it doesn't matter. Victor Hugo is the guy. And... I'm telling you right now, I, I've I've rolled with literally some of the best in the world at points and times. They absolutely were 100% the best in the world. And this kid, Victor Hugo, 
I don't understand it. It's the world is getting so drastically different when it comes to athletes. This is why this draft, right? And and I'm going to throw some nuggets in here for you, Raider fans, because this is this is, this is a question coming to Mr. Angelo right now, okay. as far as who is his favorite Raider of all time. But but yes, oh. just want to make sure you guys understand, man. There is levels to this, man, and. Just like football, right? I made it to a high level of you know, at college. There's levels to college football, right? That's why they have Division One, Division Two, Division Three, FCS, right? They have these levels. There's no different in martial arts, and I'm letting you know right now, I am nowhere remotely close to the level of the guys that are literally the best in the world. I've trained with them, I've worked with them, I've learned techniques from them. They are at our gym on a regular basis. You can Google it. Just like Mr. Reyes says, this is why I am by far one of the most fortunate people on the planet to walk into this martial arts world the way I have with the type of people. That, that, that part, and I can't wait to dive into that with him because, again, you don't want to just walk into any gym, ladies and gentlemen. No, you don't want to do that. That is the last thing on the planet you ever want to do is We live in an information out. era now, guys. Do your right. research feel comfortable like don't just walk in because it looks shiny and pretty do not do that the last, You're gonna get hurt. Exactly. You don't get hurt. last thing i want anybody to do after listening to us talk all night when it comes to this combat sport thing that we just adore uh don't do that yeah ask. don't do that ask. Okay. ask come to me angela anybody yeah. that is in the world to make sure you go to the right place. The reason I've lasted 16 years is because I literally have the best team on the planet. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Uh, I, I don't know any other way to explain this to you guys. I've trained all over the world. And I'm telling you right now, I have the best team on the planet. Our sister schools are at the top of the world. Everybody that is anybody that trains in jiu-jitsu right now is right here in Austin, Texas. I can assure you my team is is that is that team. So I just I had to put that out there again. Yeah, you should. You should when, you, when you speak to that, you know, like like I think like uh, let's bring it back to Raider football for yes. a lot of the chats, right? Yeah, I know you I know the that reason why I'll you ask that answer that question. But yeah, I yeah, know a lot a lot of the people that want to come play for AP or want to come play for the Raider organization is because Mark Davis is making the culture be a very professional, classy oh. culture. It's like, hey, we're gonna feed you, we're gonna give you the best equipment, we're gonna be give you the best trainers, we're gonna partner with Inner Mountain Healthcare here in Las Vegas, Nevada, so that you, we can take care of your body. They, they on on the players can bring their kids to work, so oh, they have like a little stuff. playground for the yeah, kids. The, stops, yeah, like like so so it's a culture fit, right? And 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 if you can somehow already put your mind into just focusing on the job of winning, then you take it to that to that level to that next level. And and oftentimes, like like when it comes to uh, let's say boxing, right? Because boxing is the more common thing that a lot of people know a lot of the champions that you guys will were able to recognize because they were put on tv they talk about the background of where that world was coming from but there was a time where um you had to go to learn from an eddie fudge you had to go and learn from an angelo dundee like it, like right. there was certain it's just yeah, like you, you can go to a certain level, and then if you want to find out, yeah. If you want, if you want to find out, then you got to go to the to that gym. You got to go, and to then that you're gym. gonna find out. What you know, yes. whether it was. Uh, I, I mean, it, oh. I don't, I don't believe it exists anymore. But uh, Kronk, yes, gym and, in Detroit, in Detroit, Michigan, in Detroit, like, like it was just, it was just different, guys. Like I'm sorry, like, it was just Stewart. a little different, you know. No, Emmanuel Stewart is one of my all-time favorite trainers. Great coach. Ever. Oh yeah, God, I yeah. love him. Got, got to have a uh, got got to be able to meet him before, you know, obviously, but uh, but yeah, uh, um, but what it, it, and depending and you have to like go back further than that. Like I I I don't think a lot of people realize like Ray Arcel, somebody who mm -hmm. is most That's known for name. yeah, somebody who's most known for like Roberto Duran. It's like yeah, yeah. man, go look up all the other people he worked with. Yeah, right? or what, what I like. When we talk about Freddie Roach, like Freddie is great, but you can't 
say the name Freddie Roach without saying Eddie Fudge, who trained right, him. Exactly. right? Like, and then and then when you say the word Eddie Fudge, now you got to say, oh, what are we talking about here? Joe Frazier, right. Ken Morton, like, like, I mean, you name it, and the guy right. trained him, yeah, like, 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 so that's that's why, like, do you understand how hurtful it is for me to have to subject myself at, or have to listen to some new kid talk to me about Jake Paul, and I'm like, I'm sorry, so man. You're it's just, so you're, bad. You're just hurting my feelings. Like, it's so you know, bad. Like, it's so you know. bad. Hey, so. You said, <laughs> you said a word, or I should say a name. So I want to make sure I bring this up because, again, like I told you guys, anything I've spent on boxing, I know for a fact it's going directly to a boxer that not only entertained us, entertained the whole world, and put his life on the line. You just mentioned the big name. Can anybody see what that name says? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's the great. <laughs> Roberto Duran, guys, Kansas yeah. Stone. Legend. Kansas Stone. This is absolutely a legend. Stone. Someone who, who again, let, let, let me explain, let me explain a context to everyone. And I'm, and now I'm going to give you a personal story here, Turf. All right. Yep. Even when Pacquiao was winning in those 08, 09, even up to 2010, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm on a trip to Canada for a world title fight with Freddie. And people would ask him like, well, who do you think is the greatest 135-pounder? Uh, and you have to understand, at the time, everybody's blowing up Pacquiao, right? I think, uh, <laughs> if I'm not yeah. mistaken, that might have been, like, maybe, uh, or or Mayweather retired. Because I remember being in San Diego with Pacquiao mm -hmm. when they told Manny he's now pound for pound the best. Mayweather had just retired right after the Gotti fight, right? So, yep. like, like uh, or, or it, it was like a whole sequence of events. But anyways... So in, in 2010, when they were trying to make the whole thing happen with Mayweather and Pacquiao, at that time, and it didn't happen, obviously, and Pacquiao was peaking. Like, like yes. uh, I mean, I would, I, I don't want to say mentally peaking, but w it's like when when your mind is really understanding how to, how to, the art of boxing, and your body is, is, is hitting that, that natural progression of being at your finest. Right there, there's a very small frame of time where you can now say both my mind and my body are together, and no one's beating me. It doesn't matter who you put put in front of me at this point. Like nobody's gonna beat me. So Pacquiao was in these discussions during that time, right. um, and uh, they would ask him, uh, and I would say whether it was a private conversation or even publicly, they would ask Freddie, uh, "Well, who do you think's the greatest 135 pounder? Who's the greatest?" <laughs> uh, like he would always say, "Roberto Duran." Yeah. Without a question. Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran to me is still the greatest. And again, you know, this is where if you understand the art of pugilism and you just do your homework, man, just go back and do your homework, please. You know, right? Absolutely. Roberto Duran, there are things that Roberto Duran did that was, you just, it was self-taught, I guess. Like self Yes, there was no way like the way taught. he would fight instinctually like you know how as a running back there are certain people that just understand that when you hit when 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 rubber hits road and <laughs> there's that moment right sometimes that's where you shine when running backs just know which direction to go which direction to cut which direction right. to hit which which linebacker to hit the game slows down for them that yep. was roberto duran man it didn't it didn't matter like to him it did not matter if you if you attacked him or you were in front of him in a ring, you're in for a fight, baby. Like like yeah. it's it's it, it's going down, right? And that was that was Roberto Duran, which is why Roberto Duran is so regarded to a lot of us. And again, man, I you know you bring out that glove and uh, <laughs> and I, now I I have to say to people, go look at the history of boxing and tell me anyone else who went or. Name me a group. In fact, name me five. Name me a group of five right. that went from 135 and went all the way as high as 168 pounds and That's still had the success that he had. Right? Um, and, you know, insane. yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. 
um if if you know i i you know i uh go oh, but go ahead turf because i'm talking too much no I you're not no you're not no we did brother i told you we, this gonna be a lot y'all buckle in ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Long one. look I'll, I'll get back to the original question but please you talk as you continue to talk trust me there are people listening and hanging on to these words there are people that are going to re-see this and hang on to these words we love hearing what you have to tell us all right so so <laughs> i just want to, like, favorite, I want to make sure that people there. okay i want to make sure that people could look this up and if you're if you're yes. listening to us right now we appreciate you please again go ahead and continue to be in the chat Chris, if you're still on the chat, man, yeah. go ahead and ask whatever question you want to ask. You know what? Good time to segment into that, right? Because chat lines do matter. Let's, let's go on ahead and just get them out the way early, and then we're going to make sure you answer that question as far as your favorite Raider. But Gotten Smoke is in the building. Appreciate you, man. What's up, everyone? Freddy Chavez is in the building. Raider. Raider. Oh, Let's see who else we got going on. We got Raider Ryan in the building. Salute Turf and Nation. Salute Angelo. Ray Love. Thanks, Ray Love. Hey, chat lives matter, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly why we do this. This is one of my favorites, man. I swear, Kyle Town needs to hurry up and get his, his, his joint started. But can never appreciate a true teacher enough. They are far and few in between. Huge point. Huge point. I'm trying to tell y'all, if there's any kind of advice you get from Turk, don't just go to any professor. Don't just go to any dojo. Don't just go to any anything. Do your research. Do your homework. There are actually people that you will be more comfortable with regardless of what they've done, right? Their style, et cetera, right? Those are the things that's going to matter. How can you grow in a martial artist world accordingly, regardless of all the fluff as well as all of the gruff, right? You know what I mean? That's what's important. So just pay attention to that. <laughs> TRS, Angelo and Turf, great combo. Much love to you both. Man, so. <laughs> hey, these guys support us, Angelo, like no other. They they stay, stay with us, man. And I, I just can't. I, I just appreciate can't. you guys. I really oh, do. And, and again, I want you guys, I mean, you know, engage in the boxing exactly. question. But I was, I was going to say this and then I'll let you ask that yeah, now, no. or I'll answer that question. But. Yeah. When we're talking about Roberto Duran, because uh, Terrence was so nice to bring out that glove of Roberto Duran signing it. Uh, yes. Amazing. I want you guys just to think back. OK, so go back to uh, late 1970. I, I'm going to watch the year. I think it was 79. <laughs> it might have been 79. But Roberto Duran beats the great Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. Defeats him um, in uh, the brawl in Montreal. Right. Um, it's a very famous thing. OK, now I'm going to bring it to football, guys. <laughs> years later, Roberto Duran is 37 years old. And you guys know of this guy by the name of Saquon Barkley. Wow. Who is now playing for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. What a lot of you football heads might not know is his uncle is the great Iran Barkley. <laughs> and yes, guess sir. who beat him at 37 years old at the 160-pound weight class? Yes. Roberto Duran. Now, how many people can say they went from beating Sugar Ray Leonard at 135 to beating uh, Iran Barkley at one uh, at 160? That don't happen. In, this, in, in, this, in that span, by the way. It's like you're 37, and then you're here. You're like, there's a level of, of boxing, of that boxing. Like I, like I said, man, Duran is like... Like it's it's I mean like I can't even like I can't even think of too many other people that you can no. ever compare you Roberto Duran to. No, like, you can, you can, and that's the thing that people see. They forget this stuff because they look at it as in the afterlife. You know, whatever the case you want to you know view it as. But I I can assure you the golden ages of boxing has come and gone. Unfortunately for us, we've seen now, the best of boxing. Now to be fair though, Turf, I don't want to take away uh, internationally. I think that when when Turf is saying that he's saying point. the golden ages of boxing in the United States is probably Correct. gone. Like cool. there are some amazing matches that you can watch right yeah. now. That's in the UK, 
or uh, that's happening internationally. Like I said, like if you guys want to see a, a monster that's a 118 pounder uh, between he can fight between 118 and 122 right now is Inui in in the way. Oh, I mean, that guy's a, a <laughs> we'll talk about a Japanese <laughs> terror, like a Japanese version of a Manny Pacquiao or a Mike Tyson. He's just knocking folks out. He's a monster. And, and and to say that a dude can weigh 118 pounds and he 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 actually you know his opponents are scared. It don't make when, it. when they fight him, you know, right? In so, a way is in a way is definitely a specimen. I don't know what this. I don't. I don't know what he's eating, man. I don't know what I, that, I don't know what's in that in, in them sushis. We can't figure it out, bro. Because yeah, he is. Uh, he's definitely one of my top fighters right now. Yeah, right now, right now. Yes, and, no. yes, and, no. and again, it's it's sad that if if we do, like I like I guarantee you, you can walk out your door right now, turf, go ask someone, hey, who's a boxer? You know, and I'll guarantee right. you, they won't say his name. Nah, and the out. reason why they won't is because it's not being shown in the United States right. enough, and it's not being shown as a normal thing, and it's not being marketed because, you know, I'm sorry to say, but currently right now, for the majority part of the sport, probably as a whole, the best boxers in the world are probably in outside of the United States. That's correct. But there are individual names like a Terrence Crawford where <laughs> ah, you're like, well, it doesn't matter what part of the world it is. Yeah, Terrence Crawford. And that wasn't a, yeah, that was, that was a bad button push. Trust me, Terrence Buck Crawford, for the people that don't know, is my favorite fighter. I You brought it up. I got to bring it because, look, I got to let y'all know, it was my first fight for him. This was my. Oh, first. okay. This was Perfect. my. First. Go to Spencer. I went to this fight, and there was no way I would have given up both of my limbs to go to this fight. I just want y'all to understand this was my mecca because this is my favorite fighter of all time. I'm letting y'all know right now. There are a plethora of reasons as to why Terrence Buck Crawford is is my favorite. Uh, one of the major ones is the fact that. Two of my best friends that I've ever met in my entire life are born and raised in Omaha. And I'm not talking, okay. you know. Yeah. Okay. So I've been Shout to out Omaha, Omaha South Nebraska. South Nebraska. Exactly. <laughs> I know he's usually watching. He's usually around. He's mad. He's missing this. He knows what I'm talking about. He's about an hour away. I have a very special place in my heart for Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, this kid, I'm telling you. Terrence Crawford, nobody comes close, in my opinion. And, and right, Angelo and I, we're gonna have we oh, privately talk okay. right now. Um, okay, I mean, we, yeah. we got into the specifics of it, right. but right. within the hundred and forty-seven pound weight class, currently, right, right now, today, right this I the, there's nobody that would nobody be comes Crawford. Close. Although, although I can't not recognize one of the really good up and coming boxers right now. Uh, some of you guys know him as, as Jerron Boots. Oops, um, he's <laughs> really good, man. I mean, like, I can't, I can't even lie. Like, that kid, if he's given crazy. an opportunity, I don't know what would happen. I, I agree. I, I, would, I would definitely have to say that I think Terrence would beat him. Right. But you know, like, I'm again, no, I'm objective. You are absolutely right. And this is why Raider Transplant is who he is, because, see, he's not just going to give you the feel good. No, he's going to tell you exactly how he feels. He, he hurt my heart with Devin Haney. I'm not going to lie, because honestly, I see I already knew what he was saying. And, and I, I, you know, I'm bringing this out there. I hope you don't mind me saying, right, you just we're, we're going to be all over the place. So y'all just going to have to go with this. But look. Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are about to have a fight. Yeah, April 20th. April. Oh, hopefully it happens. Hopefully it, it, I hey, know. Terp, it was always a rule for us in the boxing world that until the two fighters actually made it inside in the, the ring. That's when. Both Freddie and Roger Mayweather used to say that. that a million like, times. Until they're both actually inside the ring, then the anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. Fight yes. can get thrown off, and it just happened this past weekend, guys. Tim Zhu was it, not supposed to fight Fendora. No. That was a two-week uh, last-minute opponent. His original mistake. opponent was supposed to be Keith Thurman. Right. So if you're a fighter and you're getting ready for a orthodox, older 
different style of fighter, and then all of a sudden they throw a lefty six foot the tower five, inferno. you know, younger guy. <laughs> like, you know, man, you weren't preparing for that. That's, so that's literally like if we sp if we're the Raiders and we spent four days preparing to play Kansas, and then Roger Goodell goes, "Hey, man, I changed my mind. You guys are playing the Chiefs." Or, I mean, you're playing the Eagles now, right? Why did, his like, team let him, team? why did his team let him take that fight? I, I th That's another question we have to discuss. We have to discuss why on God's green earth Tim Zoo's people let him take that fight. I, I'm sorry. It's just the dumbest thing I've seen in quite it, some time. You know, it's, it, it's one of the things about boxing that... Um, it's not like any other sport in in that it can be regulated in terms of the matches. Right. The matches are being okay. So just understand this to everybody listening right now to the Ultimate Raider Fan Thirty Two uh, YouTube channel. Um. Uh. And you're and we're and I again. I know you guys are used to discussing Raider football. Believe me, <laughs> I would be discussing Raider football with you. But <laughs> our host, uh, uh, Terrence. Here uh, wants to go ahead. Mr. Crump wants to go ahead and talk about boxing and MMA. So, uh, right. you know, the, the, the question is, why is it in boxing this happens? Because yes. boxing is like wa going to watch your favorite rock and roll or R&B artist, right? Like, you don't know who's going to be open the opening act, you know, you know but you want to go buy a ticket to whoever. Like, you, you know, whether it's you want to go buy a ticket to watch Boys to Men or if you want to go... Uh, buy a ticket to go watch Taylor Swift, and that's what boxing is kind of like, right? Like you're ex you were expecting to see, I don't know, like uh, like you know uh, this this person and this person get at it, and then the business of boxing gets in the way, and then right. they go, oh well, so and so can't fight anymore because of whatever the reason is, uh, and then they go to someone like a Tim Zhu, and they say to Tim Zhu, it's up to you, dude. We could either pay you this money, right? And you could take this fight, and we won't cancel it. You're still going to get your pay per view cuts, or, right. or we could just postpone it and wait for you to get paid another day. Right. Now, this is where, again, man, if I'm going to take you guys into this rabbit hole of how the business of boxing works, for for all I know, um, yeah. and you might have already spent all this money that for money. The training camp, <laughs> his coaches, the managers already spent. No. All this. It's kind of like. Well, if we don't do this concert tour right now, right. we're going to lose more money than what we'll get later in the back end. So why don't we just do it? Why don't we, and, and then you, 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 and your decision is made not so much because of the, um, your ability to believe that you could win more so than the business side of right. why you didn't want to cancel it. Now on the flip side, I'm going to give you the flip side as a fighter. I can almost, I, in fact, I'll guarantee it. 100%. I can guarantee you that Tim Zoo was sitting there going, doesn't effing matter to me. Who you put exactly. I'm going to beat, yeah, <laughs> beat his ass. And if you are a champion, that's kind of the mentality. I mean, I, I, you know, I can tell you guys from experience on working with uh championship level fighters with this yeah. mentality. It didn't matter, man. It didn't matter where you were going. Yeah, it didn't matter if you were going into deep part of Mexico. I, I had a fight where I uh, had to corner a world champion. It was a unification fight and it was in Argentina in front of 40,000 people. And it didn't, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because the fighter is like, doesn't matter. Right. You know, I, 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 you know, I'm designed to go beat someone's ass, you know, and, and, and beat them in my craft. Like, like, right. and that's where, again, where boxing should be. Boxing should be at that level of two level of warriors to go, doesn't matter. I'll fight you. And to and again to give Sebastian Fandora credit, yeah, the fact that he's so young, he's still only in his mid twenties. Yes, this is his first step up in fight. He was Correct. just coming from getting knocked out. Yeah, for somebody to tell him, hey man, uh, in two weeks, <laughs> you think you could be ready to go fight uh, the exactly. hundred and fifty four pound champion? Like, hey man, I, I gotta give I gotta give it up to the kid. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna that has lineage mind you. that has lineage mind you from the great Costa Zoo. Yeah. I mean, come on, bro. You don't yeah. just that alone. You when you have to go to sleep at night knowing you're fighting the son of Acosta Zoo. Yeah, I don't care what y'all think. I'm telling you, that is a mental situation. Yeah, you know what? You're going into that. Yeah, that's 
yeah, yeah no when when terrence when, when terrence crump here guys is telling you a name like katsu zoo you have to understand in the context of boxing that's like katsu zoo during his time <laughs> is probably like i'll say like an australian russian God. version God. of roberto duran during the time that he was fighting because this is this is a guy who knocked out zab judo when zab judo was at his feet who who also uh um one of the losses that julio cesar chavez senior ended up having right. um, and he even ends his career at an older age even at a higher weight fighting ricky hatton to <laughs> arguably a fight that ricky hatton maybe lost you know exactly. like i don't know what those that Wait, no. was super close yeah super you know, close. so so like like i said man katsuzu and that's the father of tim zu right who, who was the 154 champion who just lost the title by right. split decision to sebastian fandora who is from a boxing family himself his dad was boxing exactly. his, boxer, his sister is the world was... champion at 112 right. so, He's so not even the big dog in his family yeah <laughs> And, and, and again, man, to all the Raider people who are listening, I mean, thank you guys. I'm sorry for confusing you with all these names because this is like, like if you if you were a boxing person, you'd uh, totally know the names. You would like, know. Yeah. You would know in a heartbeat. Quickly, quickly. Yeah, that's, I told you guys, man, I, I, I'm i sorry. It's it's all on turf. This is not Raider transplant, Raiders uh, boxing issue. This is all turf. I, I'm trying, you know. I'm staying on course. Remember, I told you I, we still got to find out who his favorite Raider is. Yeah, no, my, my guys, my favorite Raider is uh, 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 Bo Jackson. So you have to understand. The kid, yeah, you have to understand the kids coming from the Philippines, right? You know, kids yeah. coming from the Philippines. You, uh, if I'm living basically right there in Oakland, and this is 1986, it's easy to be a Raider fan because wow. then that's what you see, right? Yeah. Or, or at least that's what you hear about because at the time the Raiders were um is still in um in la but obviously right. the legacy of, of the oakland raiders it didn't leave the that whole east bay area right so no. when you grow up in that area you're an oakland raiders fan but man in 1987 Ooh. when the raiders picked up bo jackson <laughs> and, then, and then you start seeing them bono commercials and then Tech Mobile comes out, man. I mean, oh, I'm just a kid. Oh, I'm just a kid, first. Oh, uh, you know, so, so of course, man. I mean, uh, I don't know if all no the Raiders listening, but of right. course, you know, like, like Tech Mobile, man. Uh, like, Not out to right Jackson, now. You know. I'm a <laughs> Yeah, no, no. And then, and then Turf, as I got job. older, when it comes to the Raiders, uh, you know, then you start to like learn the history. Probably yeah. overall, one of my most favorite players is Mike Haynes. And okay. I know we didn't draft Mike Haynes, but, right. you know, when you look back at that Super Bowl in 83 and what, what Mike Haynes did for the Raiders, right? there's not a lot of what you can call a true shutdown corner. Nah. And Mike Haynes, as an Oakland Raider, I, I you know, again, he was just different, man. He was built different. <laughs> <Thank> you, <laughs> you, you leave him on an island and you just say, all right, He's good. That's, they're not throwing on that side. He's good. They're, they're, you know, force the defense to do this other way. Mike Haynes was that good, um, yes. in, in my opinion. And again, this is me looking Bottom. back at footage. Much like I'm asking you guys, if you want to be a boxing person, you got to go back to the old days, man. You got to pull up in black and whites. You, you got to start watching them 70s and 80s fights so 100%. that you can really, you got to watch 15 round fights. Let's start with that. Exactly. Let's just start yeah, with understanding. If you haven't seen a fifteen round, if you fight, haven't seen a fifteen round this, fight, this man, game. then you don't know. Oh, you know like, like, uh, to quote the great late, the late great Roger Mayweather. You don't know shit about boxing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Dude, we're going to get into that. Too. I told you guys, this is an absolutely monstrous treat for me. I, there's just so much going on in this. This man is dropping all these little gems, jewels, and. I don't know if y'all are catching them, but don't worry because Turf is on it. Turf is on it. So it's Bo Jackson. Bo ja I mean, I don't know how anybody can try to refute. You know, I just, it's Bo Jackson. I, the, the thing about Bo for me, though, honestly, I don't even know if his favorite or, or his what he's known for most is even football. He's such a freaking athlete. Like, yeah, between yeah. him breaking bats like it's a toothpick. And you know, we're like, gunning people out like he's yeah. a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? At, at the back of the uh, diamond, it, it, 
Dude, Bo Jackson is just Bo, Bo Jackson was. I, I mean, I, I I'm gonna be friendly in saying that maybe Bo Jackson was a conservative 235. Let's just <laughs> I know, right? a conservative 235, a conservative 235 pound running back who ran the 40 in 4.3 seconds, who won in track. Like I don't even know an athlete like that right now. Like like who do we got? That's that's we not don't. good. Like we don't. We don't. We don't have anyone. No, no, and this, no, no, no. I mean, like and again. Let's go through the stories. Like when he was playing for the Kansas City Royals, the way, like, you know how they talk about them bombs, right? Like home runs. Bo Jackson was the first person to be hitting those balls so far that Insane. you were like, what just happened? Insane. Insane. And I, I had to pull this one up. So, Cal Savage, just watch this rerun of him catching that ball and running up the wall. Like, that's just normal. It, like, it was normal. Well, <laughs> yeah, and he even when he talks about it, right? When he talks about it, he was like, "Well, you know, I knew the wall was there, and I knew it, was, it, was, it wasn't going to be a fun ride if I went and hit the wall." So I just figured, "Ah, what the hell? Let me just keep running." <laughs> he ran like he was Sonic the Hedgehog, you know? Like, exactly. Ran up that thing like it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Dude, can, it, can you imagine if Bo Jackson was a boxer? Oh my God! He, he might have killed someone. Bo oh Jackson was. was so, I, think you know, I, might, I mean, like Bo Jackson was so legendary, man. Nobody knows what Bo knows. I, I I don't know. Yeah, Bo. I, I in all honesty, I think he's got to be probably at the top of the list as far as the top three is the best Raider to ever. You know, grace even uniform. even in the short yeah. span career. Yes. We're taken away from him because of that of that, that hip injury. injury, right? Yeah. But and, and I always talk about this too, Turf. Like, uh, so if you guys are watching this right now on the Ultimate Raider Fan 32 YouTube channel, I'm talking to uh, Mr. Terrence Crump, who's the host of the show. Yeah, right. I'm trying to keep it at Raider football. <laughs> the man keeps trying to ask me about boxing and MMA, but but look, what I I, I I I'll say this about Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson is. What, like one of these people who you can't I mean I can't think of any there isn't a player I can think of that you could replicate like when you think about someone like an Adrian Peterson like I like Adrian Peterson right. he was no Bo Jackson man oh. he wasn't Bo Jackson as great as he was he still doesn't come close yeah you know, <laughs> and, and, and he was just different he's just built different like like I, I, I think Chris from Protect the Shield uh, podcast said it was his football was his hobby <laughs> Wasn't yeah. even his first time job. It was just, it, just it playing was around. Like, oh, Bobby, dude, cool. he, it was just, hey, I could do it. So why not? <laughs> you know, I, I think he cared about baseball more than anything. At least that's, yeah. Yeah. that's what yeah. you would think based on his, you know, his, uh, you know, his reactions towards the things that he dealt with in his baseball career. But yeah, Bro Jackson is Bro Jackson. I mean, the guy is, will forever be known. As one of the best to ever do it, period. Yeah. So I don't blame you, man. I, I cannot blame you for him. Being and I know your favorite player is uh, Marcus Allen. Marcus so Allen. imagine, imagine that that we had our fullback. <laughs> so remember how we were talking about how there was true tailbacks, All right? In, 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 during the show where I had you as a guest, and then there's yes. a tailback, and a, but Bo Jackson and and Marcus Allen in the same backfield. I mean. It it's was, over, man. Like we, if he didn't get injured in that Cincinnati game, right? We would have just won the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, I guys. Agree. Like I I'm not trying to be a homer. I'm just trying to keep it real. But Facts. go look back. Go Facts. look back. Like I don't think the Bills would have destroyed us 51 to three if Bo Jackson no was there. No way. No way. I yeah. No way close. I man, Bo Jackson. I don't know if, and that's the thing. I feel bad for the youngsters that don't have a clue because they really just don't get it. They're gonna look at his stats, and then they're gonna come back to you and have an argument. And there's they have a valid argument because the guy didn't play that long based on the injury. But they don't know if you extrapolate what he did in that short period of time oh. to what. <laughs> no one would be talking about anybody else. No, yeah, um, who, no. he Rick would be. He, he, he's like, like I don't know, man. Like when people talk about Michael Jordan and how yes. he played in the that is what he would Jordan be. did, he would right? Be the Michael Jordan or. Of or even when we talk about like Walter Payton during those times that he did it, or some of the uh, some Shout of the, the, the younger people who were Detroit Lions fans who were like, "Man, did you see how Barry Sanders did this and this move and did that?" Bo Jackson was all of that, all of it, all of it, and a bag of chips. 
Yeah, <laughs> absolutely right. I don't, there's no other way to explain it. And just the facts are, ladies and gentlemen, you just had to see it to know. I mean, just go look at the commercials. Bo no, just Google Bo knows. I promise you, you'll have more than enough watching material for days. <laughs> Crazy. Four days. Crazy. Now I'm, I'm actually now I'm curious if on that Bo knows commercial, do you remember Turf? Was there a Bo knows boxing? Like, uh, did they ever do one? I, you know, that's a great question. Like, did they end that's up showing them with like Marvin Hagler or something, right. or, or like whoever the I heavyweight was? They had to have. I bet you they had to have, right? Because, yeah, I, I don't see anything, but yeah, I, it, it, yeah, Bo knows, Bo knew everything. Yeah, Bo knows, <laughs> yeah, Bo knows. Bo knows. Bro, Bo knows sure. No one yeah. would ever, that's why, it's like, I'm just going to assume, yo. <laughs> I'm not even going to try, you know, like, yeah, it's just, no way, man. Bo, Bo is an icon, to say the least. Style. yeah yeah no so so yeah and then of course in terms as you grow up right at, you know and then you know being a raider fan um you know i what for me uh in, in this it happens in the 2000s but darren mcfadden i was a big darren mcfadden uh, he, fan. Was like one of my he. first jerseys as a as a as a raider fan is darren mcfadden, <laughs> darren McFadden coming out of college was pretty awesome Arcus. but the potential right and then of course we also had like napoleon mccallum oh. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Napoleon Kaufman um, was, was really good, and uh, and then you know, like you, you kind of get into you, you start to get into all of it, right? And 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 even in, I mean, like I mean, again, like you you get interested in it even during the losing years, like right. someone like a Namdi coming out, you thought, oh man, uh, yeah, you know, this is gonna be fire, or you know, and you always. And I think like like Chris pointed this out on on uh, one of his uh, videos for Protect mm -hmm. Shield podcast, where it's like I don't like these newer generation fans now who <laughs> want us to tank because that's true, man. Uh, like it doesn't make sense to me. Like even when we were losing, I still wanted us to win. Happy. Like I never like sat there and was like, oh, I'm happy we only won four games. Yeah. Like nobody was happy about it. <laughs> you are of the elk of this whole. We're gonna tank for a player. You, you don't even comprehend competition. Yeah, you don't get it. You like you don't no, understand why you play the game. Your moral compass is so off that you should probably take a you're, step back. You're soft, man. You you come from it, the participation a era. So. It's a problem. It's a problem. If you think you need to go take a step back and look terrible to get somebody so you can now look great, you got a problem. I don't yeah, know. No, no. And, and like, look, like we just watched, like uh, if, if Chris is still on right now on the chats, he watched it too. But we just watched Sebastian Fendora this last Saturday fight uh, for the world title with two weeks notice. Yep. Um, young as he is against uh, Tim Zhu, the awesome. son of a legend, Katsuzu. Both <laughs> them guys were bleeding, man. Fendora was getting <laughs> whooped on so badly in the first <laughs> rounds. He, the inside of his throat was like filled with blood like he couldn't he the, the, the doctors were asking him like bro are you okay like can you breathe and right and again, most people don't understand like that internal bleeding you swallowing that blood that's not good for you and that's why they stopped the corrales casamayor yes. fight like, that's what happened to uh corrales is he was Correct. bleeding inside the mouth he had a lot of cuts and then the referee was like man i can't let you keep going right so that was happening to fondura and then going into the third round uh, Tim Zeus, one of the oh, main yeah, right veins on the, on the top on the of the head, top. it it pops and it and when you watch it and it's bleeding, when it's deep dark red like that, <laughs> that's that that's is real. not like when you get cut like in your skin like that's bleeding. Ah. You know this is what, like we should probably stop the fight right now. Right? Like, exactly. And, and these two still went at it for twelve rounds, man. You like like this is why I can't like I I I don't. I get upset when people who don't who don't understand the context of even just get hit in the face. Like, how about just stand there and let me just slap you? Let me let me just really slap you and let me do it, so that then we can have an intelligent conversation about yes. what that was. Right, right. right? And, but and then how many more times you want me to allow you to do that? Yeah, yeah. But then, but that's what I mean. It's like like when before you go criticizing. Oh man. Well, this was this or this was that. I hate it. Me personally, I hate it because I, I was in the game. 
And I know how hard it is for these guys and these late ladies and these athletes to put it all together. I know how difficult it is for them. So I'm always a defender of the realm. I'm like, 100%. dude, unless you, I mean, at least tell me that you did what uh, Mr. Crump did and you're on the mat and you're getting laid on and you're getting like <laughs> twisted up like a pretzel by 200 right. pound men. Like, I mean, come on, man. Then don't, please don't Give talk to me about this fight game because, because then you're just going to give me an opinion that's going to offend me because you somehow you, you're somehow going to convince me that you understood it like you don't you don't do it as a, as a sport you you don't get it you don't get how hard it is to even to even run how many how many miles did that guy have to run to just be prepared for that fight how they many, how many sparring that. matches did he have to do i mean like the weekly sparring matches we used to run our camps on is at like we had a certain number of rounds right most of the time, we have to clear the 100 round range before we even let you fight for a title fight. Exactly. So that's 100 rounds of people trying to kill you. Well, I mean, in try literally trying to Man, kill you. No, like, that's, guys, paid. this is a real story. Right. See, that's and that's the thing. People don't get it. These sparring partners coming in, they are paid to they try paid. to kill you. Yeah, and look, like, like I'm, this is not coming from, this is from a guy who was there. All right, this is me. I was in that gym and I remember Freddie Roach would say to the sparring partners in where Manny Pacquiao would have to fight not one sparring partner. That's not how it works because Manny Pacquiao is a world championship level. He had to spar five to six different people rotating <laughs> within the same sparring Fresh. session Fresh. of the same day that would normally happen every other day. It would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sometimes it would we would even do an extra session of sparring if Manny felt like doing it, right? <laughs> like it just it just depended, right? And the oh, whole thing is Freddie would go up to sparring partners and say, I will give you an extra thousand dollars if you just knock Manny Pacquiao down. Just right. knock him down. Just knock him down. And these guys would get their asses blasted, man. If you woke, <laughs> if you woke Pacquiao up, it was, it was, it was. The, in fact, Turf, I, you know, I got to tell you this one story, man. Yes, like, please. Hey, was, anytime, was, uh, anytime you have remember, what was the fight? Oh, yes. yes. Rano. Rano. I it was like, uh, I want to say it was, <laughs> is it, we're getting ready for, or it was a fight that Manny was getting ready for. I think it was. Marquez, right? But um, they had this one sparring partner in there. He was, I'm pretty sure, he was definitely at least 201, okay? But the guy was was a bigger dude, right? Um, and 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 he, and he's like trying to be like, oh, I can handle it. I could be Manny Pacquiao sparring partner. You'll see. And tough guy here then, you know, who's pretty decent boxer, gets in there in the first round and he's going out Manny. He is going at the champ, and we're like, all right, bro. And Manny the whole time is like <laughs> like analyzing him like the Terminator. You know, like 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 getting the timing, the speed, yeah. understanding strengths. And he's doing this in a in a two-minute period. You get to the last minute, and this guy's still going after Manny, and Manny's just kind of doing this like this, and he's kind of just moving around, and he's and th th this is a time where Manny finally started to really understand the whole arsenal of actual of boxing like he wasn't relying on on his strength the one punch Agility power speed, anymore yeah. he, he, he understood like after that morales loss and then he came back to one it win it and then he understood like you set up with the right hook you set up with counters you can do the uppercuts like so this is a different mania at this point right so anyway this guy's like coming after him and then you know, man, he's doing it. And then, and then again, the the gym is private, so it wasn't like a lot of people can watch it. So there's probably like I want to say twenty of us that's at wild card at this point. So then, Mandy goes to the corner. I'm like I'm below the ring. I'm next to like the double end bag, and I'm listening. Right. And then uh, Manny looks at Freddie, and then Freddie, <laughs> Freddie <laughs> term, looks at Manny and goes, you know, like gives him the nod, like go ahead, man, go ahead. <laughs> Right. So then, so then the next round rings, bro. It took like 40 seconds, maybe 40 <laughs> seconds. And Manny just went like, like nuclear, <laughs> like turn, 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 bang, bang, bang. Like it looked like he was, oh, it looked like a cartoon. Like it looked like, <laughs> like six people were there chopping this dude up. Right. To the point where it was just like gasp in silence throughout the gym. We're just like, right. 
But I mean, we're just all shocked. Yes. And the guy's so like shell shocked, kind of like if an explosion happened and the dude like just heard the bomb, <laughs> he had that look on that trauma. Yeah. That trauma on his face. This this 200 pound boxer who was who was pretty good, right? Um <laughs> After getting blasted, and, it, and like in that, when the when the minute mark hit of a three minute round, man, he had right. to look at the guy and go, "It's okay, <laughs> it's okay." It, it, it just like... and, he, and he just basically let him like he carried him the next two rounds, and then at that point, obviously, guys, the guy did not get hired as one of me. <laughs> no, because no. you got you had to be. I say this to say that. In order to even be a sparring partner to a Floyd Mayweather, a Manny Pacquiao, or any of these people that are contending or moving up to championship level, you have to be someone who is coming up yourself. You you cannot be like you 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 can't be just like oh this is just a body like no man no that's not how it works. You got to be able to give championship level rounds at least for a three minute period. And then I guess if all you can do is that one round, we'll rotate you out with someone else. Exactly. But that's how it's that's how it works, you know, or no, you that's need, how it does work. Yeah, you need top, you need top notch. You need the best of the best. You need the rounds, and you need those people when you're at your dog tired. You need to be in the ring, completely exhausted, completely done. There is no such thing as right. You're relying on athleticism and ability. You have to use your guys, technique. Guys, you when to. you're getting hit in the <laughs> face, when somebody is attacking you and they're hitting you in the face, and that someone happens to be a Manny Pacquiao, a Floyd Mayweather, a Roberto Duran, like you name it, you better have already had athleticism checked and and and, and uh, you know skill checked. Like like yeah. that's the last thing. Like like it's it's like it's a requirement. It's like if you want to learn how to drive, then you better know what a car looks like, right? <laughs> they, they, like if you're if you're trying to get in there, we're like, no, man, like no, that that's the last thing we're looking for. Athletic right. skills is the last thing we're looking for. We're that's looking it. to see, can you handle it? Can you handle what championship level boxing is going to be like? Because yeah. you're you're gonna. Because by the way, I got like if Turf is a partner, I got to say to Turf. Hey man, in two days you got to do this again, <laughs> and then you got to do it again, and then you got to do it again. So when yeah. I say the words like Freddie Roach would used to say to to, his, to the sparring partners, "I'll give you the thousand, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you just knock them down, just try right. to right. right, just try right. to knock them down. It's a throwaway money. It's extra. Like, dude, good luck, good luck. I ain't ever seen nobody knock Manny down like that old in, in those sparring. Hell, yeah, no. in sparring, no way. You're not gonna knock him down. Too fast. It's not too gonna... fast. He's too smart. He understood the the, the he understood the lines. Like I, I in fact I sent this to you because Chris was watching it with us too. Like me, you, Turf, we were watching the fight. And as I, I was like breaking it down, because I told you, like, I can't watch fights the way a fan watches a fight. Right. I'm already breaking down what's happening. But Correct. in the first two rounds, I sent Chris a text. Saw it. I was like, you already saw it. Hey, yeah, I was like, man, Tim Zoo's winning all of the positions. Uh, of, of 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 the fight right now. In the first six minutes of that fight, when I say he was winning the positions, so a ring doesn't get bigger. It's only a certain size. <laughs> right. When you can win every position of the ring, that tells you then, right. then you're already then then the rest of the round should be fine. What you don't yes. account for is something like that, where you get cut in the head and it's bleeding and it's right. going into your face and. And Stitch Duran just came out and said it. Like, yeah. and if Stitch Duran is calling you out, guys, like, then that means uh, wow. I'm sorry to say it. Like, right? you, you, you done messed up. So uh, Stitch came that. out publicly and he said that cornerman didn't know what he was doing. Yes. This is why you have to pay a cut man um, because yep. you have to, you know, the proper. And over and over, you heard it throughout the telecast. Like, did they not have Avatine there? And I remember when Freddie was teaching me how to stop it. He said it's actually like you got to be cool and calm. And uh, but you know, adrenaline 101 works, but you got to be prepared for it, you have to be looking for it, just stay in your lane and focus on the cut, right? Like, there's there's all these little tricks in the trade. Send me that. Where'd you send me that at? You sent me that, it was on Instagram. That stitch, uh, Instagram. That stitch said it. Um, 
but there's a way to let the blood essentially coagulate so that it stops. Yeah. But in the scenario that happened with Tim Zoo, right? <clears throat> Honestly, man, when that cut happened and it was bleeding that deep, stop the fight. I, I, well, for me, if if I was the cut man, and again, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I and and I don't know how the corner is. It's remember, uh, um, Tim Zoo's dad is Kata Zoo. Right. Maybe the way they were training each other is that whole never say die attitude. Right. Or I, I, mean, I don't know, man. I, like being a cut man is only one job, hey, right? It's one I, I want to pull it up, man. I want to pull know. it up. Yeah, I want to pull it up because I, but, this is very important in my yeah, opinion. But, but, the, but the whole thing is that what I would have said is if it was me, Turf, I would have just sat there and I would have looked at the doctor and I would have said, hey, doc, can you check this out? Because it's bleeding pretty deep. And then I would have just let the doctor make a decision, right? So that I didn't have to be the one. Go ahead. Go ahead exactly. Sir. Let's play. Let's play this, ladies and gentlemen. I want everybody to hear exactly what we're referring to, right? This is educational, is is just as much as any and everything else, right? So yeah, let's play this out, right? Getting all kinds of messages and can you hear it? Just finished doing an interview regarding the cut for on Tim Zoo. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that big vein that we have right there, if you pop it, you're not going to stop it. And he got the cut, it's the same vein. Uh, but it's important to have a good corner with you because they should have stopped it before the start of the fifth round. Would have been a no contest. Uh, they would have had a chance for a rematch and, uh, and then protect him. You know, I, I felt sorry for him. Uh, I felt bad that all the techniques that were being used on him were not the proper techniques on how to handle a cut. So, uh, I wish Tim Zhu the best. Same thing happened the night before with this young girl from Costa Rica. Uh, she got a bad cut, and the cut man didn't really know what he was doing. And unfortunately, both of them lost fights. So where would they have been if they would have had a proper cut man? I've been getting all kinds of messages. Oh, yeah, so that's Jacob Stanley. Who, if you're just tuning in right now, uh, I see you, Leo. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. Shout out. Thanks for joining us. Shout out to Leo. Uh, um, but yeah, that was Stitch. And uh, we're, we're referring to the fight that happened both Friday night and Saturday night. Those are world championship fights. I, I don't know if you got to watch that one, Turf, the one with Sinitio absolutely and, <laughs> and Valle. But when that cut happened, I was thinking the same exact thing. And, and, and on both scenarios, Stitch was there, right? So, was- like, I was thinking in my head, like, honestly, man, and I'm sure it would have been, like, it might have been looked down upon in terms of I don't even know if the commission would have allowed it. Right. But if I was like the manager or something, I'd have ran to go get a stitch. I'd have handed him like I don't know ten grand. I would have just said whatever, what do you cash, want? dude. What do you and want? I'll pay you the rest later. Whatever. But, I and you please get up there and go stop this right now because because paying that money is worth every penny. Especially look what happened. Tim Zoo lost the title. Valle, uh probably that was her shot to go get um to uh to get a chance at a fight yes, like that at right? a real and, fight, at a real and, fight. You know, it's like when we talk about why i believe we need our offensive line secured yes. right you need offensive line to protect your quarterback so if you're going to pay your quarterback hundreds and millions of dollars you might want to make sure you also pay a good amount of money to your offensive line because you don't want your offensive line to not be able to protect your quarterback, Bro. which is supposed to be the most important position, right, guys? So that means that the second most important position is either going to be left tackle or right tackle, depending on uh, which hand the quarterback is doing. There you go, buddy. Yeah, right? Right here. Uh, yeah. You are spot on. You are spot So when we're talking about boxing, which is now turf, now we're going to a world that I actually – like that's that was my job, bro. Like that was my job. Okay. Look, yeah, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, I got I I stitched Duran got to be a corner, um, a cut man for a few of the fights uh that we were both involved in. And and that's what I'm saying is like stitch is the best. Like, I don't like whatever the fee is is what the fee is. You pay. You pay. Who cares? Like it doesn't matter, man. Like Nobody you're gonna cares. sit there and buy that that nice ass house and not go get the best insurance. Uh, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like, like getting the corner, you don't want to be cheap about it. Because it, when it's a championship fight, when it's a championship fight, like, like you don't want to be having your corner be someone that's learning how to do the cut. At all. You better have yeah. somebody who, who's going down. 
you knew exactly who has the avatine, the adrenaline 101, how to let the blood coagulate, how yeah. to know some of the tricks of the trade, right? Like, like, like there are certain tricks, man, that um, I mean, Corrales Castillo, like, yeah. I'm not gonna sit there and say that he wasn't trying to spit out the mouthpiece. Oh, oh. I'm not yeah, gonna say okay. turf that he wasn't trying to spit yeah, out the mouthpiece, yeah, exactly. but, yes. but but I'm just gonna say that <laughs> if you watch the replay of that fight, right? <laughs> Joe Goosen is putting the mouthpiece on, and you're not supposed to give instructions nope. when you're doing that. And Joe yes. Goosen looks at Corrales and is like, "You better put this guy on his ass right now, right? Like that's coaching, brother." Yes, like, like, coaching, you, bro. Guy. That's not a there's no timeouts in boxing, people. Oh. There's no timeouts. <laughs> so so that, that little trick of oh oops, I dropped my mouthpiece. That's why he got the wow. reduction, but Dude. he didn't come back to knock out the, the, I the absolutely the adore this guy right here. I adore this guy. <laughs> it's one that hey look, nobody's perfect. Right before everybody starts, right, diving on in, right? We know his background wasn't squeaky clean. We know he had issues with domestic violence. And in fact, Floyd put on a masterpiece because of this. And it turned out in Floyd's Mayweather's, you know, favor. We all know about this fight. But let me tell y'all something. Diego Chico Corrales is by far one of the biggest warriors you are ever, ever well, going to put it, out. Well, further than that, he's one of the best boxers we've ever had. Ever. He's one of the best boxers we've ever had. Like, like, ever. like, again, like you guys have to understand that in the sport of boxing, the margin for error is so small that when someone has like one loss, two loss, he's sometimes deemed as, oh, that's damaged goods. When the truth of the matter is, like, no, man, like, no, man. Many of the greatest fighters in the world had to lose in order for them to come back to win. And Correct. Diego Corrales losing to Floyd Mayweather at 130 pounds. First of all, man, I mean, do I even need to tell everybody that if you grew up in this era, let's just say if you grew up in from rundown's age or a little bit sooner, like if you try to argue with me that Floyd Mayweather is not the best <laughs> in that era, then we can't have a conversation. Like exactly. I can't, I can't have a conversation. <laughs> oh, like, like I, I just can't. Like, you don't understand. You don't understand the trajectory of how he got robbed in the Olympics in Atlanta uh, and how, uh, you, don't remember uh, how you know, like how good he was when he was pretty boy Floyd Mayweather and he was knocking everybody out and then how he had to change his entire persona to money Mayweather and then he basically was the sport of boxing. Like, like, I don't want to hear it. Like, like you, you just don't get it. Like you well, don't get it. And, we can have a whole show on just that. On, no, just, no. Yeah. On just, just Floyd's career. We could, we could have an entire show on just Floyd's career. And, and, and so, but anyway, so Floyd beating, Diego Corrales at the time when it was happening. Yeah, yeah. when it was happening, 130 pounds, both yes. fighters were undefeated. I I mean, I hope I'm not messing this up, but I'm pretty sure that that was the whole thing. Is was it the one fighters, it was kind of like they come there play, they, no, they only fought once. No, I, no, no, it was one time and it was 130. I'm pretty sure. Look it up, turf. All it's right, well, look it up. No, but I, I'm, pretty, I'm going to. Yeah, okay, but I'm pretty sure it was super featherweight. 130 pounds. It was Diego Corrales, Floyd Mayweather. It was a unification of championships because I think Floyd was the WBC. I think Diego you're was the IBF. 130. You're 100%. Um, and, and, and it was kind of like our generation. I'm talking about people of, like you and my age. Yeah. Right? It was kind of like our um, Hearns, yes. Thomas Hearns versus Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. It was, it was like, oh, shit. It was exactly that. Oh, this is, oh, is going to happen. <laughs> so, so again, if you're not a boxing person, you don't understand. Like, th those are the fights we would get hyped up for. We'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is actually going to happen. And Never that is a classic time. fight. Yeah, like, again, guys, <laughs> look it up. Uh, it was class. Classic fight. The way Floyd Mayweather breaks him down. Oh, the way Floyd Mayweather uh, does everything. And... And, and and to Cor Diego Corrales's credit, he kept going. And to Diego Corrales's credit, and again, um, I can't say that there are too many boxers that have this mentality in this generation now. Right. But Diego Corrales wasn't the reason why the fight was stopped. It was his no. stepfather that stopped the fight. Yeah, in yeah. fact, he got mad at his stepfather. He did. He wanted to fight. 
He wanted yeah. to fight him. He wanted to yeah. fight everybody that yeah. stopped that fight. Be because Diego is from that old school mentality, like I was telling you about. Man, you go out on your shield. You just go oh, out on your shield. Listen. That's you know, it. and this and this is where, as a cornerman, now we go back to a Tim Zhu. Yeah. Maybe Tim Zhu is of that same old school mentality. So it would have had to take a cornerman to like Wait, be creative problems. enough to let the doctor stop it, so that Tim Zhu knew it wasn't because of him. Exactly. You know you what I mean? Like, talk, talk about that though. Let's and, and again, guys, we're going to be all over the freaking place tonight. But seriously, you were a cornerman. You were a person that was part of these epic yeah, world championship titles. fights. World yeah. championship fights, like. Yeah, so like, like, like that. yes, give us yeah. the goods on that. Give no, us I mean, I just so, so in the moment. In the moment, you have to understand again the preparation that it takes to even get up to that level. So, if you're even gonna get a shot, if you're even gonna get a chance, imagine if you like not only went through in football, like went through training camp and went through all of it, and then went through your whole season, and then you every you you went through all the ups and the downs and the sparring and everything else in your training. Week one was the Super Bowl. That's what a championship felt, fight felt like. Wow. So, so it's like it's a do or die in that scenario. So all as a corner, you have to, whatever your job is, whether you're first assistant, the cut man, second assistant, like just do your job. Like don't like. Oh. Don't get don't get too engaged into the fight because you're gonna attack the boxer. Like let the box let the fighter be the fighter because the fighter is in charge. Like uh, like if I was if I was able to train a football player to become a boxer, the football player the most that I would probably want to turn into a boxer is the quarterback. I I need someone who's like Cerebral. six foot tall or, or big, you know, over two hundred pounds. Who processes well? Yes, who cerebral. who is not afraid to get hit, right? But can lead. Like that's a boxer's mentality. Somebody because because at the end of the day, man, when that bell rings and they're in, they're in charge. They're in charge. Like the corners' jobs are to give you the suggestions because we're seeing it from the outside of the ring. But you're the one taking it firsthand, man. You're the one like taking the punt. You're, you're the one seeing the flow of the fight. So <laughs> oftentimes we want to hear from the fighter. We want to hear like, hey, man, like what are you, you doing saying? good? What are you right? saying? And what the fighter wants to hear you say to them is like, you know, how is it? Like, how's it looking to you? On looking, the yeah, yes, that's because it. that's how, the, how that's how that judge is seeing it. And a lot of times people miss this, too, about boxing is where. The three judges, they're in three different sides of the ring. Yes, they don't so know that. So it depends on where the it. action is happening. Yeah, the judge on this side. The clown. Okay. Free tonight when it comes to learning boxing. I just want y'all. If you're learn. watching it on, like, it's one bad. of the things that I still don't like about how boxing judges judge is that they don't have a TV in front of their face. Because then they could see, like in, in the oh, UFC and in MMA, they have that for the judges. There's a screen so that when, a, let's say, it goes to grappling on the other side and they can't see what's going they on, can they can review it live. They can watch it. But in boxing, it's still that old school where you're just looking at it. And One in fact, hour. ladies and gentlemen, in the old days, now I'm talking again, don't <laughs> tell me you're a boxing fan unless you watch them 15 round fights. But in the old school days, I'm talking about in England, there was only one judge, jury, and everything. It was the referee. Correct. So the referee was the one that decided who the winner and the loser was. Correct. Because, because it was thought of as, well, he had the best view. He was in the ring with the two fighters. He has the best view. <laughs> you know? no so like, has... and, and again, like we could, we could split hairs about, well, how should judging be? But at the end of the day, when you see them split decisions, like, the Tim Zhu Sebastian Fendora fight when the scorecards came out, one judge had it eight to four for Tim Zhu. Right. One judge had it eight to four for Fendora. And then one judge had it seven rounds to five for <laughs> Fendora. That's why it was a split decision. Correct. I told you, I watched it the first time and I said, look, man, looking at it from tape and knowing the knowledge that I know. Right. I'm not going to be surprised if this ends up being like a draw. I kind of 
happens. It's, a lot of us. But I rewatched it the second time. A lot of those rounds in eight, nine, ten, and eleven, uh, to me, were close enough that I, for me, I scored it seven to five. Like if, if I was going to reward the boxer that I thought deserved the win, I'd have given it right. to Tim Zoo, and I, I would have given him four rounds in the first half, and then I would have given him. Um, um, uh, you know, could have been a three-three in the second half, Correct. maybe. Correct. You know, like like something like that. But but I would have definitely scored it seven rounds to five for for Tim Zhu. I just uh, but if it was a draw, Tim Zhu still becomes the champion. Correct. He doesn't lose the belt. Correct. There's probably an automatic rematch of some sort, Correct. right? Correct. This whole thing changes the trajectory of both people's careers now, because the next thing that happens is they're talking about Pandora. Uh, being ordered Spence. by the WBO to go fight Terrence Crawford, well, but because Al because Al Heyman doesn't promote Terrence Crawford, He's Al gone. Heyman promotes Errol Spence, <laughs> so they want Errol Spence to fight. But then, if you're a boxing fan and you're like, but then Errol Spence get his ass beat by <laughs> Terrence Crawford, so exactly. then why would you know? So like, this is where again, man, it gets murky. It's really hard. It, it's it's. Let me just say this for the for the. For the newer generation of boxing fans now, I, I do empathize with you that yes. you have to really want to be a boxing fan to be a boxing fan. Because <laughs> yes. yeah, in our in me and Turf's days, yeah. boxing was free, everybody. All right? You got to watch it on Wild World of, Wild World of Sports. Yes. You got to watch it on, um, ABC, on CBS. ABC's. Tuesday Night Fights yes. was a thing. Friday oh, Night Fights was a thing. Right? Like we like fight. we were just being thrown in our faces. Like we got to see everywhere. we got to see everybody, right? Like like so um so it was it wasn't like this big old like even with the pay-per-view era, we still had HBO. Yeah, and if you had HBO, man, you were watching Gucci. boxing after dark. I'm gonna bring you back, Turf. I'm gonna bring you back. Do you remember watching KO Nation? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, of course. Okay, and like they where they had rap music. Yes, they, they had to mix the culture. I right? you're absolutely right. It didn't work right. out. Like dropped. most people don't even remember that the HBO had they had HBO Boxing After Dark, and that's where you right. saw a lot of classics. You saw Prince uh Prince uh not my bed. Yeah, that's, right? that's my wife's like, favorite like, fighter. That's my wife's favorite fighter. You saw Barrera Morales, right? And then there yeah. was HBO championship boxing. Right, this was before 24 7. Yeah, this was like in the yeah. older days, right? Yeah, no, and absolutely. then they did KO Nation, and most people don't remember that some was... of Mayweather's good, Joke. cool fights. Yeah, was not a KO Nation. You remember yeah. him fighting a guy by the name of Emmanuel Augustus? Hey, the drunken master. I was literally about to just bring that guy's name up because I'm telling you right now, first, boy, said that was his hardest fight. And Emmanuel second... Augustus was the man, and Emmanuel Ooh. Augustus. Had a lot of losses, but when you watch them fight, oh, very unorthodox. He was a monster. Emmanuel Augustus. I'm telling you right now, there is no better entertaining fighter than Emmanuel Augustus. He was no, no. Just... And, and 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 guys, I mean, hey, hey, we wanted to if you're just listening now, we're on the Ultimate Raider Fan 32's YouTube channel. We yes, passed the two hour mark, so uh, thank you, first of all, if you found this entertaining. I try, I tried, guys. I tried to even bring up Raider football in this conversation, but man, turf, turf keeps pu pulling, pulling these like. Hey. So then, you know, what are you gonna do, man? It's like it's like me and turf are in front of a in front of his kitchen table right now, and we're just chopping it up about <laughs> about some of the boxing uh, matches that that were out there, but. Go ahead, Turf. Sorry. I, hey, I warned him, man. I warned him. I, I let y'all know I, it's going to be tough, right? We're going to get a couple of things in here, Raider Nation related. But it, it's going to be hard, man, because I value being able to pick this man's brain for what it is. I I don't think y'all understand, man. This is, this is one of the brightest minds of all combat sports. Do, do you guys know? <laughs> You are watching one of the brightest minds of combat sports. Not MMA, not boxing, not Kempo, not karate. Combat sports. That's everything. It's all inclusive. It's A, I don't know what you know. But what I know, I have been trained 
and I trust what I know. That's what you don't sell yourself short, man. Getting a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt from the team that you got it from, and uh, you still be doing it to your 16th year, it's a very difficult thing. It's very progressive. You being a black belt with a white belt's mind is a very real thing. So never sell yourself short, man. You're one of the people that I can that I can literally have a conversation with, and I'm okay with you and I doing a back and forth because yeah. I know you're coming from a point of reverence and understanding that. Hey man, this like 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 again, guys. I love football. Like I love football. I am a fan of football. I'm not trying to pretend like I played it or I, you know. But if you're gonna try to talk to people like us about right. about boxing or yes. MMA or jujitsu, like, look, man, you, you better you better. We if we ask you a question, you better know the answer because then if yes, you sir. don't, it's like yes, you sir. don't get to be on this table right now. Exactly. Man. You need to go exactly. to the little kids table. Just, you just know. sit back and soak it in because don't don't ask a question. Like, yeah, just sit back and soak it in. You're absolutely right. We diving in, Angelo, your first professional. We went to your first uh Yeah, no, I, I and I told you like during the time I'm trying to remember when MMA was becoming a thing. Because yeah. I was trans- it's so it's I, I got to have my own dojo. Yeah. I got to have my own dojo. So I got. I went to take my black belt in China in '96. I got to already be. Hey, you're not going to skip over that, huh? No, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, I didn't get to. Remember, I told you I didn't get to. When you say you get to be a professional fighter, that means you were fighting for money, and I never got to do that. Right, right. You know, so I like, I, I like, I, I kind of just went right into. I kept teaching. Yeah. Right. I kept coaching it, but, but I mean, like, but again, I'll tell you, like, being able to coach it and still being able to move. Right. Really helps like a lot of times. Nowadays, you're in, no, absolutely. Yeah, like uh, like like nowadays in the MMA world, you'll see like some of the some of the better coaches at times are the ones that are also the partners still for, working for every because so, ladies and gentlemen, just as an FYI, what he is saying, and again, you have to understand Angelo is a transplant, he's actually Right, we're going to go get, back to that world ever again. Yeah, there's no way he can get it. It took me it took me I, I mean a lot I had to go through a lot of therapy to even like make myself understand. And Turf knows this. Like I, I like understands this feeling cuz when he played his last game there's a there's a certain part of you that feels lost it's because gone. you can't go back. It's gone. So for me it was just taken away, right? Like so yeah. I can't I can't go, I mean like I can have this conversation, and I, I mean, I, my mind is okay, I guess, right? right? But right. Um, I, they Trump literally, like, Turf Trump has the pictures. There. Like, guys, if you've seen the Protect the Shield podcast, my body was cut in half. Like, I have yes. to relearn how to walk. I don't have any uh, core muscles. I'm 20 months right now. Like, and, and there's no doctor in the world that's going to be like, oh, sure, Angelo, go ahead and get back out there and put on that body pad. And nope. let a heavyweight hit you it, with no. your new liver that was an uh, man, was donated. Push, and right, right. It, it's like, no way, man. Hey, there's no medical clearance that I'm ever gonna have ever, that's gonna allow me to go ever, back on a mat. Right. You know, like that's not yeah, right. absolutely right. So, so again, yeah, that's why I'm saying I want to make sure people get all of this good. You guys, you are you are seeing inside of the fight game. Like you will never ever see. I, I look. I I know a lot of people have put on a lot of shows, done a lot of this stuff, right? Been commentators. You are getting the rawest of raw, coming from a person that literally got it out the mud, came from another country. I, I don't think y'all understand what's in front of you right now. I uh, I know. <laughs> Trust me. I this is why I'm going through every crevice i'm 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 going no no stone will be unturned in light ladies and gentlemen i guys i'm doing this for turf because i promised (laughs) him i would do it because i surprised him with me with with me uh nailing him with a bunch of old college days and college tapes that he didn't think i could find and watch you got to go really deep guys go look at them montana state tv I don't know how you did that, bro. I still don't know how you did that. It's research, man. Remember, hey, look, okay, I, I'm glad you asked that because in the fight game, one yes. of the assignments we would have is to scout Beautiful. the opponents. We Let's would scout the opponents, Turf. So, so you don't, you don't, exactly. you know, you don't, go deep. Go deep and yeah, no. No, like, like if, you, exactly if, you, if you were our fighter, Turf, yes. if you were our fighter and then we knew, okay, we have to go set up 
Uh, who are the next five opponents we might want for for Terrence Crump? We're going deep, man. Into like we're we're watching That's like right. every tape possible of every thing, and we're we're and once we settle on an opponent, we're finding out everything about that opponent. I mean, like you you know how in the NFL draft, like this is why for me doing the NFL Combine is so fun. But I wish I could actually get even deeper in it because I would want to know like how did that um quarterback treat his janitor when yes. uh well you know when he was in high school right like you guys you guys in the old in the older days or in the in boxing when you're talking about that much pride that much money that's what we would we would definitely be studying everything we needed to study on an opponent so that we can give the most advantages to the camp to so that we get so like we would never say to a boxer like, oh man, you should be scared of so-and-so. Like, you don't want to use words like like you would never tell your boxer that. Because again, if you have if you have a real one, if you have a champion in front of you, they're not gonna be scared of anything, man. You could throw them in front of a car that's about to run them over and they're gonna stand, <laughs> you're gonna stand in front of it. So that's it's more about like the science behind it. Like, okay, we know so and so that's about to be our next fight is someone who is really, let's say, a power puncher who understands how to work the body specifically on the left side. Let me start trying to see which sparring partners I can scout that can sort of emulate that. Yeah. And then let's see if we can hire them on to bring them in. Like this is kind of how it works. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not like, like, like I think a lot of times I get frustrated turf that people think that when you see a championship level fight, they just threw two people in there <laughs> for your entertainment. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, do you know how long it took to even get that far? And I I, I I, personally don't like it when it's last minute opponents like that, where Fundora was thrown in in less than two weeks. I, I would hate that. Yeah, because it's not fair to Tim Zhu. It's not, it's it not fair not. to Tim He got it, such a like raw you deal. Just, he was working on something else. He got right? such a raw deal, bro. He it's got a raw deal. Tim Z got one of the rawest deals I've seen in boxing in a long time. I would have never allowed that fight as his manager. But, but again, we don't know the money side of it. Church. No, that's I agree. No, then that's the part that we don't get because the bottom line is Tim might have been the one saying, I don't care about what any of y'all are saying. I'm taking this fight for the money. Like you just said. Who right. could the last and, 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 and again, let me let me rephrase it this way. A lot of times I think that the the I think a lot of times the fans who are watching it, they think that the fighters are about money, right. but they're not, okay? If a fighter is a fighter, like if you got a real one in front of you and you say to, like, let's say Terrence Crump is my fighter and, and I say to Terrence, hey, you're going to go fight so-and-so. If I got a real one in, in Terrence Crump, he's going to say, I don't care who you put. put exactly. Fight, he's not going to. doesn't matter to me. Like, uh, let's, get, let's get rocking. Let's go. Because I need him to have that mentality of I'm going to win. It doesn't matter who oh, wow. you put in front of me. Otherwise, if I got to negotiate with my own fighter, you already lost. I might not want to be with this person. <laughs> you, already, right? you know, like, like I need a warrior. I need a warrior in front of me who's just going to say yes. So yep. then it's the corner's job. So when we say who accepted this, right. I'm going to have to go to maybe management allowed it. Maybe, yeah. maybe there was a bigger deal on the table that we don't know about. Like, Right. Maybe there was like an Errol Spence Tim Zoo fight that was supposed to happen. So yes. it, it, the fight itself, because of the contractual agreement to Amazon Prime, like I don't know, <laughs> man, there's, so, there's so much stuff that right. I I never like. Everybody wants to make it seem like it's the fighter, and I feel bad for them at times the because fighter. they get all of the blame and, when something goes wrong, and it's and like only a I don't know, of man. Only a fraction I don't know of if it was them, right? Honestly, their job is to just to be uh, to go out there and 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 fight their their hearts out. Like that that was their job. Like so, I don't no, know. Why. Really. So know? I gotta put this out there. I gotta put my little story out there on, you know, why I am so understanding of a lot of this stuff, right? And and Angelo knows this story because we've Angelo and I have talked privately. A bazillion times, if you will, from that respect. I, I remember having a phone call with you very recently, past like almost two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. You, you look up and it's like, like now, Dude, we've been talking for two and a half hours, and I still had five hours worth of questions. That, that's in my mind. 
that I haven't even gotten out yet. And I'm trying to still give you guys, you know, that that way of life, if you will, because I'll just give you this quick story. I, Angelo knows about it. <clears throat> His name is Eric Hardy. E-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-I-N-G. Look him up, y'all. Eric Harding was, was as awesome. I'm telling you right now, he's probably the only guy that literally had any way of a shot of beating the greatest in of all time. In Light heavyweight at the time. Roy the time. Jones Jr. Yeah. He tore his bicep during this fight. But what Turf was so lucky with, my best friend growing up, still my best friend. Shout out. <laughs> Oh my God, y'all are going to meet him real soon. Uh, anyways, long story short, he knew Eric Harding from when I write. I left high school, went to the West Coast. He was still on the East Coast. Long story short, Eric Harding en- enters the vicinity. I get a job out of college, right? In Midtown Manhattan. Well, Clifton, New Jersey is 30 minutes south of where my job was. I was still living in Waterbury, Connecticut, which was way, way far. Long story short, I got to go live with Eric Harding in Clifton, New Jersey during his training camp for David Teresco. I want to say it was the IBA. It was was a a, a belt fight. Long story short, I got to see every and anything in between. Meaning, watching this man get up and run three to five miles a day. A day. Right. Tell me if I'm wrong, Angelo. Every no, every, not, no, no, that's not like that's that's if you, can't, if you can't do that, then you know you can't fight. Right. Yeah. So that's three to three to five miles. Hey, every- hey uh, turf. In fact, look, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let turf continue with the story, but I need to yeah. give you guys the context of this. Okay? Please, so, yes. So, yes. so that, and then I then I got to go get my anti-rejection medicine <laughs> after I give you this context, and I'm going to yes. let turf do a solo thing and really? to you about right. how he personally knew Eric Harding, but. Eric Harding in his career, okay, uh, professional career, in his professional career, he only lost four times. He's a guy that won 23 fights. So he's talking about when he got to live with Eric Harding, when Eric Harding was getting ready to fight David Telesco. And at that time, David Telesco was one of the top people at the light heavyweight class. But again, let me give you guys context so that you understand what, what he's explaining to you, okay? Eric Harding at the time, and I don't know if you even knew this, <laughs> but at the time, Eric Harding had already beaten Antonio Tarver. Yeah. So some of you guys who have watched Rocky the movie <laughs> might only know Antonio Tarver as Mason Dixon. Exactly. Um, okay. But Antonio Tarver happened to be uh, an, uh, an Olympic uh, champion for uh, for us and also was one of the best uh, champions in yeah. boxing and knocked out Roy Jones Jr. But anyways, I hate talking that. Uh, I hate I, that story. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, hate I, was, I was shocked when that happened. So anyway, <laughs> Eric, okay, Eric Harding beat Antonio Tarver. Then he went to go fight Roy Jones Jr. in where what Turf is saying is Tor's bicep, I believe. Is that correct, Turf? Correct. correct. Right? Okay. Then, after he loses to Roy Jones, he gets himself back up, wins two fights, to fight Antonio Tarver again. (laughs) Unfortunately, if you watch that fight, that fight was on HBO. But you remember, I don't know if you remember this, Turf, but in that fight with Antonio Tarver the second time, they were going back and forth, and then Tarver TKOs him. Yes, I do remember. All right, so then after that fight, he fights a guy who also beat Roy Jones later in his career by the name of Glenn Road Warrior Jones. Oh, you remember Glenn, the Jamaican man. The Jamaican man, right? Glenn, okay. now, was Glenn a Road Warrior Johnson <laughs> beats Eric Harding in a 12-round unanimous decision. And after that is when Turf got to live with Eric Harding yes. because the next fight, Eric it's Harding fun. is training to fight David Telesco, who he defeats in a 12-round fight in Connecticut. Yes. Did I give enough yes. context there? You sir? got For all For people God. to understand. You you put that down way better than I could have. It was in Uncasville, right at the casino. 
I don't think y'all understand. I'll never forget these days for as long as I I literally got to watch a guy train for a fight from literally the day it started to the day it ended. I got to see him wake up at 4, 5, 6 a.m., run that three to five miles. Ladies and gentlemen, it was like whatever you do every morning, you know, to go to work, whether it's drink a glass of water, right, make yourself some breakfast. Every morning, I watch this guy get up and run three to five miles. Just naturally, every morning. I'm talking about nothing else. That's it. And it was religious. It was, there was no questioning. There was no, is he going to do it? Is he not going to do it? No, it was just natural. And then, and that, it was and by the way, Turf, go ahead. Yeah. Mind. Please, I want when, Turf, when Turf was with Eric Harding, you guys have to understand that back-to-back -back losses to and, and to, so he wins two, then loses two because those are HBO contracts. So yes. he, he gets knocked out by Tarver, and then he like he loses to Glenn Johnson, but he at least went twelve rounds. This is a fight that if if Eric Harding doesn't win the fight against Telesco, oh, his, his career's, career's over. over. It's done. It's done. He was the I'm so happy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, y'all don't understand. Y'all are getting such a masterclass. The man's feet was to the fire like I've never seen in my life. Ever. Ever. He just, he literally just gave y'all the God's honest truth. You can go look. This was at the tail end of his career. It was over. Like, if he didn't win this fight, it was literally over. And I got to watch everything. And, That's and me taking my anti-rejection medicine, everybody, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will never forget this for as long as I let. I don't know how I got so fortunate. Because, again, I got to live with him from before the contract was ever even signed. I was at his manager's office. On Park Avenue in Midtown Manhattan with the big wigs. When he signed it, the pictures. I mean, I saw every aspect of a fight game. And everybody gave me the goods. I'm telling you right now, I'll never divulge everything I know from that fight. I will with people that I trust and know. And right. Exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. I, you will never get me to say everything I know about that fight on camera. But let me tell y'all, y'all have no clue of what this man was dealing with during this fight. Let oh, alone yeah. how much of a you, I, look. All of the compounded I, stress oh outside of the fight itself. You think you have managers that are there for you, right? Like, you you people have no idea what fighters go through at all. At all. Not even remotely. The emotional roller coaster of what a fighter has to go through. And, and, and again, to be fair to everyone so that it doesn't seem like... Let me give it to you in this context because I, I at least get to say I'm speaking from a standpoint of having experienced it so the story turf is talking about is he's just a friend of eric harding's at this point and he's having to experience the emotional ups and downs as a friend right um different sparring partners canceling yeah. oh. and so many different things so let me just explain this first of all if you're going to be a boxer like a real one now okay so i'm not talking about so you know, like, please, man, please, you guys got to stop with the celebrity stuff. With me, yeah, man. I'm seeing like I don't right know, like chefs and content creators, and and again, look, I am not going to disrespect you in your Twitch era if you're willing to get punched in the face. My question I is, are you willing to get punched in the face by Manny Pacquiao right now? <laughs> And if you're not, then I can't put you in the same context. Okay, because it's like you you're either playing um tackle football with your friends in the park somewhere, or you're in the NFL combine. Like yes. there's no in between. Nope. Okay, so just because you not see these guys who are content creators that have money and then they put it on TV for you to watch, and then right. you're, you're I mean, I, I hate to say it, man, but I don't pay for those because it's it's insulting. it's insulting it's insulting 
it's insulting, right? Like I'm no, just saying, it's... like I get it. If you want to get your entertainment the way Ooh. you want to get it, it's your money, your prerogative. <laughs> but I don't want to support that because I feel like you're hurting the actual people who yes. are putting their lives on the line to give you championship level fights. Yes. So I can't do it, man. You want to get Iceman John Scully going on this, bro? This is this is it. I can't do it. Bro. He right. absolutely despises this stuff. He absolutely okay, but, despises. But again, so so I I want to I want to get back to the Eric Harding and what what <laughs> yeah, no, going absolutely. through. I, yeah, when I, he I, was feeling just as Eric Harding's friend, the you know the reason why like first off, if you're going to be a boxer like a real one or a fighter, an MMA fighter, you got to be built different. Yeah, like mentally, you got to be built different. Like you just you just are you just. It's it's not I mean, like not not everybody can okay first of all not everybody can be right. a, a professional boxer not or a level. professional not that level. fighter okay not that level. you know so so oh. first off you to even get there if you're doing it the right way you got to go through the amateurs like yes. Eric Harding did for example and then yeah. you got to go through that and build up your skill and then you go to the pros and in the pros there's a delicate balance of how you have to win these fights right yes. okay there's no such thing as like when they say oh man well cesar chavez fought a lot of bums look first of all man unless you've done it yourself <laughs> or you've traveled to mexico and you've seen how some of these quote unquote cab well, drivers well, well, actually do fight <laughs> you don't get to talk about it because some of these cab drivers that you're saying are fighting for their lives they're trying to kill you okay they gotta so, what, gotta take out your mama <laughs> so 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 again like i don't i i don't like the context of when people try to say oh that guy was an easy fight i don't even like saying it like there's no such thing as an easy fight okay exactly. if you're getting, somebody's trying to bash your head in it wasn't easy all right so no no there doesn't exist but anyway yeah so then moving up to this level what what turf's talking about when you're a fighter and you're dead set on I got to win my next fight against David Telesco, right? <laughs> because I just got knocked out by Antonio Tarver. Right. I tried to beat Glenn Johnson, who's also at this championship level, and I took him 12 rounds but lost the decision. I got to win this fight, man, no matter what. Doesn't matter if my sparring partners are faking on me. It doesn't no matter. matter if this oh, is happening. Yeah. Doesn't matter if my manager's oh, crazy. Kids your happy, brain, dude. your mind as a fighter is like, I just got to win. Right, so turf got to see it as a friend, like and somebody didn't even were, know it. I didn't even know this. I didn't even know stuff. how. Yeah, I had no idea where he was at in his career. See, and that's the beauty of what y'all are getting right now. This, this will go viral, in my opinion, for a lot of reasons because we're talking back when when this mattered. Like boxing was still, it was still hanging on. I'm not going to say it was at its prestige, right? The 80s is when it was literally at the top, in my opinion. When you oh, had, oh, come on, Turf. Like, like that, there were some really good ones well, in the 90s. Nice and we, bro, and we but, can't pick away all of the the Mayweather, Cotto, no, we can't. We can't. Pacquiao, no, that, no, that Dallas, was cool. no, there was a lot. It was a lot. You know, I do just have. I do have. I think a, it depends uh, on the era, but we can agree right now that Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia doesn't carry the same oh, the type can. of. Of, of hype to us as Corrales Mayweather did. Nah, not even close. Not even close. Not even remotely close. And that's the sad part that we have to right curb our our you know appetite for because we know we're not getting those fights anymore right now. We know when they happen. Even hey, and and y'all even know I, I've already given you my Spence Crawford. That was supposed to be our generational fight. But I think anybody that knew boxing knew Terrence was going to walk over. Him, in my yeah, can I tell you that that yeah. there was no like when it was being made? I even said, "Man, this is really bad. Yeah. Like this is like this Errol is Spence crazy. shouldn't do this because Errol Spence. I get, I got the business idea of it, but Errol Spence was coming from that accident. That man, dude, like I don't know, like I don't, know. Like, I don't think I think tour. the last time we saw Errol Spence at the level that we want to see Errol Spence right. was before that car accident. Yes. Okay. Um, I now, now, again, not to take it away, the fact that Errol Spence did fight 
the best pound for pound fighter <laughs> in, in the world. Terrence Crawford. That's so it's world. a little unfair. But can I just say that if we saw Errol Spence fight Tim Zhu, I'm probably going to put my money on Tim Zhu. Can I just right. say that? I would 100% be on the same boat. I don't see Errol Spence beating Tim Zhu. I don't but I don't know, right? Like, this is where it's we get to find fight. out. Styles make fights, yeah. Yeah, we get to find out. Maybe Errol Spence can do it, right? Um, yeah. But, like, you look at that, like, like the Isaac Pitbull Cruz that we just watched, right? Uh, so, Isaac Cruz moves up one weight class from 135 to 140. And then, you know, people who don't know, again, they're like, oh, man, this is going to be a good fight. I, I knew he was going to destroy Roly, man. Like, like. Oh no! Like we what, are we, all know what, it. what are we doing here? Like we what, 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 are, what are we doing? Like did you guys we not watch it. Isaac Cruz versus Javante Davis? Oh my god! At one thirty-five, like did, yeah, did you miss that fight? Yeah. Did because, you know this why he ain't trying to rush to fight him again? Like, well, I mean, again, the money's got to be right. It's got to be right. You, the money's got to be right. But but like I said, like like if somebody would have said, "Oh man, you know, Roley's gonna beat him," I'm like, I don't know what. I don't, I don't know. know what boxing you've been watching. I don't know what you've been watching. I got to show y'all another gym. Anybody know who that is? I know Angelo knows who that is. Oh, of course, man. Pound for pound, the best. Uh, ah, um, at that time. Okay, and, and back, okay. So when people... Frank, don't, what, sorry. Yeah, Glad when people you. don't understand... Well, finish your story first uh, because you're no, talking I, about the light heavyweight yeah, division. I am, but I, okay. I just... But the, when we're talking about the light heavyweight no, division no. and you want to really go back, before Roy Jones, yeah. there was a guy by the name of Michael Spinks who, Spinks. at the time, if you really <laughs> understood boxing, you see why he was the best pound-for-pound pound pound fighter in wow. the world. And wow. in fact, wow. let me just, again, yeah. if we're going to get into this whole Michael yeah. Spinks thing, man, yeah, people forget that the reason why Michael Spinks was the best fighter in the world is at the time that he moved up to heavyweight. Yeah, to be the first person to ever go from light heavyweight That's to heavyweight. winning the heavyweight title, the guy he was fighting was a guy by the name of Larry Holmes. He, was, uh, he beat Larry Holmes, and he beat Larry Holmes Muhammad to Ali. be Larry Holmes' first ever defeat. Yes. So at the time, at the oh, time, everybody thought Larry Holmes was going to smoke him. Everybody thought Larry Holmes was going to spank Michael Spinks. Big right. Time. Larry Holmes beats him, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Again, Turf, you got to excuse my memory a little bit. No, I, know. I did go through the hospital, all right? Yeah. So my memory is not all back together, but I think that was 85. I think in 1985, you 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 might have to look it up, but I think it's in 1985, Larry Holmes might have been 49-0 and 0, or 48-0. and, 0, and He's trying to get the Rocky Marciano yeah. record of 49-0, right. and 0, and then it was like, Super televised. Everybody around the world wants to see it. Michael Spinks was regarded as the Roy Jones Jr. of that time. Um, he's the best light heavyweight in the world. And then he moved up in weight, and everybody thought, oh, man, you're just going to get murdered, dude. I mean, like, you're a good boxer. but And then he beats Larry Holmes, and then he beat him again in the rematch um, also. So, like like I said, like, like when I think a lot of times nowadays, a lot of people think of Michael Spinks as the guy that Mike Tyson knocked out in 90 seconds without really understanding that the context of that fight was Larry Holmes, or I mean, uh, Michael Spinks was the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Yes. And Mike Tyson was the one coming yes. up in the ring. Yes, it's a fighter. So the fact that Mike Tyson was able to do that to Michael Spinks was an amazing feat. It was like, it was like, I don't know, like you saw a comet, like, <laughs> or, or, like you know what I mean? Like you saw what? a shooting we're star go by. Yeah, we're the about to see you, right? The eclipse. Yeah. We're about to see the eclipse in what three, four days that we won't ever see for what another hundred years or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So like, right something like right. that, where the perfect storm of something just doesn't happen. And and again, this is this goes to what I actually talked about. I'll bring it back to football for you guys. This is <laughs> yeah. what I was saying that the reason why I believe Antonio Pierce is going to win us twelve games. We're going to end up in the playoffs and we're going to end up in the AFC Championship game and we're going to win the division is because if Kansas City was Mike Tyson, at the time, there was this whole fear factor around Love Mike it. Tyson and, yes. and, 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 it, and it could be said that Michael Spinks might have psyched himself out before the fight even began. Yes. All right? Yeah. Because it wasn't the same feeling. Like when Michael Spinks went into with Larry Holmes, 
he was like, no, nah, man, I, I can handle this. <laughs> and he went in with Mike Tyson, there is that thought, like, well, maybe, you know, he wasn't mentally all together. Right. Like, 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 but like, that's what I'm saying is the mental part is more important. So as yes. we're building our Raider team right now, our mental is already there because we already beat Kansas with less. Yeah. We already beat them. We are, we oh, are, we're, we're in, we're living rent free in the Kansas City yes. minds. Right uh, they know, they know that they have to deal with us this year. They got to deal with it. They know, look. And, and so if, if we're, oh, if we're bringing yeah. this back to boxing, that's what I'm saying is we're Mike Tyson in this equation. Exactly. We're, we're, we're not the ones we're, we're like, we're not scared. What are we Damn scared all. of Kansas for? We not beat you with less. We already beat you with less. What do you think is going to be like? Let's say Aiden O'Connell is our quarterback. You don't right. think that guy's coming in every day right now, first in the morning, last to leave the gym, and he's not going to be the best quarterback for us when we right. play Kansas again? Exactly. You, you somehow think that all those eras tour that Travis Kelsey is going to <laughs> right now? Like, you don't think that being a champion is affecting some of the like? Why do you think the Chiefs are making so many moves? Correct. Right. Because Correct. they're trying to change that. Andy Reid's trying to hang on to that culture. He's trying to bring in folks like J.K. Dobbins, who <laughs> really wants to win, so uh, that he has uh, someone in the locker room that's going to try to talk to the other guys who have been winning a lot. Because when right. you get used to winning, man, when you get used to winning, you start to think it's easy. Yeah. And and when when you're the when you're the champ, just know that there's people behind you that are Ready. hungry. Ready. trying to come after you Ready. and that was what happened like tyson was like i'm gonna go smoke michael spinks because he's right. in my way of me being pound for pound the best fighter in the world right like that's what happened in that perfect storm yeah and right spinks was an unfortunate recipient he <laughs> recipient. was the unfortunate yeah. recipient but but again i hated that when people talk about like legendary greats i'm like did you guys forget that michael before roy jones jr even existed, that guy was michael the spinks was spanking everyone he was the guy dude why do you think i had this stuff ladies and gentlemen like that, I'm probably even surprising you a little bit, Raider Shans. Man, like you like this dude got some good stuff over here. Like, I yeah. Oh no, dude. Like I told you, you can't. You couldn't have walked into Wild Card Gym at in in 04, 05 without having an encyclopedic knowledge. Oh. Like I told you, man. Like I don't even like doing it, Turf. Like like I I honestly, man, I cannot sit with anyone to talk to me about boxing or MMA if I if the frame of reference from the beginning is this guy is talking to me about Jake Paul man. <laughs> like I, I, can't, I can't do it like I like I'll be nice you know I'll be nice but I, I'm like right. we, we can't have this conversation man because Already you didn't done. say to me Wilfredo Benitez right. you didn't say to me Salvador Sanchez you hey. don't want to talk to me about hey. Willie Pep. like you I don't want to talk you don't want to talk to me about 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 Ken Norton. You don't want to talk to me about you brought you know, up somebody close. Like, you don't want to talk about I told you don't want to talk about none of this show and tell, bro. I told y'all it was gonna be some show and tell. Y'all see that? That is Carlos Zarate. Oh Zarate. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who knows about Did you get that? To meet him? Did you get to meet Zarate? I didn't get to meet him. Okay. But I got a glove. That's nice, Terry. That's nice. Bro, I'm telling y'all, I am I am definitely a historian of this sport. I think I am going to be with Mr. Reyes, one of our last that actually look at the past and actually adore it and understand it and appreciate our greats. Like I do I and, and turf to be fair, because this is a Raider show, I do it for the Raiders too. Right. That's why I'm. I, I, that's why I get so upset at the newer generation when they're like, "Let's trade the form to go get <laughs> to go get you know Jane Daniels," and I'm like, "What's wrong that's with you, perfect. man?" It's not the perfect. way we built our greatness was through Gene Upshaw, first round pick, 1967, and then the next year, what did we do? Okay, well, we had the first pick, so we picked Eldridge Dickey as a quarterback. Our mm -hmm. second round pick was Ken Stabler as a quarterback, but our oh. third round pick was um 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 uh Archell. Yes, our show was in that draft. You know, and, and and again, if you don't go back and hit, if you're going to say to me you're a Raider fan, then you better, like, tell me that you at least understood that Jim Otto to Dave Dalby to Don Mosbar, like, you better, like, we better talk about some history. You got to know all of it. 
you better know all of it because then you're not really a Raider fan. That means you just like you're just wearing silver and black because it's cool. Correct. No, I agree. Yeah, El Terrible, uh, Carlos Zarate. He's to go do your history, guys. Just just go Google these people we're talking about tonight. Listen, they are staples in the boxing world, all time, forever. Doesn't matter. Like. Again, I don't just buy because it's some, you know, it's it's a staple in boxing. I also buy to help out. Like, there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to share that, you know, I just buy to help. You know, it's but, I adore boxing. So yeah, like when Turf brings out a glove and he says, "Hey, I got it signed by Carlos Zarate," and some of you guys don't know who that is. Okay, just say to yourself that there was a man who actually fought 70 professional fights. <laughs> Let's start with that. Let's just start with that. And then, yes. then we can talk about the fact that he won 66 of them. We can talk about the fact that he had 63 Naga. You know what I'm saying? Like, Then we can actually have a conversation. He, out of the 70 know. fights, he only had four losses. Like, They don't know. They don't know. They don't know, on, man. man. Yeah. But I, probably one of the – can. Uh, I mean, Turf, you, uh, you got to watch him. I'm sure you went back on the tapes and got to watch him, but can we say that he's one of the best punchers we've ever seen? Of all time. Of, of all time, time, right? Like, of definitely in the top 100, right? Of, like, people who can, e- like, like... Easy. Easy, right? Easy. Turn it over. Okay, and so when we're talking face. about Inui, okay, when we're talking about the Japanese guy right now, Inui, you guys who are a fan of Inui, then go do your homework and go back to Bantamweights yes. back in the day. And then go watch Carlos Zarate. And then go tell me about him. <laughs> yeah, that's just, dude, I swear. And I look, I want y'all to know, I, this is not scripted. I literally don't have anything. Yeah, he's just I, bringing out stuff, I, man. And then it's bringing out stuff. Let me tell and you it's it's just naturally lining up, bro. I swear to God on my life, I didn't have a syllabus. Normally when I do this, Y'all know, man, I, I've had other super fans and stuff. I have a list. I'm asking questions. I already knew this was going to be epic because I don't need a list in front of me. I don't I don't even need the stuff I have over here I'm showing y'all. I I am literally a lover of boxing. Look, if you're in the chat room right now and you are a boxing person, ask a question. Go yes. ahead and ask a question. Anything. Right? And then Anything. If, it, if it ends up making me and Turf talk about it, because maybe I had an experience of it or Turf had an experience. Right. But anyway, Turf, I'm so sorry, dude. We, we went into a rabbit hole that, and we forgot <laughs> to finish your story of you being oh, friends no, no, no. with Eric no, Harding. Exactly. Well, that was the story, though, to be honest. No, 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 because... but go ahead and wrap it in a bow. Yeah, like, you, you got to see Eric Harding as a friend. You lived with him before the David Telesco fight. <laughs> did you get to watch the fight, at least? Did he? Did I he... was ringside. Get the was hell ringside. out of here. I was ringside, you were ringside to the David well, I was right there Aaron for the fight. fight. I was right there for the fight. The man put so the way this worked out, ladies. This is how you know you really do truly have true friends. Again, literally my best friend on the planet, Dwayne Huff. That's how I met Eric. Him and Eric got tight while I was in college. Right, he stayed home. And long story short, I got this gig in Midtown Manhattan. Believe it or not, it's actually the same job that got me here to Austin, Texas, where I currently live. That's how far back we talking. I got that job, and it was Midtown. I lived in Bridgeport, and it's like, shit, it's too far. I was commuting two and a half hours one way. And Eric picked up this fight. And he was like, nah, bro, come stay with me, man. Hop on the bus, 20, 30 minute ride on the bus. You had the job. No two and a half hours. So I did that to get my feet wet and really start working on my craft before I did the whole, you know, move from Waterbury to Bridgeport. Long story short, I watched the man's entire camp. And I'm still in awe at all of the shit that was going on around this camp. See, and that's the other part that I just want to make sure I bring in. You think you have distractions in your life with your regular job, right? Your family and stuff. I am talking stuff that literally derails people to never come back from. And he's just taking it like a punch throughout all of this. Not only is he dealing with a corrupt, terrible manager. You know, he's got a trainer that absolutely loves him and hates seeing him go through this train wreck and mo. God rest Mo. I bro, I I saw so much in this fight, camp. 
And to watch him the come underbelly, the ugly underbelly of boxing. The underbelly of boxing, ladies and gentlemen. There is, I'm not telling because they're not my stories to tell as far as what he went through. But I can assure you that you think you've been through some shit? You have no clue of what a real, true professional boxer goes through. You have no idea. You have no idea. I don't want to put out too many of like, the, Mayther, the Mayweather stories or a pass out story. There are but... a Brazilian of them that are not mine to tell. All I can tell y'all is Turf was a witness to it front and center in boxing camp, at the gym, watching him run behind cars. Everything. I saw every last bit of it. I saw his manager treat him like a circus act. So where he's bringing in people from all over the world, look at my shiny new boxer. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think y'all understand. I saw everything. And man, let me tell you, y'all don't have a clue. Y'all don't have a clue. And that man came out victorious through it all. Yeah. Again, against, again, he was like, he was, fight. wasn't fighting a cab driver as you guys he would notice. Angelo is literally bringing this to my attention today, April 2nd, 2024, where this fight happened in the early 2000s, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. No, that's what I was t- trying to tell you. It's like, let's you. not hate on these, exactly. like the mid 2000s were good. Like, it's just now. It's like, let's call it after COVID. Like, from COVID on. <laughs> This man was literally fighting for his life, and I just looked at it as, and he it was just the average regular day Joe dude. I had and, no, and, I had and no Earth, idea. when he was fighting for that. I don't know if you remember, but that was for the IBF. It was USBA IBF. It was light heavyweight yeah. title. USBA so, IBF. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, so fight. what that means is that he was trying to get back into so at least next. getting another title shot. Yes, it was the only way. I'll yeah. never forget it. It was. I'm telling you, I remember these nuances. You like, know, like right, bo- like guys, right before that David Telesco fight with Eric Harding, he lost a really close decision that to a lot of Glenn buddy, Johnson. A lot of people, and then right buddy. before that, when he got knocked out by Tarver, that kind of derailed things. Everything, everything. Yeah. And nobody wanted to fight Glenn Johnson when he fought him. Let's keep that. Oh, yeah, That's no, another part. No, See, this, the Johnson. rabbit hole runs so deep in this game, ladies and gentlemen. It just runs deep. But I saw it firsthand. I was a part of it on both sides of the fence. People using him. People loving him. You know, people not giving a shit. And people that absolutely you know just hated seeing what they saw for his well-being i saw everything in in between and i won't say it left a sour taste in my mouth at all because you know what i mean it is what it is it's not I, the we, underbelly of it like that's the one that, no different yeah it's, it's like like i like i was telling you guys like one of the hard things about the sport is you you do love the fighters you love the craft you love the art of pugilism you love the sweet science of it and you love the the, the like I, even like now you when you, if you can appreciate mma then you can appreciate and love the the craft and the hard work that it takes to get to a certain level especially if you even get a title shot yeah even get to fight for the title like you can love all of that but there is an ugly underbelly to it all there's an un, uh, there's a very ugly underbelly to it. It's not regulated the way it should be. It's, it's not. not like like, and I'm not saying that the NFL doesn't have one, but the NFL at least has a union. You know what I mean? Like, there's a certain healthcare yeah. situation that happens. You're and, actually, you know, uh, like there's a lot, there's a lot, you know. Yes. So. No, absolutely, man, absolutely. We have we are diving in now. I. It's time to start getting into the so so, uh, so war production just went on. Look, man, you can't ask oh, questions yeah. like that. I'm gonna tell you right now, dude. We spent like the last two and a half hours literally talking about how we are not answering questions like that. It's insulting. <laughs> it's insulting, man. I'm not even gonna bring it up because it's insulting. No, 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 you know, no. like I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, if Leo's still here, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this Leo thing, but right. we're, we're not gonna bring that up. We, we yeah, spent an hour that. talking about it. Exactly. That's how it's insulting. This I new did. generation of people that just don't get it, man. I mean, like, look. Bro, you're from Australia. You should be talking about the fact that Tim Zhu got a bad rap. Yeah. Okay? That's your countryman right there. 
Okay, Tim Zhu is 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 from the Katsuzu lineage. I, I you know I'm not I happy like about you. it. We I showed like a clip you. of Jacob Stitch Duran talking about how he's not happy about it. It's something that shouldn't have happened to him, but it At did, all. and it did. So so look, man, like, look, stop stop this. Like look, like, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna talk to me about no chefs jumping in a ring and then they're on Twitch because they're a gamer. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna answer no Logan Paul question. No. No. We're not talking about that. Man. You know we love you. Want, you, you wanna talk to me about cool. Mayweather Cotto? Right. Let's right. talk about Mayweather oh, Cotto. That was a fight. All right. That was a fight. You know, you wanna talk you want to talk about the fact that when Miguel Cotto worked his way back up, he actually beat Sergio Martinez at 160 Bro. pounds to become the champion again. And before Sergio he retires. Martinez was a monster. Yeah, like, like Sergio again, man, let's talk about real, like, like, like. Otherwise, then I might as well talk about Raider football because I can't really get mad at you guys <laughs> about Raider football, right? Right? But, <laughs> but you, 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 y'all can't be bringing up no uneducated ass um, questions yeah, about uh, right. boxing or fighting when I respect these people way too much. I, right. You know, that was my profession. Like, no, like we're not, we're not doing that, man. We're not, yep. I'm sorry to have to spank you, but we're not doing <laughs> it. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like you have to, you have to be able to read the room and, and war. I know it's see war is from Australia. Like you said, war is just oh, waking well, well, To be fair to you, war, you didn't come into the beginning of the show. We already addressed exactly. it. Exactly. Right, we addressed it's, exactly it's what we're going to talk about. And we're not talking about crap. All right, we're talking about real. We were we were just finishing a heartfelt story between uh, Terrence Crump and Eric Harding. All right, one of the greats at light heavyweight who he got to be with him preparing for the training camp yes. after he beat David Telesco. And and here's one that you might not remember, uh, uh, Turf, because you probably already weren't around um, Eric Harding at that time. Yeah. After he wins that fight, he beats Daniel Judah. Yes. Right? Yeah. But then, but then his last fight, man, and this was on TV. I don't know if, if you remember a guy by the name of Bad Chad Dawson, and they were talking about how he was going to be the next big Southpaw great. That was Eric Harding's last fight, man. I know, and it didn't go well. I know, it but but think well. about it. Like to have already to made it to you know, make it all the way back from losing to Roy Jones to. You know, like the ups and downs he went through. Like I said, you gotta have a certain mentality to even yes. get up to the. You, you're fighting twelve round fights at 175 pounds. Yeah. yeah, you know, like you gotta have a certain mentality, man. Like it's not so, like so like I'm, like I'm, shout out to Eric Harding, guys. Yes, like, like, shout you know, out to Eric Harding. Eric Harding has always got a special place in my heart, man. It's so funny you bring this up because guess what? It's such a small world, right? It's such a small knit community. You know who was training, Eric? Uh, I mean, uh, Bad Chad Dawson, right? In some of these fights, was where he, was he in Texas? No, he's a born and raised Connecticut kid. Oh, he's a Connecticut guy. I'm sorry. And and John Scully was his trainer. Oh, Ooh. you know what? That's yep. right. I already know it's called. Yeah, I told click you, man. My memory. I said that. Like, I already kind of know it was going to click for you. Being at a, you're right though. Scully trained him. That's right. When he had a belt. And I, I'm not again. These are things I I will absolutely get John Scully on here. I, I trust me. He's he's my guy. I'll get him on here in a heartbeat. In fact, if he even knew about this, I me I, I had a lot going on. You know, right? You Angelo knows there's a lot going on for me just in general. You know, jobs, all kind of stuff that nobody needs to care about other than me. But I'm just saying, if I would have been able to really, truly put this on like I wanted to, and like I will eventually in the future, because I know it just naturally has to happen just due to the fact of who John Scully is. John Scully is that dude that gets everybody together. It doesn't matter who you fought, when you fought, how you fought, trainer, coach, ref, fighter. If there's something boxing related going on, that guy is the main person getting it all put together. He's yeah. the one that you're going to see at all these events where you see the Iran Barclays, right? The, the yeah. uh, Marlon no, Stone. I, I, I get it. Certainly someone who's a guardian of the history. A of, guardian. Of, of, of boxing. Like, nobody like, else. Admit, but again, like I get it, guys. This is a Raider show. First of all, I want to thank everybody <laughs> who's still with us live. I it's know, three hours already. And I, I, I tried to tell you guys, like, 
I'm trying to bring it back to Raider talk, man. And this Terrence Crump guy just keeps, he keeps failing. It. And I got Leo asking me about Tio Fimo Lopez versus Ida hey, Cruz. That is, that is, hey, that is a great question because I actually want your answer too. I'm going to give mine first. Right? Because right. look, you guys remember. Angelo looks at me to be, right, the aficionado, the guy, because I've done it. Well, I look at him exactly the opposite. Times 10. So I'm giving my thoughts on this Cruz Lopez fight. <clears throat> and what I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't think this will shock anyone, but I think Cruz wins this fight. I, You know, and the only reason I think Cruz wins this fight is because I think he can withstand what Lopez tries to give him because I don't know if Lopez is still in it anymore. That, and I'm challenging Lopez on this because in all honesty, he is by far in my opinion, one of the guys today with the best skill set. Uh, yeah, it, no, he's definitely yeah. a champion for he's, sure. Um, he's there, but the part, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. Dive no, in. No, no, this is the, this is the part that's going to hurt you guys the most. The Teofimo Lopez versus Isaac Cruz, at least within the next five years, you'll never see it happen. It no. will not happen. It, it's not going to happen, and I'll tell you why. Um, Teofimo Lopez, if I'm not mistaken, is with a different promotional group, and because he's not signed to Al Heyman, Right. Uh, Isaac Cruz is side to Al Heyman. Right. The fight you're probably going to see, if if it was me, if 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 I'm giving you how boxing works in terms of how they do these type of things, you're probably going to see Isaac Cruz, who just beat uh, Roly. Um, they'll probably do a rematch. Okay, no, because that that's that's yeah. easy money to make. They'll exactly. do a rematch. Um, Roly could Same try out. to win, and if Roly wins. Money, more money goes into the promotion, but then roll now it becomes a trilogy, right? right? So then, so then you make more money that way, and then in the meantime, you're not the money for a Gervonta Davis versus Isaac Cruz rematch isn't all there yet. Now you can pull the trigger early, right now you can pull the trigger on Isaac Cruz if you want to go look back. You can watch it free on YouTube right now. Isaac Cruz versus Gervonta Davis. I sent it to our guy Chris Kimber, uh, Protect the Shield podcast, and I was like, dude. All you need to, I guess he was like, oh man, I'm going to start watching Isaac Cruz. And I'm like, here. And I just sent them that tape. And I said, this is all you need to watch. That's it. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need to go do your homework and rewatch all the other tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you got to do is watch Isaac Cruz fight Gervonta Davis. And anyone who can do that. Right. Now, now right. you know how legit he is. Now, in a rematch, again, man, Gervonta Davis is built different. I mean, he's just built different, guys. And, and. On I a rematch, do. I'll it's, never, I'll, I will never go against a against Javante. No, I agree. He's, I think he's, he's built different. He's built different. He's downloaded it, he, it downloaded in the computer. I forget who, man, who I want to give credit to. Credit that's to. I'll never forget when that fire, you know, I, I downloaded it into the computer. I can't think of who that was, but yes, Javante Davis is that cerebral type of a guy where once he downloads you into the, his computer, yeah. it's a wrap. No, we got we got to watch him spar here at the Mayweather gym. Like he's he's the real deal, man. Like Gervonta Davis is is the real deal. He's 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 different, guys. He's different. as a champion, he's special. He's he's <laughs> at one thirty five. If, if he continues to fight at thirty five, the only fight that for me that I would love to see if it would ever even be allowed is cool. Lomachenko. Yeah, Lomachenko, yeah. Because yeah. Lomachenko to me is in another level, and I I actually think it's a little unfair. That Lomachenko even happened. had to go up to 135 because, in all honesty, I can't see too many big. people beating Lomachenko at 126. I couldn't nah. see too many people beating him at 130. Um, and even an older Lomachenko right now, uh, guys, man, that guy is the Matrix. Like he is built different. Like these are like so. This is what I mean. Yeah. Turf, like I don't want to be the guy that sits there and goes, "Well, boxing isn't great." It's like no. Boxing is great if you're really gonna if you we want to go in a rabbit hole. Of, right, I, if you want to ask me who if you want me to give you a homework and tell you go watch these guys, then you'll really fall in love with boxing. Right. You know, Lomachenko is about to go fight Combosos in Australia. Yes. So you know, um, I mean that these are like again, man, they're out there, guys. But you you got to really be yeah. passionate yeah. about it. Exactly. You know, it, it almost sucks, right? Like there's the combine, and then they're showing you in the NFL combine. Here's who might be good, <laughs> I, you know. Versus, if you want to be a boxing fan, you could literally go look it up right now. And this is who's good. Inui right. is good. He's worth right. your time and he's worth your money. 
Correct. You know, like, like go, go ahead and watch Tyson Fury. He's worth your time. He's worth your money. If you want to go watch Anthony Joshua, it's just that I'm not one of the people that are like, oh, let's go pay for Anthony Joshua versus an MMA fighter. Like, I'm not doing that, man. I'm not doing that. Because then why don't we go pay for Tom Brady to go play basketball with, um, exactly. with, uh, with, with, with like, you know, LeBron James then? Like, the, come on, guys. No truth, no, truth, no truth pugilist fan cares. You know, about these yeah, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? None of them train for it. They don't. All right. Like, like, come on. Like, 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 if we're, if we're going to keep it legit, then let's keep it legit. You know, right. otherwise, then let's not. So, yeah. So, to answer Leo's question, Leo, if you're still on the chat, um, unfortunately, that fight would never happen anyway. So, it's a little bit. <laughs> right. um, right. And uh, what I will say is if you're just asking me and there was no promotions, Teofimo Lopez is super athletic. Honestly, is that, uh, is, the type of champion that's bigger than his weight class. So the fact that he can still cut to 135 oh, that's is, 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 is rough. Um, if it's at a 140 fight, um, Isaac Cruz is really more of a 135 fighter. Right. But you saw that he is able to carry power going up to one uh, to 140. Um, but something else is going to happen anyways. It's going to be like, Isaac Cruz is either going to fight Raleigh or if Devin Haney beats Ryan Garcia, then Devin Haney, maybe, probably not though, because Devin Haney, I think is with top rank, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't think that would happen. Ryan Garcia versus Isaac Cruz is a possibility. Maybe, right. uh, maybe, but I still don't know. I, I, I think that the Al Heyman group is going to keep it in the family. Right. I think that they're going to, it's going to be like, Isaac Cruz versus another Heyman fighter at, at, at some point um, right. for PBC. So that's just kind of how boxing works, guys. It's like, it's like, it depends on the pro the promotional team. It's like the AFC and the NFC. And <laughs> it's like, it just, like, they, they're not even going to play each other unless, you know, like they're within the same kind of a, of a conference or something. Right. Like that. No, you're absolutely right, man. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely no, but go ahead, Turf. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, is there uh, what was the yeah, question we, you wanted to ask? Go ahead. No, we've done a lot of boxing. Uh, I, I, I do have to dive into a little bit of your uh, history with MMA because this is really where you make your mark. And I'm going to spend this last at least an hour. Right <laughs> I told Turf, you, man. Guys, can you believe this guy? He's he's in Texas right now. I, I mean, I'm I'm gonna guess that it's probably almost midnight over there or something. But this, this guy's sitting here, man, and he's like, he's like, I, I mean, look, I'm a man of my word. He was a guest on on uh, when I was hosting the Captain Jack Rackham uh, channel, and he answered all the football questions that I wanted to ask him, and I wanted to pull his brain yes. about his football expertise. So, sure, I said I'll go on your show and. I'll yes. answer whatever questions you want. And this isn't even, <laughs> and Terf knows, like, I don't even like really doing this type of stuff because this is private stuff for me. Like, I, like, right. like, I, I, I don't mind doing it with, with, with Turf, but, you know, uh, I'm doing it for him. It, so, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm, so, I'm, yeah. I'm you keep me here another hour, man. <laughs> hey, look, I'm part of this community, man. And I know these guys want to hear this stuff, man. They okay. really do. All right. <laughs> so, so when it does come to MMA, Right. When it comes to the world of right, that cross, you got see, because I do know. I don't know if a lot of people understand that your favorite MMA fans, their boxing is terrible. It's horrid. They have no concept of boxing at all. Well, to be fair, it's gotten better. most of them. Most of it. Oh, it's gotten a lot better it's now. Because... A lot better. And and also to be fair. Um, but you know, it, uh, okay. So boxing, remember in the first hour or in the first two hours, we covered how boxing is a very specific, a very specific hmm. style. Like it's like samurais. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So you'll understand this because you're a 16 year practitioner of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? right. Um, you're a black belt. So jujitsu, if you really want to break it down, is actually really close in terms of the the abilities and the mental skills that it takes to be a jujitsu black belt. It's the same as boxing. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to parallel that in the sense that I get it. Yes, I know 
Uh, and please, again, man, if you're coming into this right now in the third hour and you're going to start trying to talk to us about boxing or MMA, just please know that I'm the type of guy that's going to snap at you if you have no context or understanding or have ever been on the mat or have have done any of this stuff at all. So try not to, try to keep your opinion to yourself, maybe. <laughs> Unless you want me to just you, you just nail you, I mean, yeah. like I said, man, you like I I was able to Google search Terrence Crump. You can Google search it, all right. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> so so I am speaking from the standpoint that uh, Mr. Crump here brought me on to yes, speak my expertise on having that be my profession. Okay, right. so in my professional opinion, okay, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> in terms of the art itself yeah i'm not a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt i am right. only a martial artist within the striking realm of boxing karate kung fu and and all of that right but uh in in because i did get a chance to work with oh i don't know maybe arguably the greatest heavyweight professional <laughs> ufc jiu-jitsu <laughs> maybe i you know what man i, 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 I don't I, i'm not even gonna flex <laughs> i'm not even gonna flex all right i'm, I'm yeah. not gonna i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna say it but anyway when i see jiu-jitsu and i see the beautiful art of jiu-jitsu and and the way it is played it is very close it is very relatable like to how boxing is played it's mm. super specific you have to really understand the chess matches that are happening. There are moves upon moves upon moves that's happening in like this this like mental game yeah. before the physical movements even start. So Correct. by the time the physical movement starts, if you're if you don't know how to watch it, then you think it's boring. Right. Okay. You, you, you oh. just, and that's what happens a lot. Of Okay. Huge. okay. Yeah. And that's what happens a lot of times when you're when you're watching a boxing match. You're like, right. this is boring. There's no action. And it's like, okay, man, go to the kitchen and go make me a sandwich. Because honestly, like you don't get to be you don't get to be here right now. You don't get to watch this. What's happening is they're tactically setting each other up oh. in these first nine minutes. So that's why you're not seeing a lot of punches happen. Right. Because they're trying to establish position. They're trying to establish stance. They're trying to establish who's winning the jab battle that's just one battle who's commanding okay? the ring who's yeah who's you know, who's commanding? Like, who yeah. is who's gonna who's gonna it's almost like who will mentally break first before we start looking for who will physically break first and remember i told you like in the second hour i was saying when we're looking at boxers or when we're looking at potential fighters the last thing we we bring to the table is whether you're athletic or not Right. Dude, if you're not athletic, then you don't even get to play. Like, no, man, no. I need to see where your mental fortitude is at. Like, right. how tough are you? Are you gonna break, man? Are you gonna start crying? Like, like when when things are getting rough? Like, what you know? Like, because because this thing gets deep. You know, a 15 round <laughs> ah. fight gets deep. A 12 round fight gets deep. A jujitsu match, yeah, it gets deep. It gets. You better be patient. You better right. not. You just because you're on the bottom or 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 you're on the top and it's a gi or a no gi man you better you better have some patience 100%. wait for your opening when it happens have the endurance the mental capacity and mental endurance to be able to strike right when it's really gonna happen like Nine, uh, yeah you know right away right okay so so now that i've established that with you okay terence crump that brazilian jiu-jitsu and boxing is kind of like in the, <laughs> in the, Similar, in yeah. the same mental line okay all right I'm I'm not disrespectful enough to say that um, in MMA there isn't good boxing. Okay, so let me let me give you a frame of reference. Yes, absolutely. MMA is a completely different sport, and trying to compare MMA, the sport of mixed martial arts, to boxing, is literally the equivalent of comparing football, NFL, to baseball. It is, it is two different worlds. Completely. The way the points are scored is in two different fashions. Completely. And, and, and too often times, an average fan who has not shared the mat like you have, Terrence Crump, or has not been in a ring getting popped in the face with jabs or counters, or not maybe played Muay Thai and is getting in, the, in, in, in a plum 
right? And getting elbowed or kneed, like, like they, or right. they, they have no concept of karate and like how you gain distance or Taekwondo and how you use the kick, it's right? Kick. Like if you yeah. have no reference to this and then you just turn on the TV, you're just sitting there and you're like, this is a boar fight, man, and they're in a cage. <laughs> and it's a boar fight in a cage and it's the same as boxing. And now, now you've insulted a lot of us. Because, because you'll also insult a jiu-jitsu person if you say that an MMA jiu-jitsu person is the same as a traditional jiu-jitsu person. Like, right. like it's different, man. It's, it's, it's different. No, you know, I agree. And, 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 and AKA, way different. Yeah. Way different. Okay. So, so now when, when you start to say, you know, when you start to say that, like me coming, I was brought in again and you know this and... I don't think it's a lie, you know, I mean, again, you can Google search it. So I was brought in to explain how to use your hands and the art of boxing in incorporated into mixed martial arts. Um, right. And how do you do that? And, and, and again, I won't say too much more because, uh, you know, Terrence knows where it's all at in terms of historical references. But in my, in my opinion, uh, I do think that there are countries right now, whether it's a Spain or an Argentina or a Mexico, like, um, like Alexa Grasso. Okay. Hmm. The 125 champion at the UFC right now. I think her boxing for MMA is outstanding. Right. I think her boxing for MMA is, is, is so high level. In fact, that I don't, I mean, I make she beat Valentina else, Shevchenko for crying <laughs> yeah. out loud. Like I, I, I don't know. know what else you guys want. Oh, Alexa Grasso oh. beat her. Yo. Okay. Shevanko and hey, for the record, Shevanko. Team Labadi, uh, she trains in Houston, right? Like, yeah, she. Oh, I love Valentina Shevchenko. I, I absolutely Beyond love amazing. as a martial artist. Okay? Beyond amazing. As a martial artist, I absolutely love Valentina Shevchenko. That is someone who, who has uh, mastered the art of Muay Thai at the high level, has mastered yeah. MMA at a high level, understands yeah. jujitsu at a high level. Like, this is a complete fighter, guys. Like, you're not going to find somebody better than a Valentina Shevchenko. It just so happens that Alexa Grasso, <laughs> you know, is that good? Like, she's good. She's oh. good. I mean, it gets right <laughs> 10 times, and, and each time it's still going to be a really good match, and it's going to be a very good chess match. And, you never really know, right? Like on the last fight, you know, like I get it, Alexo Grasso won, but I scored it. I could, I, I could have given it to uh, Valentina, right? right? Like, um, the, the, I thought the first fight was was a lot more Closer. of, um, you know, it's like somebody made the mistake, right? So they were playing at a really, they were playing. It's like if two jujitsu players were playing at a really high level on the mat, and then someone made a mistake. Right. And it's like, oh shit, you know, like, oh no, yeah, yeah, you, you know, know, like, oh, <laughs> and, and, and again, at a championship level, you have to be that quick to capitalize on the mistake. So you have right. to give credit to Alexa Grasso for setting the trap and then capitalizing on the trap when it happens. So, right. so, but, but if we're just going to talk like specifically hands and right. the art of pugilism boxing wise. MMA boxing is not the same. Like mixed martial arts boxing is not the same as regular boxing. And uh, the, the translation takes a longer period of time, right? Right. Just like asking one person to go to a sport. Like there's not a lot of Bo Jackson's. Let's just say that, <laughs> right? Like there's not a lot that's just so physically like, like again, man, I like in um, physically had, was gifted enough to go into the right. boxing ring but right. again man like i i don't even so like saying it, but i, I don't like happened. saying this terrence crump i don't but <laughs> but if you are a boxing person and you honestly believe that tyson fury trained for that fight uh, okay let, let me just say that i don't think tyson fury bit. trained for that fight he didn't even anyway he trained for deontay wilder i'll just no say way. that like, no way okay yeah, he did. All right, train. the same way Tyson Fury that. trained to go knock out Deontay Wilder was probably not the same way he trained for that fight. Not okay? even, but, but again, no excuses, whatever. But did any of us in the boxing world were any of us shocked the way Anthony Joshua handled him? No, none of us were. Because if anything, oh. you know, oh. it, it, I mean, like again, man, this is different. And, yeah. and and again, this does not take away my reverence 
for how great Francis Ngannou is. Ngannou is. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and he's still one of the great heavyweights of that division. He's a monster. He's hard to deal with. And if he continues to learn the art of boxing, right. even at an older age, as he continues to, to develop it, he's going to get better. But it, it would it would if we lived in a world where it wasn't a money grab, <laughs> right. and we were trying to get Francis and Ganu to be a world championship boxing contender, right? Then Francis and Ganu needs to get in line. Even though I know people are going to say, "Well, he's already too old," <laughs> I don't want to hear it because George Foreman was the most feared fighter in that era in the seventies, <laughs> right? Up until Zaire, when Muhammad Ali. Be yes. the great George Foreman. Everybody, True. you know, you have to remember George Foreman was an unstoppable force, man. Yeah, he was an geez. immovable object. One of all my all right? time favorites. And then Go here's on. where I respect Go George Foreman most when it comes to boxing. The guy completely leaves the sport, <laughs> he's not even in it anymore. It's a preacher. Okay. It's a he's preacher. old. You want to talk preacher. about old? That guy was old. Oh. Okay. And what did he do? He did not automatically get a title shot. He didn't he automatically back up. jump the line. He worked his ass off, won 26 fights in a row, even <laughs> lost to Holyfield, working his way up, working his way up to be at a championship level yes. at his old age of 40, people. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Like, like, so, so when, when someone old, old in boxing, like a George Foreman, who, I mean, again, man, uh, Terrence, like, again, you're gonna have to forgive me on my, on, I, I used to have this like this, right, like in my brain, okay. Right. Um, right. so obviously the trauma of going through liver transplant and yes. going back, you know, uh, but we're, we're, we're if right I'm not here. mistaken, I'm George right. Foreman re won the title, I think, at 41 years of age. Mm. It's either 41 or 42. I know he was, it was definitely old. And right. when he fought Michael Moore, Double M at the time Who was, was a beast. No he exactly. was the <laughs> southpaw heavyweight no, that was just no, killing no, everyone no, with a jab. He was a monster. Bro. He was a monster. A monster. He was, he was uh, destroying people. Okay. So again, man, like if you're going to come to this table, in this last, you know, hour, 30 minutes, and you you see how deep I'm going? All right. This, it's almost like if you and I are just having a conversation. I'm going yeah. deep in this rabbit hole, people. Like, like you got to understand who Double M was at the time. Dude. And how good Michael Moore was. And Michael Monster. Moore was still under laying 30. Laying people out. Laying people he, out. Like, it was just, he was just making, I mean, that jab. That bow, It was crazy. Wow, at heavyweight. Okay. So for George Foreman to set a trap, <laughs> lose every round, get up to, I think it was round 10. Hey, he pulled the rope of dope. And then bam, bam, <laughs> knocks him out. Pulled the rope of dope. And then you hear that famous thing where George Foreman turns around, starts praying to God, and, yeah. and, 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 and then you hear Jim Lampley say those famous words, it happens, it happens the new heavyweight champion of the world do you know how hard it took for that man Dude. to be at the peak of his career or at the time again. of his career in the 70s that. where he was the most feared guy to make it all the way back to come all the way yeah, back so cool. to you'll work his ass again. off and you'll then you're gonna go ask again. me about jake paul or some crappy celebrity like look you'll dude it's insulting it it's so yeah so, again never... not to take away from Inganu as a great mma fighter as an amazing right. champion we'll probably come down we'll go down as one of the legendary fighters we got to see in the ufc right okay mm -hmm. but in the boxing world he didn't do what george foreman did no he didn't even start even from most... ground zero build himself out Prove himself to make it all the way, become 21 and 0 or 26 and 0, right. then get a title shot. Right. Right. Then, then I would have sat there and said, Oh, well, I don't know who's gonna win between Anthony Anthony Joshua and and Nganu because Nganu's 20 and 0. Right. No, you know, he built himself up. He fought so and so and fought so and so. And and I could back it with actual well, I mean, even though 
Um, at this age, George Foreman lost the holy field. You have to remember right. styles make fights and blah blah. I couldn't even have that conversation because what am I what am I talking to you about? <laughs> you're you're trying to tell me that because he he went the distance with Tyson Fury, that somehow that makes it sellable mm. to someone like me? Like you're insulting my intelligence. Exactly. You're literally insulting my intelligence and you want my hundred dollars? No. <laughs> I, I'm not doing it. I'm done. Like, I'm not I'm not giving it to you. Like this is this yeah. is as ridiculous as if you asked me to have um Nganu wrestle Anthony Joshua right. and you make me pay a hundred dollars and you somehow make me believe Anthony Joshua would beat him in a wrestling match. Like, no, it's not gonna happen, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is this is, this is you know so so again. I, yeah. I would I I would say like right now in terms of MMA MMA boxing, mm -hmm. uh, Ilya Tapura I think is at the top of the list. Okay. Okay. Tapura yeah. who, yeah, who, yeah, who just beat uh, uh, Volkanovski. Yes. Right. When it comes to it's actual bad. like one of the things I like about Tapura is how he. It's not just the way he uses the hands. Like he keeps a really tight. Like I always pay attention to like the elbows, right? If the elbows are flaring out, then you know that you the know. You are you know. exactly what's it really, really uh, like. Like so, he keeps everything tight. He keeps that shell that we always talk about. Like when you're in the in the phone booth, well defense. Well. He has a good understanding of not just um, a long range attack, but he has a pretty good medium range attack. Um, and I haven't seen too many. I mean, it's hard because in MMA, you don't get to see it as much, but I'm not sure how good his short range uh, boxing skill is, but there is, there, there's like four level, there's like four distance levels you have to understand in a, in a boxing right. range, right? You know, and right. it's not oh, just absolutely. like what people yeah. see. So in yeah. MMA, oftentimes it gets left out like that you, somebody who's really good on the inside with boxing oftentimes because a lot of mma fighters are coming from a muay thai base so right. when it gets to that range we're already seeing you know like the over the, the overhooks like you know like you know what i mean like there's problems yeah. that are happening now yeah, no absolutely. knees and elbows so so i don't know how good to put us short like when we're talking to like the clinch range of right. boxing like like a like a mayweather or a, a dirty Soto box no i know exactly Trinidad, right yeah. like okay so so it's never fair for me to try to ever compare an MMA boxer to a, a to a professional boxer. Right. Just like it would never be fair for me to throw a professional boxer and try to compare him to a overall mixed martial artist. Like that would never be fair. So, yeah. um, but is there anyone in the current MMA, whether it's uh, the Professional Fighters League and the PFL? Right. which merged with Bellator <laughs> or or anywhere else around the world or um or uh the UFC itself is there anyone who's got such a high boxing level that they can go into a boxing match right. and fight a boxer like I I don't see it man I mean like I'm, I'm just being real do I see those athletes like an Ilya Tupura Right. wanting to come over to boxing and build his career oh absolutely sure. i think it'd be great i think it, I mean, but why would he do that he's the 145 ufc champion of the world he's he's pulling sense. in an easy seven figures every time he fights right now so so really like that striking base is different right and right. then i'm actually excited that i told you about this like i said sugar sean o o'malley was going to knock out uh, uh um 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 uh, yeah. Sterling, Sterling, not Thank Sterling, you. buddy. All right, Thank you. Sterling and then, too, and, and then, then, yes, I fought and, after that. And then he fought Cheeto Vera, which and I thought I, was going to be a good fight, but I still believe that Sugar, Sugar Sean is in O'Malley's in another level when it comes to striking. Now we're going to talk yes. about like the base of distancing with the kicks. Oh, okay, the base of a, understanding how to be monster. like even like most people are missing that because O'Malley's coach is a jujitsu expert person right right he's coming from that background that's what makes o'malley a little bit more dangerous because because now it's harder for you to try to submit a guy like that <laughs> and, and, and everybody who's possible. tried everybody who's tried ends up falling into a trap trap right Bro, so that's what it makes right it, like when it, sugar dude. when sugar sean said i want to fight tapura next to me i went awesome because now you, you're, you, yeah. Because now it's like, okay, we're gonna see a, a, a striker-based guy 
from what who's the 135 champion moving up to 145 to go fight the current 145 champ that just right. knocked out Volkanovski. Right. Like, great, sign me up. I will pay what what how much is it? Everything I'll pay you. that money. <laughs> I'll absolutely pay that money. I'll know. like if you, if you want to watch an actual striking match, you're you're right. about to see a, That's a it. striker's paradise when it comes to I don't to think match. they'd ever get the mat. And if they yeah. did, they'd just get up. But I, yeah, I wouldn't see that going to the floor at all. Yeah, that's no, that's not going to the floor. They're, they're striking really. each other out. And it might end up being such a good fight, people will ask to see it again. Yes. And see it again. Right. I agree. No. Nope, um, so I, yeah. So so I mean, I, you know, I I know I kind of went into like a twenty minute rabbit hole no, answering your no. question, but do you understand what I mean? Like, you have to give reverence to mixed martial arts and their striking, right? And and even just just this past weekend, like we saw Chidi, uh, uh Joel Con Connie, who's a uh, a one kicks Muay Thai person. He just had a fight with uh, Reese McKee, right? right? And Reese McKee's a tough guy, very, very lanky, kind of a hard yes. opponent. But I felt like I felt like uh, Chidi won every round because he controlled Easy. he controlled That's the striking pay, the striking distance was all there. He was using his Muay Thai really well. So you know, man. Right. I mean, but but again, man, judging can be subjective. Like I said, it depends on the side you're seeing it. Depends on what the cadence of the fight was happening. So, right. You know. Right. Oh man. You know. But but like like again like. All those arts are within itself, by itself, are all different. What right. makes mixed martial arts, like I kind of described to you, like you can't yeah. compare it. You can't compare boxing and MMA as the same. It's it's literally like saying, here's a football player and here's a baseball player. I'm not saying one or the other can't play on the other sport because we right. saw Bo Jackson, we saw Deion Sanders. Okay, uh -huh. but what I'm saying is, you have to kind of convert yourself though, like like like. You can't just say just because one guy was getting knockouts in MMA means right. that he's going to be able to knock people out of boxing. Yeah. Oftentimes, it actually means no. Opposite. That's even that, that, yeah, <laughs> it, you know, like no. Um, and 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 yeah, every once in a while, like people forget that um, merciless Ray Mercer, Ooh. he went into MMA and knocked out Tim Sylvia. Yes. Does that make him a great MMA fighter? Though, you know no. what I'm saying, like. He's still well known to us as the WBO heavyweight champion of the world. Like we're not right. like sitting there going, "He's a great MMA fighter," right? right? We we like sitting there going, well, you know, a boxer. boxer. Ray Mercer's a boxer. That's what exactly. he is, right? Oh, so I'm why would you? Why would you then try to convince us, people like a Terrence Crump who is uh, respectful to the art of pugilism, understands the sweet science? Why are you trying to force feed us to believe that a Conor McGregor is a boxer? I mean, like, 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 come on, man. You're just like, like, come on. This is insulting. Like, like, it stop. Is. Just don't. It is. like it one is. art is one art and they stay in their lane. The other art is the other art and they stay that in their lane. It. And mixed martial arts as a sport has a different business format. It has so right. many different other ways of how you could win and lose. Right. That some that like for me, when I was brought in, you know, originally, again, I'm trying to teach striking to convert whatever their mentality was right. to them understanding how to use their hands in the boxing proficiency, but with the karate stancing and how you could still protect yourself in a mixed martial arts oh, setting, exactly. right? So it's a really different way of, of coaching and teaching. But, you know, like a lot of times I thought, okay, we're, we're going to set up these striking and then you're going to submit them. Because if you're right, a submission right, person, right, that's, that's what I, I mean. But hey, man, you knock him out. Oh well, <laughs> right? I guess, yep. I guess I guess I guess that worked too. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Like, like I yes, like sir. even me as a striking coach, I wasn't necessarily looking for the knockout. Right. I was looking to to, to give you the setup and the trap so that you can do what you do. Right. But. Yes. You know, if you haven't knocked it out, then just adding a little bit to their yeah, adding a little bit of tools to their tool belt. No, I, I, you know, I totally get it, man. I totally get it. I, I, I want to make sure we touch on this um, because it is very important. It's very important to me because I know it's very important to you, and that is being a transplant, right? Um, I, wanna, I am, man. Exactly, and I want to make sure that you know. We really, really discussed this because this turned your life upside down, man. Uh, it's, it's, it is your life today. It's, it's what it is, and you know, I really want you to be able to freely talk about it—the good, the bad, the ugly. 
um, for the people that don't have a clue, right? I, I, I can honestly say I don't have a clue. I am, I am ignorant to, right, the realities of living as a transplant and what that really truly means. Even giving somebody a hug, right, be potentially deadly, right? So. Right. Yeah, let's talk about that, if you don't mind, man. And obviously, yeah, no, no, not at all. Um, so I, 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 first of all, I want to thank you for even bringing that up. Um, um, you know, uh, I'm always prepared to talk about it myself because, um, again, it, it is my life. And and as you know, the, the same passion and um, and and work ethic that I put into um, the professional fight game and the martial arts world is the same work ethic that I put into surviving and just living on a day-to-day basis, right? Um, but um, April, to all you guys who are listening now, um, here on the Ultimate Raider Fan 32 YouTube channel, um, this is uh, Terrence Crump's podcast. Um, he's asking me about what it's like to be a liver transplant and transplant life in general. So yeah. first off, let me educate everyone and let you know that April around the world is recognized as what we call Donate Life Month. Recognize that so April is Donate Life Month. And if you don't know what that means, then all you have to do is Google search Donate Life Month. But essentially, um, you know, we're asking people to please consider being an organ donor. Correct. Because being an organ donor is a big decision for, for all of you. But just understand that someone like me at 47 years old on the 4th of July weekend of 2022, you know, that year for me is I went to the January 9th game with my brother. I was end zone or a corner end zone for the Chargers Raiders game that goes to uh, overtime. And then we win with a kick and then we eliminate the Chargers. And I think everything's going great in life, right? Everything's going fine. COVID is starting to COVID restrictions are starting to go away. We had like 60,000 people there and mm. you think everything is okay. And then that was what, January? So then in in, uh, in June, I start to get sick and I didn't even know why I am getting sick. Like what's going on, right? And then by that 4th of July weekend, I'm literally dying in, in Mountain View Hospital here in Las Vegas. And in Nevada, there is no transplant center. It's one of the worst things. Wow. There's no transplant centers. I did not right? know that, man. Yeah. So it's like you're either going to die or you hope that someone from Arizona or California or somebody accepts you, right? Uh, clock is ticking for me, Terrence. So um, I was very blessed and I thank God every day that um, I don't know why my life was saved, but I know that there's a plan for it um, because a group of non profit transplant doctors um the group is called house medicine so if you guys are in are in need or yeah house house medicine.com house medicine.com everybody if you guys are in need or need help with um understanding how to go about your possible transplant journey or or maybe you have a friend that needs a transplant like you could look they have a lot of education house medicine.com or is the group my doctors dr anon anomaly um, they stepped up and, uh, and they went ahead and, and, uh, they, they decided, uh, or they felt that they could save my life at 47. They felt that, yes, I am at critical at the critical stage. I mean, I, and at this point, uh, Terrence, I'm, I'm trying to fight not to go into a coma. Like I'm literally like using every ounce of energy and every prayer that I got. I got my mom with me, my wife's with me. My son's with me, my brother, who, you know, you know, he, he dropped everything in Hollywood to be by my side. Like yes. everybody, you know, my sister's coming by like, 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 and you really, I think when you, when you get to that edge of, of, of death, essentially, That's you really, you. yeah, you really then can fate, like understand like, wow, man, this, like this, this is, this is how many people really want me around. Right. Like I, you know, like me getting a chance to talk to you for almost four hours <laughs> about boxing, MMA, Raiders football. Like this is, this is just a treat, man. This is just a blessing. Like this yeah. isn't, you know, like, like that's why I, at times you can tell, I get a little upset at Raider nation when they take it too seriously. Yes. Cause, cause, cause I'm like, guys, okay, that's fine. We can have a healthy discussion, but at the end of the day, um, the Raiders winning the championship or losing the championship didn't, 
uh, saved my life as a liver transplant. Like, it, you know, it wasn't going to stop me from dying. You know, you know what I mean? Like, so, so with transplant life, and again, April to all you guys who are listening now, um, April is Donate Life Month. We uh, share stories and we talk to everyone about please consider being an organ donor. Um, it is something that you can study and research. I don't want to try to sound like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to push you to do it, but right. just understand again that you're this, not for it for sure. Yeah. This, this sacrifice, you know, like I, I'll, 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 I can only talk about my own personal experience, but if it wasn't for the sacrifice of my donor and, and his family, I wouldn't be alive today. Right. Because I'm, I'm, because I'm supposed to already be dead. I'm not supposed to be around like, like my, my death day was supposed to happen that July fourth weekend of 2022 so uh you know by the grace of god and 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 so many other things you know out there um july 16th i'm 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 given a successful liver transplant the climb back up from that what is not an easy road i i don't even i don't i don't i hate to even say that you know like people try to use the word was but transplants not what we do so it's not something that disappears transplant is who we are so me being a transplant is as real as this hat being green mm -hmm. you know what i mean like and the reason why i wear green a lot guys is wearing green is the color of organ donation and it is the way for me to always show everyone that this is how i honor my donor right i'm trying to educate people because because that is what happens a lot uh uh terrence like i'll be uh, if, if if i'm somewhere and somebody goes i don't get it man why are you wearing a raider a Raider hat that's green, green opens up the conversation. Well, yes. right now they that, like if they're if they were making fun I of me for person. having yeah exactly if you were making fun of me for having a green Raiders hat now you might have actually turned around and said to yourself you might think about being an organ donor now right like that's why uh, the pin that says it right there it says donate life right like because that is what you're doing and, and I'm using this extension of my life now um to share my story to bring joy to people like it, it, it put a smile on your face for us to talk about boxing and mma but Love you know if, if you know like if, if if i got to do that for you today like i don't know what how how much longer i'm gonna have in, in this extension right but this is a memory that we're gonna have and let's say you don't see me again for whatever you're gonna you're gonna remember man i remember my friend angelo reyes and we did this and you, 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 so i'm i'm trying to do the best that i can for this extension that's been given to me it right. is a gift right so we don't we don't take it lightly um the lifestyle though being a transplant is and i've i've, I've mentioned it in other interviews before is i try to tell people like it's like you're a house of cards and if one thing goes wrong everything goes wrong it's never it's never like as easy as oh terrence is just sick well if terrence is a transplant and terrence is sick <laughs> uh you know like now like well you're immune compromised you're taking these anti-rejection medications you know you have to do your blood work um i mean i'm still doing my blood work every two weeks um and i'm at 20 months but even you know like when you get past the five year mark if you're lucky enough to do your blood work like once every three months you still got to do it um, and then you never know when the rejection is going to kick in. And, and, and again, I, I hope that it, this isn't too triggering for everyone. But when I'm asked that question, like, what's it like to be a transplant? Well, it's not guaranteed. Like, like I think a lot of times you, you look at us or you'll look at a transplant like me. And then because I look like you, Terrence, you think that we have the same problems, right? But, right. but in, in truth, it's like, well, I'm thinking about like how long I, I got. You know, and then when this blood work comes, it's going to tell me here's all the things that's going wrong. And if one of those things happens to be rejection, dude, I'm, I mean, like that could be it for me. Right. 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 So, you know, I literally am counting my blessings like as I'm having this conversation with you. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I, and I think a lot of times, like I said, like a lot of people take it for granted. Like, don't take your life for granted. All right. Like, like just don't do that don't do that because you think it's going to be there for you and then it's not right right 
Um, so uh, that's and for me, that's kind of what it was. So there, there was a process to the recovery. I didn't get to come back to Las Vegas till November of 2022. So I had to, I had to, you know, that was months of me having to, you know, fight my way back. And then even now, right? Like, like mm -hmm. it's fun. Like I can have this conversation with you, and this is fun. But this isn't how I am every day, man. The the right. swing bouts of of how I like, like, I can't tell you like today, man, I literally got a text today and somebody goes, you know, cause they knew that my last show with Captain Jack, me hosting it was on Sunday. So they were like, I gotta be honest with you, man. In fact, I'll read the text. I won't, I won't say yeah, problem, but no, I'll, read it. Yeah, I'll, read, I'll read the text. And the text please literally please. was, um, you know, uh, I, I was saying to him, Hey man, if you want to watch a uh, turf show, I'm going to be his guest. We're going to talk about boxing MMA. And then he goes, cool, not going to lie to you. You need to be solo with a weekly show and a few shorts. And then he goes, there are not many with your balance, stats and facts with your Raider fandom. Right. And I like, I, and I'm not, I, I don't share that Terrence to like brag about it. I'm just saying right, this no. is a fact. A lot right. of people, like you want me to have my own show, right? Captain Jack wants me to have my own show. Like, a lot of people want me to have my own show. And I'm like, guys. You know, like I literally responded, like I, I said, a lot of people have been asking me to do my own show. And as I have said to those same folks, mm -hmm. I appreciate all the praise and support. And I really do. I appreciate all the praise and Absolutely support. Absolutely, you do. But then I said, transplant recovery is a tough road. I'm only 20 months right now. Right. However, I am thinking about doing something of my own channel, maybe by the end of the year. Um, in the meantime, I'm happy to guest on people's shows and we can definitely chat about, um, you know, anything that you want to move forward with. But I, I really appreciate all your thoughts. I appreciate all your prayers. I appreciate all the positive energies. But like, like I said, it's one thing for me to be your guest. Right. Okay. It's one thing to me for me to be the guest of turf at the ultimate Raider fan 32. And then we can sit here and have this chat for, you know, for anyone who wants to listen to it. Right. right. Um, it's another thing for me to actually be in charge of my own show. Cause look at all the work you're putting in. You're, it's you're, doing 4K, you're, you're your sounds clear. You're, you got a great background. Like that's a lot of work, man. That's a lot. That, that, that's a lot of work. It's not easy. Now, now I want to bring that back to again because we're talking about transplant life. Right. I think if, if you guys have a friend or if you have a family member that happens to be living with a transplant, like give them some grace. Okay. Give like don't be so naive to believe that right. they're doing great or or you feel like they can they can lift as much as they used to lift, both in terms of physically and mentally and emotionally. You, you know, a transplant, if you have a friend or a loved one or a, a, a family member and they're dealing with transplant, give them some grace, man, because transplant life is, is not guaranteed. Again, transplant is not a cure. It is a gift. That's what we're given. We're given a gift. What we do with the gift, what I, I mean, for me, I try to talk about the sacrifice of my donor all the time. I, I, I talk about how organ donation saves lives. Right. right. Yes. That, I, that we're doing, I, I'm doing what I can to, in, in fact, when it comes out, there's going to be a hrsa.gov is another one. It's HRSA, hrsa.gov. If you guys want to look up like information about your health or um, um, about organ donations, but there's going to be an article coming out here in April because it's Donate Life Month and the story is about me. Um, and, and it's me again, I mean, I'm doing as many of these as I can. And, yes. and, you know, Terrence, anytime somebody wants to talk to me about transplant, I'm, I'm an open book and I'm an open door, but, but yeah, like to go to your question, uh, it isn't easy. And, and, and like you said, like, can you, like you, you had the opportunity to play Montana state football. You, you were a certain part of that team, right? You built all these great relationships and then when it got taken away from you yes how did it make you feel it hurt okay right hurt. okay yeah right i, I still struggle <laughs> i think we all yeah we right. all still right. struggle and it was a sport that you played all your life correct sport that you love okay so i want you to now think back i was at world championship level fights right 
you you could Google you 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 literally showed a video of me on a I mean that was that was my life man that was my profession like that's what I did right and then to be told that you're never going back to it can't be around a gym I can't go to a jiu-jitsu gym with Terrence Crump guys I might get sick staff infection alone will might kill me man Any, like like like, like easy. Burial, cold anything yeah anything right like I can't do that right so so like I said like and and yet what I think about is I don't even think about that I think about the fact that I'm still alive today so there's a reason for it yes and if 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 the reason for it is to bring a smile to Terrence Crump and his family's face great if the reason for it is to educate everyone who's listening to the show right now about uh, organ yeah. donation and how organ great. donor donation saves lives great right like if that's what you if that's what if that's what God wants me here for man then that's that's what I'm here for because I'll tell you what Terrence my mom didn't raise no weak, weak, you know, weak person. <laughs> yeah. Like my mom I, I mean, shout out to moms. All right. Shout out to moms and the real ones like my mom, who stood by my side, both from not in, only in the Philippines, but guys, my mom just turned 71 this year. She didn't leave my my bedside the entire time I was That's fighting for my life. All right. Wow. You know, and 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 again, man, if you Dude. can have a, a, a mother that loves you that much, then give her a hug man give her a call like have your minimum. blessings and just appreciate that you know my wife never left my side you know what i'm saying like like that, that's what i mean is like count your blessing like like take like take a step but you're mad about the raiders losing or you're mad because <laughs> uh, the raiders didn't trade up for jane daniels take a breath, take a breath <laughs> and then say to Not yourself you are you living in a nice enough place that you don't have to be out in the street Right. Was there food in front of you? Right. right. Do you have people that love you? Okay. Then, then what are you mad about that we didn't get Jaden Daniels? Like, do you know how ridiculous you sound now? Right. Like you're now you're that ungrateful person. Like, what's wrong with you, man? Right. Okay. Life is a gift, and you should you should always look at it that way. I know I do. Right. right. And 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 again, not you know just. I, you know, I'm trying not to get too deep on you here, uh, Terrence, but when I was dying, okay, that warrior mentality did kick in of, I had a wonderful 47 years in this world. I've seen, you know, I've seen people who love me. I've had, uh, you know, like, like I'm blessed to even be in the position that I'm in to have traveled the world and right. got to do all of those things to be able to. You know, when you talk to me about how you're a fan of what I did, right? Like, I mean, what, you know, like how blessed was I, right? But that's not right. what was, that's not even what was going through my mind during that time. It was like, wow, my mother is right by my side, right? I have a loving wife that's by my side, right? Like I have my brother who dropped everything he was doing, you know, and he's right here by my right side, there. right? Um, I was able to raise a son who was only born with half a heart, right? And 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 he's, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so many, like, there's so many things to be thankful for and it's all right in front of you that right. a lot of times, man, you, you know, understand that us being fans of the Raiders is is something that is a treat for us whether they win absolutely. or lose absolutely okay? i couldn't it's, agree more yeah but come on man like go go, go hug your mom for crying out if you haven't called your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or you know come on man like stop stop arguing with the guy about jane daniels and go pick up right. the phone and go call your mom <laughs> all right like like That's like come on, man no what's I wrong agree. with you okay so I so agree. So that's what I'm saying is I, I, I had, I, I was able to have a wonderful, uh, life, uh, uh, Terrence Crump for that first 47 years. And what my life is now is what it's going to be. Whatever this adventure right. is, is what it's going to be, but it is a gift and I don't take the gift lightly. Um, you know, to my, my organ donor and his family, I don't take the gift lightly. And, um, for you, for some of you guys who are, are again, just listening to this now, for me to know that it was a 19 year old young man who had to die in order for me to live right now. Right. Something Dang. that weighs heavy on me, man, every day. Cause my, my son, dude, they're the same age essentially. Right. So yeah. like, yeah. like, like, do you know how hard it was for, for someone like me to read that medical report? 
you know um so yeah man no nah, it's Damn. It gets, like transplant life get like like honestly like this last half hour of you and i talking about transplant life you could cut this right now and you could post this as a separate show about just transplant life and and right. dude like it's it's uh it's it's a heavy thing, you know. It's a it's a well, you know that's something. And I mean, as long as you got time, I got time, man. Because honestly, I want the world to hear. You know, like you got to read and know who got who gave you life, like based on everything, right? So what, what well, was, I you know, so I, there's this rule with organ donation where I still haven't. So you don't get to meet them and you don't get to know them and you may never know them because they may never want to know. Um, there's a letter that you can write. I have I haven't written the letter yet because um, from the people that are more experienced than me about this, it's advised that maybe this isn't the right time yet exactly. to do it. Right. Yeah. And may, maybe they'll receive it. Maybe they won't. Um, some people never write that letter. Some people like I, I do plan on writing the letter, but I'll, I'll tell you what, man, every time I've tried to put pen to paper on what I want to say, right? And there's all these different rules at like, I can't specifically talk about who I am because you know, there, we, I, there's these, all these different like rules where you can't try to put hints in there so they, they could try to find you or who you are or any of that, right? right? So it has to be a, a general thank you, right? A general way of saying thank you. But how do you begin to say thank you to a family, to a, a family? Ellen morning that that's still in mourning because they lost their 19 year old son or brother or uh or or possibly Friend. father right? right like like i mean 19 is on, old man. enough man it's old enough you know you know what i'm saying like like so you know how do how you you know what do you say right like like it's like like i like like is my thank you enough right like one thing i've said and i've said it on air i've said it on tv i've said it on a lot of interviews is I'm doing everything in, that I can in my life so that if there's ever a chance for me to meet that family, that they can look at me and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that my son was able to save your life because you made your life count. Right. And I'm, I'm doing everything I can, you know, and I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to make us cry here. Uh, <laughs> All right, but, thank you, but, you know, I'm, 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 I'm doing. Yeah, everything. I'm trying to look up and down. Yeah, I know, man. I, I, I told you, man. It gets deep. Like whenever I talk about this stuff, it gets really deep. But yeah. like, I, you know, you, I, for me, I, I ask that question. Like, am I doing good enough? Am I am I worth this second chance? Am I? You know, like am 100%, I? You know bro. what I'm, I'm saying? Because, because I died already. Like that that life was gone already. Like so, what do you want me? To, what 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 am I supposed to do? What, what, are you what, doing? what do you yeah. want me to do? No, right? it's, it's How do I make all of this count? I, I don't want this 19 year old young man sacrifice and his family sacrifice to not mean something, right? So Not, as a transplant, uh, as a transplant survivor, as a transplant recipient, uh, someone who was able to receive a second chance at this life, like it's, it's, it's a heavy, it's a, it's, it's heavy, man. It's not like, like, Hey, Angela just woke up and, you know, dude, when I get up, because like I told you, like for just from a physical sense, I can't jump up like I used to out of bed. I mean, and you and I are all about the same age. So you could just jump out of bed, dude. I have to do oh, my right. roll. I have to roll. And then I have to like use my arm to push up because right. I don't have any core muscles. And then I right. gotta like sit there for a second. And I mean, like that's just the physical sense. I'm not even talking about the mental aspect of it, you know, or the sleepless nights because of whether it's medication or I have deep thoughts in my head, right? You know, being able to talk to you for four hours, for for example, I, you're asking me about boxing and MMA, wow. dude. You know, that's great. Like, like us, awesome. We're we're talking about Raiders. That's awesome. But we start talking about this stuff, man, and you yeah. get deep. Yeah, it gets yeah. deep because I because I'm gonna talk to you about life and death, man. I'm gonna tell you, like, that's... no matter how mad you get at your daughter, like, dude, you have a daughter that's sitting there accomplishing the best that she can. Um, you know, like be proud of that, man. Be proud of the fact that you and your wife have a solid relationship. Be proud of the fact that you know you got your little one right now, he's being a little gamer, and you know, <laughs> yeah. to, you know like, like, man, just enjoy that part, like, like enjoy like enjoy it just 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 take a breath yeah. take a breath and and look at your studio 
Look at what you created. Look at the fact right. that you just hit up. You hit a thousand subscribers on the right. show where I guess that you. Right. Right. Okay. So, right. you, know, you know, like, like, I, I, like again, man, like Raider Nation, right, guys. It's amazing to have had a chance to connect with you, especially as I continue to go through this journey of transplant. Um, but the friends I've made, dude, yourself, Chris Kimber, right? You know, everybody, like everybody at the Shield Squad, right? The Raider Syndicate, Cam Jack, yep. like Hollywood Raider, Power Raider, uh, you know, Inland Empire Raider, right? Like you name it, dude. Like like everybody at Raider Nation is very supportive of transplant life uh, you know supportive of, of organ donation and then again just all i'm asking you to do as a transplant recipient and someone who's carrying this um in my second chance at life this gift is consider it just educate yourself about it so that you don't right. you don't think it's this weird nah, you crazy thing I, I honestly tell you man i've never been a donor and i'm saying this publicly i, I will absolutely make that change I, i've never been a donor i've never you know, really even thought about it from these perspectives. Uh, I, I can't even say why, to be honest. No, uh, and, and you know what? Uh, and let me, let, first of all, let me thank you personally for now understanding it and considering it. And you can do more more work uh, in understanding it. Like, like I said, like, I think a lot of people have, they have a notion that if you say you want you you're you're allowing yourself to be an organ donor that they're gonna like not work hard to try to save you and oh, it, right, it, it right, just right. like look man medically it doesn't work that way in the United States but also every doctor in the world because of their Hippoca Hippocratic oath is designed to save your life to the very no end what, even like you, like no matter what and right. if you if you do right. register yourself as a uh, as an organ donor they still have to ask your family like 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 it doesn't it doesn't work that way they don't like 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 I, like like to me sometimes i go man but but to uh uh kind of talk about what you said you don't know why you ever thought about it dude um my mother 71 years old 32 years ago donated her kidney to her brother her little to the youngest brother of of the, her family of eight in order for him to survive another 32 years he just passed away this uh this 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 past year okay now let me explain this right you want to talk about someone like 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 maybe there's a little bit of you don't know why you never thought now think about this i was a teenager when she was deciding to do this wow. at the time this is in the 90s right like 32 years ago so i was like mom please don't do it. And, right. and, the, and the reason why I was saying that at the time is I wasn't educated. Like I didn't understand, but also man, like, I, like, I mean, this is my mom. Like, you know, all I ever had was her, right? Like I told you how my rich dad who should have taken care of his firstborn just kicked me to the rocks, right. which is an all too common story that a lot of us can all relate to. Right. Right. And I had the sing I had my single mom raising me in the Philippines, never making me feel like we were poor, never making me feel like we needed food or shelter. She always fought for everything that we had. It was always by my side. Like, like I like that's what I mean. Is like when you could be fortunate enough that God graced you with this. Like, come on, man. Like, what are you angry about? Stop being angry about anything. You know, right? Just look at what you got and be thankful for it. So Very anyway, fortunate. during that time, like I was so, so afraid of losing her because I didn't know, man, I'm like, like a freshman in high school. I think at this point, right. um, um, I didn't know. Yeah, exactly. yeah, like, 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 like that was, that was it. So by her doing that, that one kidney lasted the entire 32 year period. Right. He didn't die because of kidney failure. He died because of something else. Um, right. But you know, the whole point is like my mom, made a selfless a sacrifice a selfless act because i remember having that conversation with my mom and i remember like she like i when i was talking to her she said this is what god wants me to do of course i'm i'm being i'm being called to save him i'm being called to to do this right and dude you know how powerful that is for a teenager to hear your mother right. willing to go through that stuff right like it makes you like think in your head man how selfless is my mom like how like, like, and then that's what I mean is like when I was saying earlier, like shout out to our moms, like 
Right. If you if you were lucky enough to have a mother or a father or a guardian or your foster parent or whoever it is that was that guiding you and, and and they loved you, your grandma, like a lot of people grew up with their with their grandparents, right? Like, look, man, if 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 they're if truly a selfless act, like truly, I'm gonna be here for you for what you need and I'm gonna take care of you. Like, come on, man. Right. right? So. I, I can only hope that I could be a fraction of how amazing my mom has been in the 71 years that she's gotten a chance to live in this world. And she's still like, dude, like she's ballroom competing. Like you want to talk about an athlete. Uh, like shout out to my mom who's about to probably win first place in some ballroom competition yeah. out there, you know, at a high level. You know that what I'm saying? So like yeah. 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 So um, but yeah, man, like, 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 like I, like I said, bro, like, like guys, if you're still here, first of all, I want to thank you. <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys are still listening live for all of you who are probably going to get a chance to listen. I think that probably Terrence Crump is going to break this up into like sections because, um, we have a boxing section. That's really cool. We have an <laughs> MMA section. That's really cool. We got yeah. into some Raider football, but man, the, the last, I think like almost hour we've talked about just life in general and being a transplant yes. life and taking your health seriously and, and everything Absolutely. else. I mean, guys, like if you're still here and you're still listening, not only do I say salute to you, but take a breath, man. And just say to yourself that you're alive right now. Okay. I'm sure you have, I'm sure you have people that love you. I'm yes. sure you have uh, great friends and you have food on the table and you have, you have a roof over your head like come on yeah. man stop getting mad at people who say we shouldn't trade the farm for Jaden Daniels. Uh, yeah, what right? is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> hey look i'm gonna let y'all know something i wouldn't even say i'm halfway done with this yes angela i still need time uh, we are going to you know did this night ado, but I can assure you we will absolutely have another four hours minimum uh, of this man's life if he if he's willing and ready to just have these conversations with me because there's still so much I haven't touched on. I'm being honest with you. I don't know if you realize there's still a lot of stuff that I would love to pick your brain on, man, and, and really get deeper into other areas. I don't want to I don't want to stop with what we're doing right now, but. I want to be respectful of your time, right? It, it is four hours and seven. Yeah, no, like, I, I, you know, Chris, who, <laughs> uh, the first show I had with Chris, yeah. Stu came in and Captain Jack came in. No one believed that we would go five and a half hours long. But right. Dude, that got deep. And if you watch the last half hour, man, Stu was crying. And, right. And Captain Jack, you know, was crying. And yeah. Chris is a big ass softy, you know, like, <laughs> he's a big teddy bear. And like, like, <laughs> but, you know, shout out to Chris, man. So, you know, you know what? Chris is back, right? Chris is back uh, right now. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, I think he put out this whole, uh, uh, yeah, shout out. Hey, hey Chris I'm saw a picture of my mom, bro. so he knows. Uh, but yeah, yeah, shout out, shout out to mama. Shout out to mama right there. Um, but uh, but yeah, he put, bruh, this is what this content creating is about. I think that's pretty deep, right? Um, it is. It really yeah. is. Shout out to Bill. Yeah. Shout out to the Shield Squad. If you guys are listening to this at any given time, squad even if you're not listening to it. Live. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to the Shield Squad. Yeah. Shout out to the Raider Syndicate. And I know, like Chris said, and I think you said that you guys are going to get me on that. Absolutely. On one of these Sundays. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. So, um, 100. You will absolutely be on there, and it will be Raider content. But I just want people to know this is we just scratched the surface, ladies. I don't think y'all understand. We haven't talked anything about technique. We haven't talked anything about his favorite fighter. He's trained. I have so oh. much, stuff. dude. I have. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. I this is just scratching. Hey, the here, let me let, let me shout let me shout out. Uh, uh, Chris Chris is on the chat right now. Yeah, Chris, if you got a question about boxing or MMA, man, fire away, and I'll answer. <laughs> I'm gonna be right back though. Hold on. <laughs> yes, sir. Because look, ladies and gentlemen, I I don't think y'all understand. I don't think y'all understand. In fact, hey, hey yeah. uh, Terrence, if yeah. Chris wants to jump on right now, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take the here. question live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You hear that, Chris? You already know. You you an admin on mine anyway. Just hop on in if, if you feel the need, man. 
pro- I just want y'all to understand. I haven't even scratched the surface with this man, in my opinion. I'm giving y'all, you know, what I think you want to hear. Um, no one's asked any questions, so I think it was very entertaining, meaning that everything that was being discussed was something that people actually, uh, you know, wanted to hear. Um, but I just need to let y'all know, I, I haven't even gotten even remotely close to as deep as I'd like to get when it comes to really his profession. We, this is one of the things that we don't get enough of. This man dedicated his life to combat sports, dedicated his life. His whole and he, you could go put him in a corporate setting, some office, right? He has no clue. His whole life is combat sports, striking, and it's something that is near and dear to my heart for a lot of reasons. Um, even myself, I grew up as that kid that would refuse to allow anybody to bully anybody in front of me. Uh, that was just something that I couldn't allow to happen. And and I'm not going to act like I knew how to fight like that. I just knew there was no way I was going to allow it. And I have receipts for that. I still, my two best homies growing up, right, those, those very impressionable ages, right, between the elementary and going to middle school, I stood up for those guys. It didn't matter. And... And they're still around today. Shout out to Ryan Bond. Savage. I, I'm these are those were my two ace boom coons, day ones. And you can't say nothing about them in front of me or behind my back. You know what you I'm back saying? Back them up, right? You back, back them up, up every that, which way. You know what? And that, that there's that old school mentality too of this is why you 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 know you do want to learn how to fight or you want to learn yes. how to fight because back in our days, man, like people forget, like we grew up in a generation of latchkey kids. I don't even know if anyone rem- don't remembers know that, that terminology. Where no we were, that. we were like, we had to go had our own key. We had to walk home, right? Like, you got to know how to not get fourth, kidnapped, man. I was in the fourth grade, going home by myself, ladies and gentlemen. I left in the morning by myself. My sister already went to school. My mother and father was already at work in the fourth grade. In the fourth grade. Yeah. I was just too dumb to realize. Thank God. Thank God I was too dumb to realize because I almost failed the eighth grade. Not because I didn't have the grades. Because I started coming to school so late. I missed first period too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Uh, I see Chris's yeah. thing. He's about to jump on. Did you give oh, him the link? Yeah, he says I'm yeah, about to hey, we, hey, we here. We here. We here. I, did, you, did you give him the link? He not, he's a he's an admin. He, yeah. He, oh, okay. So he knows admin. how to jump. Yeah, he gets this okay, out. Great. Yeah, yeah, no. No, I was gonna say, like, Chris, when he did that one, I talked about this in hour one where Chris did a 18 minute talk. Uh when he put like Nino Brown and Al <laughs> Davis in there. And he was talking about like the soft ass generation of, yes. of Raider fans. Like, I'm wondering, like, you and me, we we come from that generation of toughen up, man. Like, like you don't That's play really to lose. Right. Like, what do you what's wrong right. with you? We should hey, tank. We should tank to go get someone that might not be good. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, what bro, kind I, of fuck is this? Look, I am a coach for the first time. First time flag football, right? Obviously, I've been a coach for mixed martial arts and so forth, which is different because you gotta have that mentality. Yeah. No. Yeah. Please. No. You can't. Oh. Like. 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 Can I just say this because you're a jiu jitsu yes. uh, on the master, right? You're you're a black yes. belt jiu jitsu uh, professor of it, right? So. Uh, yes. When you're about to get tapped, right? Like even that, like you have to actually be conditioned to tap. Yeah. Because otherwise, you won't tap. You're like, fine, break it. Yep. Break it then. And now you're out for who knows how long. There's exactly. a lot. Of, there's so a you lot have of condition yourself to say yes. the smarter play is to just move on to the next match and or, and do it. But even the martial arts mentality, you're taught to, I, I like like I. There's Never a fighter. Give Never give up, dude. I, yeah, I, there's a fighter who just don't give up. One of the greatest boxers ever in the history of, of the sport, uh, female world champion, one of Freddie's champions, converts into MMA because her background was coming from the martial arts. She was uh, right. she was um, ranked in Taekwondo um, mm. in the Junior Olympics. She 
uh, was a master of Kempo Karate, Kung Fu. Um, and, and, and at the time, like this was like, I think even a little before Ronda Rousey, but in Asia, there were, there weren't doing any of these female MMA. She's like, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll just jump in there. So this is right. someone who is coming from the world. This is like a, like, like, um, uh, like a Roy Jones Jr. Like going, Hey man, I'll, I'll jump into MMA. Right. <laughs> but, but, but again, to give it some context, she wasn't disrespectful. She had been right. in martial arts all her life. She's got multiple black belts. Like, so she was just jumping in it, just in the feeling of this is a competition. I, you know, I've, I've reached the pinnacle winning three world championships in my lifetime. Uh, I want to be able to go fight in the Philippines. I want to go in and jump in there. So she opened an entire division up. She's the first person to fight in this 125 division for this organization, um, one championship, right? So anyways, uh, you know, I, I, I want to uh, tell you the story because, right. you know, some of this content we've talked about tonight is little stories, right? I'm going to tell you the story. So if you're a basketball, really quick, really quick though, let's get. Oh, there he is, ah, my love brother. Love hey man, I, I gotta tell you, okay, I'm gonna finish the story uh, yes. uh, in, in a sec. But Chris Kimber, I gotta tell you, man, do you know how many texts and messages I've gotten <laughs> privately about how you and me doing shows together is like? I don't know if you're getting the same messages. I am, but I get so <laughs> many messages like, man, it's special, man, you and it's Chris, special. You know, you guys are, I, I mean, I just always say, I always just say that I think you and I have really good chemistry because we're kind of like, we kind of don't take it so, so seriously. Like we do take it seriously, but we don't take it that seriously that you we can laugh at ourselves about it. Absolutely. Yep. Right. You know, so, um, so thank you, man. And shout out to you. Thank you so much for the mock draft show. You know, what's going to be crazy cool is if the mock draft that you did <laughs> ends up being kind of close. That'd be fire. Yeah. If it's good. even like 50% of what you picked, I'm going to be like, that. that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So, um, so anyway, like I, so I was just sharing the story, Chris, about how, uh, so me and Turf were talking about how you're, you, you, you know, we were taught not to be soft, not to have yeah. the soft mind. Like you don't give up no matter what. Right. Yeah. And in jujitsu, like I know you played rugby and you played uh, some of the other physical sports, but I don't know if anyone has ever put you like on a leg on like a leg lock or like a, like a guillotine or like a, a Kimura. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I got friends that were wrestlers, man. And, oh, okay. There you we know, go. And we used to always like rough house, you know, like, I, you know, like especially because the, re the wrestlers, you know, the ones that played football too, you know, they always thought they were tougher anyway. But right. man, there, there ain't no, you're, you're never more helpless when you're in like a, 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 a rare naked choke or something. You're yeah, like, okay, all, right. all right, you, you win, understand dude. You, this. you <laughs> understand this, right? And, then, yeah. and so me and me and Mr. Crump here were talking about how, and even still, you're conditioned to be like, fine, then put me to sleep, then. Yeah, Correct. fine, then go break my arm, then. Like, exactly. all right, whatever. And you have to that's actually that. be trained. You have to be trained to say, dude, you got to tap, man. Like that's like, and then you, and then we were reference referencing this because of what you put out for 18 minutes about these soft ass Raider fans <laughs> talking about how we don't get me need started. To sit there turf, and tank, turf, turf and no, like, that kills me, man. That, yeah, that's, I'm like, that I don't know me. what generation these these new Raider fans are, are on because it's like, so you want us to tank to maybe get somebody that might be good going that's into nice. a losing ass team that just tank? Like, how does this make sense to you? How does this, God. how does any of this mentality make sense? You're asking someone who was used to winning in college right. to now come into a loser ass team who purposely went and tanked, and you somehow think that's a culture builder? Just, Bro, you need man. to grow up, man. You need, you need to. It drives you, me nuts, man. You know, you need to, you know, grow your ass up, and I don't know, go get a job. Like maybe, maybe, maybe go get a job. Some of us were working when we were 13 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like. Go get a job, <laughs> like. Yeah. But you know, I mean, a lot of these people don't even think they need a job, man. You know, they they want handouts. It's just they don't want to work for anything. Like I couldn't imagine. Like I was nowhere near as, you know, um, as a competitor as Max Crosby. Now, like you know, I, I wanted to win, but my, my thing was 
<laughs> I was a partier, man. So yeah. like I, I I had talent, but my talent wasn't good enough to get me through a, a weak work ethic, man. So <laughs> You know, like I want to know where the girls were. I want to know where the parties was. Hey, practice almost over. What what are we doing after this game, y'all? Like I was one of them. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. you know, it, turf 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 feel me. You know what I'm saying? Really yeah. <laughs> so it's like, but the thing is, it's like I still didn't want to lose. Like at at no point, oh, like yeah. I hated losing. Like like I, I was one of the people after we lost. Like don't talk to me. Right. Like, like on a bus going back home. Yeah, yeah. On, on on a bus going back home, like I don't want to hear no laughing. Like, there's nothing to laugh about. Right, right. So I don't know, right. man. It's a different. Right. No, no, but that's we all grew up, right? Where that you don't say nothing on the bus on. No, a you better not. You better no. not say nothing on that no. bus. Yeah, no, no. You still get money. Yeah. Like every 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 competition you go to, you went to growing up this way it mattered man and this is what i mean it's like when they talk about that michael jordan mentality of you know he wants to win at everything yeah right we relate to it because that's how we grew up man, like me and chris can so be true, playing right. or cheesy that, and I, i'm gonna tell you right now like i'm trying to take my boy out like i'm not about to come out of that game where i lost right you know like no way man if we're if we're sitting there we're playing whatever you name the game and even if I suck at it, I'm <laughs> still going to try. Exactly. I'm still going to try. Hey, do you, do, you, do you know how crazy, like, at my local bar, daggone cornhole tournaments get? <laughs> we'll be playing cornhole, man. Man, I don't want to leave the loop, man. It don't matter what it is. It's just that competitive nature. And and I know I said it on one of my shows. Um you know, one of the one of the way and, and Big Daddy actually helped me with this, Big Daddy Jose, because I used to get so mad after the games, uh, well, the Raider games, where I would take a personal and yeah. I would let it mess up the whole rest of my oh, Sunday. Man, wait, no, wait for me. Yeah, it, it, it would. And, and, and literally, and literally, like, I, I, I would like leave the game early. Like, I'd be like, Big Daddy, I can't do this no more. I'd just be pissed. And, and, and he had to help me. And one thing that got me, and again, I think it's just this, it was like a newer generational thing, but. Like after the game, seeing the players like hug and switch jerseys and take, like, I couldn't understand that. Cause I'm like, wait, those are the enemy. Why are you taking pictures with them? Like, why, you know, like um, imagine Jordan and Bird doing that after, like, no. It would have never happened. Now, no. now, now again, now to be fair, right? To be fair and to give context, and this is probably why a lot of you guys, if you're listening to this now, it's on the Ultimate Raider Fan 32. Um, uh, and it's been four hours and 22 minutes that we've been on. We've talked about boxing. We've talked about MMA. We've talked about some Raider contact. We've talked about life. Now we have the great host of the Protect the Shield podcast. I ain't great, man. I'm just a fan, you know, man. Timber, you know, he's the, he's the one that, that says form Voltron and the Raider Syndicate. I'll he's show up. He's a right? Raider, but, uh, but anyway, so if you if you are watching this, uh, it, I don't know if you're running it on the Protect the Shield podcast, but if you're you watching this on the Protect the Shield podcast up. or you want to go watch some of the past episodes, um, yep. uh, you know, we're, we're just getting into this talk right now. And um, I was about to get into my story about how, you know, you don't give up. But to be fair. Correct. To well, hold on, Angelo. Hold on. Before you do that, though, because I because I'm not going to be on that this long. But I, I just wanted to say the reason I jumped on, man, was your daggone story, man, is like like I put in the comment, man, like to me. This is what this content creating is about. Like, you're not going to get this type of stories anywhere else. This is the Raider Syndicate type of show. Shout out to Turf, man. You know, Turf is, is a big bro to me. And, like, just sitting here watching you two communicate. Like, this collab was, like, peanut butter and jelly, man. You know, I'm, I'm a fat boy, so I love peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, um, you know, and I, I'm just so glad that I met you, Angelo. You know, me and you had a good show, but... Um, I just want to let you know, you know, from someone who just met you recently that you've already impacted my life. Just Big little time. stuff, you know, that you say, um, you know, just how enthusiastic you are about this stuff. And you don't understand it until you take a step back. And, and I even told Turf and them in our, our chat, I'm like, Angelo just is is a, just a good dude, man, because your heart is so pure with this stuff. And, and, right. and, and sometimes I may not understand. I'm like, man. Angelo sending me something else, but I'm like, but then I had to take myself back. I'm like, Angelo just loves this. Like, yes, like, a, like a, Angelo can't go out like we can go out and go have a drink or like so. Angelo, like this is what he breathes and he loves it. 
and I'm like, and I just love everything about you, man. So I do, I don't want to let you know, you know, I want to say it publicly that you've impacted me the little time that I've met you and this thing that you and Turf had today is absolutely <laughs> amazing. So I, I just wanted to say that and get that out before you went ahead and, and did your thing. See that turf? You you and Chris trying to make me cry tonight, man. It's not gonna, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen, man. It's not gonna happen. You you almost had me a couple of times. Chris Chris almost had me right there too, man. I, I, really, I, I, really I was trying. I, I, hey, I, I, I'll yeah. try to throw them uppercuts, man. Yeah. I'll try to get you out of there. Yeah, I, get uh, no, I, 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 I mean, I really appreciate you guys. I, I truly, truly do appreciate your friendship. I truly appreciate you guys considering the organ donation um again man i mean i'm i'm not even alive right now talking to you guys i'm not uh, alive right now talking to you about any of these boxing or mma stories or us having a fun conversation about whether or not we agree on the raiders if it wasn't for organ donation man and april right. being donate life month just guys take the time to just read about it and consider it because you don't even know what life you could be saving and when chris kimber says something like I've impacted this life since I've gotten to know him in December, right? Like, maybe that's enough. Maybe, maybe by Chris being positive, he helps someone else out to help someone else out. And then yeah. you never know, right? Um, I mean, me and Turf, we talk offline, uh, you know, a few times. And, you know, Tur Turf, man, he can't. He can't. He loves boxing. <laughs> so much. He, can't, he can't stop asking me about all these little things that happen. Uh, well, y'all don't, you don't even know. know I mean, boxing, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm used to Yeah. Yeah. No. But but no. What, what, so what I was saying, Chris, is like I think that a lot of people like our 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 back and forth banter, you and me, because because I like to give context, right? So yeah. when you were saying, I don't understand it when. You know, these players now, Max Crosby's handing a jersey to so-and-so. I want to bring it full circle to a martial arts boxing um, 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 uh, perspective. Boxers, for the most part, when they fight each other, yeah. you realize that there's a certain bond and friendship that happens between the two. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. And so here's glad. the thing. Mayweather like doesn't get paid the money he got paid if Pacquiao didn't do what he had to do. If the other guy doesn't do his and job. If Pacquiao doesn't get paid the money he gets paid if Mayweather didn't do what he did. And even though in the beginning we can beat you other. up, at the end of the day, baby, when you're lucky enough that you worked hard in your craft and the two of you can meet in the middle... You just broke bread together, man. Like that's a that's a yeah. that's a bond that yeah, maybe you beat me, maybe we do a rematch, maybe right. I beat you, but at the end of the day, sharing that bond Dude. on a world stage. And this is where me and Turf were talking earlier about how man, I can't like I don't want to crap on boxing as a sport because if you really love that, if you really love the sport, then there's a lot of great fighters out right now. Big time. But you gotta go search for them. Yeah. Okay, they they're not giving it to you like a combine where they're showing you all the great <laughs> fighters and then you get to watch it for free. You better go do your homework and then go watch go um, it in the UK or go watch it in them. Asia or go right. But there's a lot of amazing boxers right that are always coming out. So it's the same thing. Like I feel like the, there is that respect factor that Max Crosby will go after Patrick Mahomes, but you don't see Patrick Mahomes ta ever talking bad about Max Crosby. Yeah. Because he knows in order for him to be Patrick Mahomes, he needs Max Crosby to go after him. Right. Otherwise, yeah. he's not Patrick Mahomes. He needs you, we're, not, we're not talking about how great Patrick Mahomes is if he can't escape Max Crosby and Correct. make a pass. That's a good point. And, and we're not talking about how great Max Crosby is if Patrick Mahomes ain't winning the Super Bowl the way he is. That's a good point. Right? Good so, point. so that's what I mean. Is I, don't, I don't mind that. What I mind is when soft ass people that are not even rookies yet <laughs> trying to talk about how they're going to go in the league and, and, and make that make it happen. Now I get upset about and it. Like, ownership, right? little right? ass that's ownership, right? ownership. You know, <laughs> the little ass boy down. Like you didn't even make it yet. And so now, now think about it from a fan perspective. So now I'm talking right. about, like you said, I'm always sending you stuff because you're right, man. I'm living through you guys. You don't think I want to come to the draft? You don't think I uh, want to yeah. be in Detroit with y'all, like yeah. yelling it out? You yeah. don't think I want to be there and be like in a room full? I, of course I want to be with you. Yeah. Man, I can't. There's yeah. a difference between I won't yeah, and, you and can't. I, can't. I can't. That's true. All right? So, that, I, so, yeah. So, I'm sending you stuff all the time like, hey, man, check this out. <laughs> I love it. I love it, though. I love it, man. Cause, oh, exactly. Yeah, I love it. And that's, that's why, you know, and, and, 
and believe it or not, well, you you know Angelo, but you you were one of the main reasons that kind of helped me get to where I'm at now from a, a, a perspective of you know tra even trading back and, and stuff like that. Um, auto strategy, you know, yeah, like a lot, a lot, because a lot of stuff that you talked about, you know, you and and even Cowtown, like you guys came with a lot of facts, you know, and I and I I'm never too stubborn to to not look at you know certain things and and look at facts and stuff like that so you know i, I again i appreciate I, I can't express how much i appreciate you and and big bro know how i feel about him yes sir no you thank you man <laughs> thank you but yeah but yeah like I, said, like I i i'm cool with i don't like these youngsters especially now what i was saying is from a fan context right if you're a younger fan and then you're like man we should tank and we, you know we that's, should go trade the farm to go get Jane Daniels. Now you, you don't even have my respect because then I'm looking at no you and respect. I'm like, dude, you haven't even been in a fight. Exactly. <laughs> you're try, you're exactly. trying to talk to me. You're trying to talk to me. I was in Oakland, man. Like, exactly. I, 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 I have to watch. You know, you you want to know what suffering is like? Why don't you go sit down and watch a two and twelve? Right. Or a, right. A, a two win season. Like then then you can come and talk to me. But even that team wasn't trying to tank. No. That's my point. That that's it's honestly every game they could. Yeah, like I, like everyone you know thinks that you know I'm like a fanboy of you, Jackson. But I mean, <laughs> honestly, you know I I didn't get a chance to see the old, you know um you know a, a lot of the Super Bowl winning squads. You know what I'm saying? Like I was very young right, when we man. won our last one. But you know, like I didn't get a chance to see a whole bunch of good Raider teams. You know, I I, I had that good uh you know the uh, rich gannon era you know that the few that you know chucky's first but besides yeah. that i didn't have nothing to get real excited about but i love that you jackson era because i actually felt hope after so right. long right. i felt hope I'm, I'm right you darren you. mcfadden you. that whole you know like people forget chris like why do you and i like darren mcfadden so so much right yeah because if you watched his ass from arkansas was, that fool was running the fight. Amazing. Like, he, made, like, he, he was better than Devin A chain. He yeah. was he was like, all them. like way better than Cadillac Williams. All them. All you know them. What I mean? Like, so that's why I'm he like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he was we were getting him. You didn't yeah. think we were excited. We were like, like, oh my gosh, we got we got the Ferrari, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. I, yeah. I mean, it, it even it even as bad as it sounds, you know. Even the whole Jamarcus Russell thing, like, yeah, we that's gonna go down as a worse. But at the time, if you really put yourself in your in that time frame, we needed a quarterback, and yeah. it was him or Brady Quinn. I wanted Jamarcus oh, Russell. Yeah, I wanted Jamarcus Russell. Now, right. now, you know, <laughs> if I knew what I knew now, that we we're thinking about Calvin Johnson and then trading the Packers to get a young Aaron Rodgers. Now that's a different story. <laughs> but but again, yeah. that that that's why I don't hate Lane Kiffin the way a lot of people do because yeah. he had a vision that would have changed our trajectory for the next fifteen years. See, that's but, something you should talk about because a lot of times, again, me and Turf talked about this in boxing and also in MMA. But mainly, like a lot of it is in boxing. Like some of these soft ass boxing fans now are talking about whatever, and I'm like, do you okay? Can you name me a name? Can you say Carlos Zarate for me? Can you say Wilfredo <laughs> Benitez? Like, can you say Salvador Sanchez? Because if you can't say none of this shit, now I don't want to talk to you. You're not a real you know, ask, hey, you know, I, I you, you love right here. I got a big one right here. Is that Big George? Nope. Well, who was that? Even, even earlier. This oh, that's is Archie Arthur Moore, baby. Moore, that's what I thought. Archie Moore, the that's uh, that's Her that's Herman Moore's father, ain't it? Ain't that um, <laughs> Herman Moore, the receiver? Oh yeah, that's See, his father. Chris? Okay. Yeah, I I, 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 I know about, about him. Barkley being Whoa. Saquon's uncle when we were talking about Roberto Duran earlier. Yeah, but that's a good pull, dude. Yeah, that's yeah, that that's magazine cost. That's Thirty-five cost. cent. That's what it cost back then. Look at the back of it. <laughs> that's no, funny. I, he boy, made a seek. My boy Turf got some serious old school. That vibe. yeah, but yeah, no, that, but, that, that, but that's what I'm saying though. That's Herman like, Morris. Like, that's Herman Morris. Dad, I was, I was telling Turf how like 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 some people in the chat were even like I don't want to say nothing, but like you're insulting me, man. If you're gonna ask me a question about Jake Paul or some of these celebrity boxings, because again, I don't disrespect people who if Chris decides tomorrow to lace the gloves go in a in a ring 
spar, <laughs> get hit in the face. I'm never yeah. going to disrespect Chris for that. Like, like you know how hard that is to do? That's very difficult. But are you going to ask me if I think Chris is good enough to fight Mike Tyson? <laughs> and you yeah. want me? You want me with, with, to answer it? <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Why, you know, why don't you just ask me if it's okay? Nice. To, yeah, to no, I, I agree. Plastic. Like, I don't well, know. Like, well, this one, is ridiculous. One thing I will say, though, is... uh. I, I do respect Jake because yeah. they they seem to be taking the art form and the science seriously. And I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. you will never find a tape of me talking on any MMA yeah. or boxing shows or any podcast ever bad mouthing him. Yeah, because right. I don't bad mouth what he's doing. Yeah, he's, he's uh, taking it okay, seriously. So if I, if I'm attacking anyone. I'm attacking the fans yeah. who are trying to convince me that <laughs> somehow I'm supposed to look at him and in the same breath exactly. as an actual boxer that yeah. went through the amateurs and fought yeah. in the don't Olympics. And, and it don't you make know, sense. like, come on, man, stop it. Stop. Yeah, it's stop. Like, I don't, it's the same generation of fans that you're saying where you're like, how are you going to tell me it's okay for you to say, let's tank so we can go get <laughs> Caleb Williams or Jane Daniels? That's now crazy. you now you have to understand it. Now imagine if I'm in the team. Yeah. That's me now. Now you're yeah. talking to me. Right. Like I, get I it. am behind the scenes. Like I that yeah. was my profession. And yeah. you just told me that somehow Jake Paul and Mike Tyson <laughs> is relevant? Like, dude, this is insulting to Mike Tyson and every legacy he's ever built. Uh, right. Now I respect Mike understand. enough. To be like, bro, you can do you whatever you want. That yeah, social security want. check's coming soon anyway. So yeah. <laughs> you do whatever you want. And I'm never and, and man, Mike Tyson is dangerous in every age. And in every any way. Age. Every no but for what. you to ask me to even talk about man right. like why don't you just ask me what it's like for my grandma then to go whoop on <laughs> yeah. go whoop on a fifth grader because it's it'll be about the same level of conversation for me like come yeah. on man it's, it's ridiculous yeah. i have a i have a great deal of reverence and respect for what mike tyson did okay yeah and i do respect that jake paul has taken it seriously enough that he's willing to get hit and he's willing to go in there but you, are you gonna tell me right now chris kimber that Jake Paul is from the streets of Ohio. <laughs> okay, that he he grew up in the streets where <clears throat> drug was rampant, and um, no, he didn't. And Not you know what I mean. And he had to he had to fight to just eat. No, like come on, man, come on. Like, I, like, hey, come on. I stop it. There's Stop birds, it. there's birds chirping, nicely manicured lawns and everything there. The ice cream <laughs> man. Again, this is no disrespect, man. Kids ride their you, big wheels. Look, look, I, there's no disrespect, but Floyd Mayweather's cut from a different cloth. You have to grow up. Way a different. Okay. Manny Pacquiao grew up yeah. from, uh, from a different background. Roberto Duran grew up from a different route. Muhammad Sonny Ali, Liston. everybody. Muhammad I want you to realize and know that I didn't even get a chance to ask about any of that. And I don't know if y'all realize to recognize when I did put that, uh, you know, that thumbnail up. This man. This man was trained under the Mayweathers as well as under your guy, Freddie. Yeah, my first stint was with Freddie Roach, right? Yes. Of learning, of actually, like, first of all, man, if you can even have a conversation with the guys, it's amazing. But I got to actually learn, like, like, hey, man, take these notes. Hey, go read this contract. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like to learn. And then, and then to go from that, from what, professionally, from 07 to almost almost 2000 so, so it's almost before Kodo because that's when I started transferring over to the Mayweather gym and then in the Mayweather gym um Floyd had just gotten out of jail so people forget this fact that I remember he did that. the Kodo fight right he beat Kodo then he had to go go to jail, jail right he had to yeah. go do I remember that. Over and, and, and then, yeah. then he came back with a vengeance and during that Robert Guerrero camp Dude, he welcomed us with open arms. That's why I always defend him. I'm, I'm, I'm always for me because I can only speak from a personal, yeah, your, yeah, your standpoint, personal relationship. And I'm like, yeah. he never treated us bad. He was never mean to us. I always saw him treating everybody else with respect. I always saw him doing a lot of charitable stuff in front of my eyes. So I don't know what y'all are talking about unless you know him personally. I saw the guy giving inspiring speeches to kids and like you know, like to me, Floyd was a good dude. That to me, 100%. right? But. Um, he opened the, the gym with open arms. Um, and then I got to learn from Uncle Roger Mayweather, man, before he passed uh, away. Uncle <laughs> Roger, bro. Probably the smartest one of them all. Oh, yeah. I was telling Chris, like, 
This is literally, if we're going to do a football analogy, if a young pup like me was to, in 1985 were to be talked to with George Seifert and he's, or not George Seifert, um, um, Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh, right. yeah. And Bill Walsh is like, hey, man, you want to learn the West Coast offense and how I do offense? <laughs> the architect of it. The oh, architect. Shit. Fucking notes. And I'll, I'll sit there and learn and sure, whatever, right? And then right, right around that 1989 season, He's about getting ready to go. George Seifert's about to take over. You lose in that Bill Parcells uh, game with with Belichick as his defensive assistant. Yeah. And then Bill Bill Belichick comes up to me in the same locker room, and he's like, "Hey, man, you want to come <laughs> learn and see um, what I'm talking about? I do it, dude." You that's what it was like for me. You, I was like, "You can't make this stuff up. You can't dude, make this really stuff up, man." I just want y'all to know we ain't get to talk about this yet. I just. <laughs> So I'm Gordon, tuning in. Hey, I, hey, I'm I'm tuning in to part two, man. I'm, I'm, I'm tuning in to the sequel. I can't wait. I can't like, wait. Chris, like, look, Chris. Like, I yeah, like I know you weren't gonna stay on too long, but let me say this, right? Like, so it's so cool to know that the way that Freddie Roach style, which is an extension of the Eddie Fudge style, right? Um, the direction of how he goes from A to B and how you want to finish a fight it's actually really similar to the way the Mayweathers did it and how <laughs> Roger was a, was a knockout guy, man. Right. The black combo was no joke. He was trying to hurt you mm. back in the day. That's and if people forget the Floyd, Floyd had some rocks for hands back in the day. Yeah. And he, he was, when he was pretty boy, pretty Floyd, boy, he was knocking people out and he knocked Diego Corrales out. Like I'm just, I mean, again, yeah, man, nobody was, knocked him out at that point. So, Let's like, keep right. How I have hated when people go, man, Mayweather doesn't hit hard. You know how I hate that statement from some they new have no idea. They have no, have no idea <laughs> what it was like for. That's for why that everybody just was scared to run into him. You know, it's just I was watching this, dude. Bro, and I was watching Floyd Mayweather was was kind enough to allow us to watch the private sessions and the workouts when he's getting ready for Canelo. Dude, some of the people he was fucking, he was, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to curse. Oh, it's all good, dude. All right. We, some dude. of the people he was sparring during that time, Chris, were like over 200 pounds, and Floyd was beating the shit out of him. Like, like hard, bro. Like, bow, bow. And you're like, I, well, I don't a bad it, man. Like, like, so a the bad only man. reason why Floyd really, like, if, if the knockout ratio in the later part of his career, in my opinion, in my opinion, uh, didn't happen as much as number one. He's not fighting a bunch of chumps. Every fight that he fought was at a dangerous level. So when you're not dangerous. You're going Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, <laughs> you're not expected to kill everyone 51 to three in a Super Bowl. Okay, that's no. number one. Okay, number two, the other thing is his hands did, you know, in the earlier parts of his career would get, would break or fracture. And yeah, that's, that's the money makers, man. Yeah. So if if you're up, like if you're up seven rounds to zero, yeah, and you got the skill level to be like a Willie Pep, and possibly even win a round with your defense. Let's do it. Smart money. Let's is. do it out here. Get get out of here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's called prize fighting, ladies and gentlemen. Prize fighting. And like like you know. So that's what I mean. Is like I think that. So that's why I was telling you. Like I have a hard time having to hear some. <laughs> newer fan try to talk i get very defensive chris like you don't understand like you remember how like one time you even said it to me you're like see how defensive you get with people who don't know about boxing or MMA? that's how i get with with michigan talk <laughs> hardball and that yeah because like you ain't gonna talk that with me man like you ain't gonna tell me about jj when i've been watching him since he was 16 do. man that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> so, so but 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 no but anyway like yeah like the the way that the mayweather way of how to go from a to b to finish a fight right. it's actually really similar but the two differences it's cool man like 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 now it, it, like you know how like when you're talking football uh chris you can say cover one cover three yeah so for me it's hard to find someone like i could talk to turf about it because he'll understand yeah. but like how it's about hard the for technicals me to say, of it okay. so you see like right here he's doing a shell right and he's in this position right here but in this position you see how his leg is and in the inside not the outside and this is an open stance for a reason. So in this 
open stance, what's about to happen is this and this, but see how Floyd checks this. And then he look at where his eyes are at. His eyes are looking here, but look where his hand that, went. Hey, like, that's a, dude. that's a sweet science. You just, you, just you, you were just talking a whole different language to me, but look, turf, turf's eating that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I mean is that so that's why when I'm saying if I see on the chat, hey man, what you think about the chef guy fighting this other actor, dude? You know how insulting that is to someone like like hey, you know I, I get mean? it, yeah, man. Like please, yeah. stop. I get stop it. That that's boxing. That may be a ring, and right. there may be gloves. Right. When people may hit each other right. in the head, but don't compare the actor to mm -hmm. the great. You know, to the greats, like yeah. Hey, we name we name the great Iran Barkley tonight. I just this is my last piece, right? I just want y'all to see. Turf's last piece. I actually got a gag. <laughs> this one. This is the Ice Scully special. You'll see it so right who's here. It all? Scully, Scully signed it. Who else? Scully, Iran Barkley is on here. Uh, who is that? There is. Man, I can't name. I can't. I have it written down. Uh, Witherspoon, Tim Witherspoon is on here. This, oh, okay, I remember yes. Tim Witherspoon. All right, yes. there's, there's a bunch of guys that, if you're a boxing aficionado, this okay. is my 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 crown as far as the glove being signed. I got That's the fire. Awesome. This has Yo, shout out to Iran Barkley, man. Shout That's out to Iron Barkley, a monster. Shout out a to Saquon too. I thought Saquon right, creating. <laughs> But, uh, that's his grandson yeah. here, Chris like most people don't understand this context of when you talk about someone like Roberto Durant the guy one of the one of the first great fights where you go oh my gosh Roberto Durant is I think turf I don't know if you ever looked it up for me because I told you I might get the dates wrong because I'm a little hazy but I right. think it was 1979 Roberto Durant fights Sugar Ray Leonard right. for right. the title yes. in Montreal right the brawl in Montreal right. Roberto yep. Durant beats him okay Roberto Duran is so dope, bro. He's so amazing. He's such a Hall of Famer that at 37 years old, his ass went from 135 all the way to 160, and he beat Iran Barkley for the WBC 160. I mean, come on, man. That's crazy. You can't make, crazy, yo. you can't That's make crazy. this. And then, and then now somebody, some new some new guy is going to talk about Jake Paul to me. Like, right. do you know who Roberto Duran is? Like, do you know? Like, do you, do you, like, come on, man. Stop. Stop yeah. it. And it was 1980. Just the oh, F1. 1980. Okay. Yep. And, and again, and, and, and the thing about. a few months off. <laughs> That's all. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know, Chris, like, when we talk about it, like, like how we say, like, when, when Jack Jones got called for the offsides, in, yeah, in uh, that was such. And we're like, we all know that I wasn't offsides, but yeah. we're not really gonna cry about it. Like it happened. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna move on. I mean, if you want to talk about greatest, you know, you want to screw the Raiders. How about the Tuck rule? Right. And the Tuck rule was so bad that it changed the game. It changed yeah. it. And then there's so <laughs> many other ones like, like you know, don't get me going on that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even live in this era, but. Did Franco Harris? Uh, uh, he didn't catch that shit. I already know he was you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, I did. We weren't it, on 4K Ultra back then. Like, it, it, it was so many angle. things. Hey guys, guys, hey, don't don't forget the the index card rule. Oh, oh the index card. Oh. Don't forget about that. <laughs> like, I, I like forget. really? He like what? Who does that? The index card? Like what? So bad. It was so bad, bro. <laughs> oh, so bad. So that's what I'm saying is like, so when it comes to Raider football, like we're, we're, we all can share the, the agony of, well, that wasn't what it was. Right. Right. When it comes to, when it comes to boxing, dude, like no excuses, no matter what, no excuses, <laughs> yeah. right? no matter what. And, um, and like when we talk about the greatness of Roberto Duran versus Sugar Ray Leonard, I'm going to say this right now. And again, I'm just going to say it as someone who's, I like to consider myself a, a boxing aficionado, right? But um, if Roberto Duran was able to get the break he was supposed to get after beating Sugar Ray Leonard, and he was able to celebrate it the way he should have been able to celebrate it, and was not forced to have to take that fight in New Orleans for the it's the second part. Let's 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 call it a year, okay? Let's call it a year because let's say let him be a champion for a year, let him just enjoy the fruits of his labor. I'm not saying that Sugar Ray Leonard couldn't have beaten him, 
Right. I'm saying that you might have never heard about No Moss. <laughs> yep. As, as, as good of a fight the first one was. Right. I understand that the Ray Leonard thing happened because you asked a guy to come all the way from over 200 pounds to come back down to. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't weight. prepared for that. And, you know, there's and then again, no excuses, no excuses. No. I'm just saying though, when you talk about No Moss and that famous fight and and good good for sugar ray leonard because of course. One of the reasons why I, I i like sugar ray leonard is Love. no excuses man when he was fighting tommy hearns he was supposed to be the boxer and tommy he hearns was he was yeah. slugging he was slugging <laughs> round fight chris he was slugging round what? fight he had to come back from behind. Yes. From behind, he was going to lose. What a great fight, bro. Six That's... more minutes. Six more minutes. Dude, I don't know if we ever okay. see it. All right, <laughs> Angelo Dundee says to him, you're blowing it, son. You're blowing, you're blowing it. it. Kid. How much, like, infernal <laughs> fortitude and, and like, like moxie you got to have inside bro. of you. No, while it's somebody that. told me the hitman Hearns was busting you up, Jeez. you got to figure out a way to make it all the way back to knock him out to stop him Dude, see but angelo like see but guys see that's what i'm saying like again you guys are a little older than me but you know my dad was a big you know he loved boxing and he he's the one that kind of got me into watching some of the old stuff but we see stuff like that that's why we don't have the mentality of tanking because you know what i'm saying because it's just like giving up is just not part of our dna it's not possible but it's like we we, we saw the sugar ray robinson fight or sugar ray leonard fight like no we don't give up man a true Absolutely. champion does not give up it, it, it just don't not supposed to and we started the show talking about muhammad ali joe frazier yeah yeah Manila. Manila, Manila, you want to talk about you not giving up i mean joe frazier is near death bro and he still was like do not stop this fight and no. he was the one that had to stop it right and yeah. that and, and, and and again so like for me i know you were watching it so how much of the fandora and um tim zoo fight did you get to watch after because you were texting me about the roly fight oh I yeah just, and you're like Rolly's about to get knocked out. And I tell yeah. you, like, yeah, man, none of us even thought that. Yeah. You know, we knew all this guy. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, this, <laughs> it's a fight that I that you shouldn't have even made. Man, know? yeah. Everybody knew that. Yeah. Well, you, you know, the crazy thing, I'm, so I'm not a big, I'm not the biggest. Um, I don't follow like I used to, but like, I didn't even really know about the Pitbull guy. Cause like, I, I, I Rolly, Rolly, he, Rolly has a lot of flaws in this game, but, but Rolly can punch. So I'm thinking, yeah. like, but I didn't know about Pitbull. That Pitbull dude is something that. different. I you said that because again, no disrespect to a champion. Never, yeah. never disrespect somebody yep. you got. Yeah. Fight, right. And Roley is a good fighter, right? Yeah. So then we hear about styles make fights. Yeah. This is, this is them ones where you should have just said, <laughs> you know what, man? I I'm not feeling too good. My my leg. Training camp. You know, because that wasn't a good match, right? That wasn't at a all. good. Wasn't that, a good stop. Not at and all. Roley, you're right. Roley, for all of his positives, can for the most part stop certain people. But there yeah. is a level. Yeah. There's a level, and he couldn't beat Gervonta because Gervonta's on another level. Yeah. This Isaac Cruz guy took Gervonta to the brink. Yeah. So what did I think when you when you didn't know who Isaac Cruz was and you were like, "Oh, I'm gonna start watching him." Yeah. What did I send you? I sent you. Yeah, you sent me that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Watches Gervonta Davis versus Isaac Cruz, and then that's all you need to know about Pitbull. All you need to see, Pitbull is the okay. real. Pitbull deal. is the real yeah. deal. Yeah, losing that fight should have made everybody go. I don't know if I want this guy to fight my. Yeah. Team. At all, at all. You know, like you're you're gonna have to force feed me. So I don't know if it was <laughs> maybe maybe it's because Raleigh didn't have any more moves in terms yeah. of like saying no. So maybe he had to say uh, yes. Yeah, no, no choice. But yeah, but Pitbull and 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 again that Pitbull style. Just again, Chris, because yeah, your dad did show you some old fights. Yeah, there were people with this type of a style, and one of them, like most people will forget, is a guy by the name of. Uh, Jesus Chavez five was a beast, <laughs> and Floyd Mayweather had one of his toughest fights against this guy. And if you, and I'll give you a little homework, and you'll enjoy this. Civic Center, San Francisco. It mm. was a card that both Manny Pacquiao 
and Floyd Mayweather fought in. See, most people don't even know that Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao fought in the same, the same card. card. I don't remember it myself. With co-main events over there at the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. See, I'm I don't remember this until you say it. Like right now, my brain is yeah. back. All right, so go ahead and go back, uh, Chris, uh, because you're a, you're a youngster. Yeah. Why? Uh, Jesus, uh, uh, watch Hernandez. Uh, in fact, oh, man, I, I want to make sure I give you the right. Just send it to me. Just send it to me. Yeah, Hernandez. No, you, but, but basically in that fight, you see Floyd still coming coming to his own in this game, right? And in that fight, he makes that guy throw over a thousand. I think it was like a thousand punches or close to a thousand punches. And between his defense, his shell defense and the way he played it, and getting the kid to kind of start to really lose a lot of his stamina in the later rounds. And then when Floyd was hitting him with like uppercuts, it was like, bow, bow. Because there's two parts to being knocked out in the later half, in what we call the back half of a fight. In the back half of a fight, one is your stamina, but the other is your mental conditioning. Like if you're starting to make mistakes, it's a lot easier to hit you with a power shot, like a sniper shot, right? It's a lot easier to snipe you. So then uh, that's how Floyd stopped them. Yeah. You know, I mean, spoiler alert, but that's, I mean, but if you watch the actual ebb and flow of the fight, Chris, it was up and down, man. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. Around no, you're you're absolutely play. right. It was uh, November 10th, 2001. Uh, they fought in, Graham Graham in, Graham Graham. in San Francisco. Bill Graham Civic. And, and the undercard was what? Uh, Manny Pacquiao versus Agapito Sanchez? Uh, let me see who he fought. It's not saying who he fought. They're just saying they were on the same card. Let me see if I could. Sanchez, yeah. you said. But no, but anyways, Chris, like, that's what I mean about how, yep. like, like, yep. why do you. Oh, I could put Sanchez. Yep. I could put Sanchez. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Chris, like, why do you think I love defense so much when it comes to the Raiders? Yes. Because in the fight game, yeah. defense, baby. It's everything. You don't yeah. have defense. And what did Raleigh love- not have? What did Raleigh not have against uh, <laughs> Isaac? None. None. No okay. defense. Now, he had no watch- movement. He got tired. Did you get to watch da- Gervonta Davis versus Isaac Cruz yet? The tape that I sent you? Or uh, some of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to finish it up. But yeah, I, okay. I can't but, wait to but, get into but, that. But when you were watching it, did you ever see, see Gervonta not have oh. good defense? Yeah, he knew better. <laughs> he knew better. <laughs> <laughs> he knew better. He did his homework, man. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's you can't not- play with people like that. You can't no. play with people like that. Like, oh, man, you don't you don't play. And and where, where I'll say is when you were watching the Raleigh fight, didn't you kind of see how Raleigh was then trying to go firepower with firepower? Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah, right? but but that, of- but that was his only hope. That was his only hope. And he At just that point, he knew he was on his way out. Yeah. <laughs> he knew he could the truth. He was being coached by, um, you know, one of the best coaches out there, too, as Miles Hollis. But yes, the truth exactly. this is where you have to be able to control the emotion of the fighter, which is right. oftentimes tough. Because if you're the coach, you're not the one fighting for him. Right? Yeah. Exactly. At the, at, like, remember how he got rocked and he started doing the dance in the first? <laughs> right at that moment is the moment that it would have been great if Raleigh had a connection with his trainers or his corner. Right. Where they could have just said, listen, man, calm down. There's 11 rounds left. Get yeah. back into it. Yeah. Back you know, it. you're the champ. Right. right? So calm into. down. Lost yeah. you lost that round. But yeah. let's, let's, let's just He panicked. He, he panicked. He did panic. 100%. Yeah, well, when, again, when you, it's like quicksand in there, man. When you start to sink and you don't know how to get back up and you're reaching for that. You're just doing anything at that point. You go blow for blow. Your and instinct is the fight. Being really experienced on an amateur level. Someone who's had 200 something fights in amateurs and right. somebody who hasn't. And this is what I'm saying about how you can't, there's no PED that can inject it into your brain to nope. give you all this experience. You either had it or you, you did. Don't. Right? So the thing with Raleigh is so, so, so fine. Monte, he's in another level, man. Like he's in another level. So he understands how to calm, like, Find peace in the war and then be calm yeah. and everything will settle. Okay. And when, and that, when you can work. Like, that, like things will settle. Okay. Mm. You can watch other fights in where Mayweather was in trouble. All right. I'm going to bring one up for you. Mayweather was about to get knocked out or, or was in serious Shame. trouble. Shame. Okay. I knew he was going there. I knew he was going there. I knew it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say to you right he now. He was in trouble. Not only did Mayweather show you that, that, 
never say die. I'm going to go out on my shield. I'm a samurai warrior. Let's yeah. go. Right? Not only did he come back to win it, but he did it in the round that he got rocked in. Rocked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, when he got rocked in that round, by the end of that round, go watch him again. Yeah. He was winning. Like and you try to tell me that if you were just tuning in, you didn't think Mayweather was the one dominating. Yeah. Right. But yeah, if you watch the entire bro. round, the first two minutes of that, you're like, oh, no, Mayweather's about to be out. Yeah. That's what I'm is man you don't play boxing mm -mm. like no, they, 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 this is a, this is a sport that you need to be revered that you need to revere the people that are in it you need to respect the people that are putting their brain in you know their their bodies through this how tough it is right and i'm not even talking about like all the different body damage that you take oh yeah the stories of, of 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 boxers and champions that have Dudes to can't even up. talk yeah they could barely talk and move and bro yeah. it's hey listening to sugar shane mostly today makes me sad mm. he's his body it's, it's yeah i haven't crazy. even heard oh is is it oh, bad? It's really bad. I, you could just totally tell he's nowhere close to what yeah he's but hey gentlemen i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna get <laughs> back in the uh in the chat no i i absolutely love what y'all got going on i'm, I'm i i just want to come in here and say that to you um you know, Angelo, just to let you know, and Turf, you already know I love you, man. But yeah, I'm, fair, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get back in the chat. You guys are doing an excellent thing. I, I, I want to get out the way, man. I want to get out the way. <laughs> All right, yes. man. Yes, sir. Dude, you just, that. Angelo, you, you just spit out so much crazy fire that. See, I want to dissect this for the fans that don't get it. And that's why I'm you telling you. probably break it up in like 30-minute segments on some of the stuff that you and I have talked about just so that there's context to certain things that right. we were saying, right? Um, yeah, but again, this time like, we do this, though, we got to talk deep about the game. Shout out, shout out to Ray Love, too. He's asking when I'm going to do my own channel. Like I said, man, like that. Not ready yet. Uh, so, Yes, sir. Uh, oh, SoCal. Hey, SoCal. Thanks, man. Thanks for sticking around. Five you hours. Think Mayweather lost. Uh, this uh, is actually I, a great I, I, I thought Mayweather beat him. I mean, again, you have to really dissect it. Like, like the first time, I mean, as close as it is, I thought Mayweather still beat him. Like, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, you still have to dissect it. Like, you have to really understand. Like, sometimes I think that when you when you think someone is unbeatable and then you want the other person to beat him so badly. You get too emotional about it, but if you take All emotion right. out of it and just score it the way it's supposed to be scored, you yes. know, I think Mayweather beat him both times. I agree. No, I agree. And obviously beat him convincingly the second time after the injury. But the first time, if you go round for round, I mean, it's obvious who won that fight. It's just not in the fashion you like to see. And that's because he got injured. I mean, the fact yeah. that he won that fight injured in itself yeah. is and again, not enough, but not enough is being talked about with that. Hey, put up, uh, Chris is uh, thanks, Chris, for coming in. But he said, "Yeah, Chris, uh, right there says thanks for let." Yeah. Oh, uh, Zab Jude. Oh, here we go, right here. There you go. There you go. Absolutely, boss. Sure, that's going to be a clip too for the Raider Syndicate. Maybe when you <laughs> when you jumping on and and and, and everything. So thank 100%. you, Chris, thank you for coming on. Yeah. I know it's really late for you over there in the East Coast. <laughs> yep, um, and you are right. He was in trouble with Zab. Uh, okay, Judah. so yeah, no, the Zab Judah fight. That, that fight got trouble. deep too, and um, and again, computer, so the computer kicked in though, and Zab uh, Judah's people, computer kicked in. Yeah, and most people forget like how good Zab Judah was, man. Zab Judah was, cool. was a monster. Yeah, Zab was a I, I, I got a question. I think if Zab could have kept his composure and you know his, his computer, I think he beats Mayweather as far as the skill. I mean, man. you know what I mean. I think he was a little faster than Mayweather. No. I, you don't think so? No. Yeah. See, I stand no. corrected. No. I, hey, May, I'm a Mayweather fan, so Mayweather is the the. I guess if we're gonna have like the Michael Jordan and right. LeBron, kind of, you it's, know, it's I, it. Yeah, it is it. this generation would be like the LeBron James. Like, how are you arguing the fact that the man did what he did? Like, right. having yeah, this I, and, that I agree with. Yeah, agree. and and the thing is, like, Mayweather doesn't get enough, in my opinion, to a common fan who doesn't understand the craft. He doesn't get enough credit for the fact that he took his entire career and in every fight he got, he made himself better. He added more arsenal, uh, more weaponry. He, he his intellect got higher. So yeah, like, I mean, I'll take you back to like that Cotto fight, man. Like that Cotto Mayweather that fight. Faster. First of all, Mayweather's the one moving up in weight to fight for the WBA 
154 pound title. So right. all right, that's not even his weight class. I mean, if you oh. met Floyd, three, you know, three, three weight classes up like ass. He's tiny. Okay. All right. now, now, secondly, um, in that fight repeatedly during camp, and this is one of the reasons why I respect Floyd so much too. I mean, one of, but he wanted to make sure that Miguel Cotto had everything that he needed to the point where he even gave money to the Cotto camp to make sure that Miguel Cotto was comfortable. Because right. he kept saying, I don't want it, I don't want any excuses. Like, I want my I want the people that are fighting me to be comfortable. I want them to be at their best. Yes. Like, and that's what I'm saying is when I hear some of these Raider fans now talking about us tanking, tanking. And you, you grew, did not grow up in this era of a champion is willing to give money to his opponent to, 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 to make him be at his best so that there's no excuses. Because anything can happen in a fight. And even in that fight, if you want to go back and watch it, right? Yeah. If you want to go back to watch Mayweather Cotto. That was a hell of a good fight. fight. Pretty that was, good fight. That was a hell of a fight. I enjoyed it. I do not, yeah. I, I'm a Cotto fan too. I love Miguel Cotto. Oh, Miguel Cotto is one of the, yeah, no. One of the, his, his, his redemption on Margarito. Oh, that was one of my favorite fights to see of all time. The, the, the way the Cotto, I'll say this, like probably to me where the Miguel Cotto legend begins is that that 140 weight class because he was so big. Right. With the way he was able to just destroy people, yeah. man. And, and that, that Bodo's body shots, he would have that lower body. His, his body technique was so good. I used to use it as a code word. Wow. For like you know how like people will say Omaha or those yeah yeah I know exactly what you say yeah you say Kodo. That, when when you heard me say Kodo hey we're Not doing the body. Kodo right that play had to do with working the body, body. in a specific there's a specific uh, way you have to throw the combo but we would you but everybody knew like when you say hey it's the Kodo you got to go to the Kodo now right, right? Like everybody because he really like showed us you that. that that old school and i'm talking like mike body snatcher or mike mccallum like you, oh, know, yeah. like you know like and again man you and i can go on and on about the, this stuff that, i'm telling you i tell uh, it's five hours i know you might have thought i was joking ladies and gentlemen i was not joking i knew this was going five hours and it would go another five you know what i'm saying if i didn't have respect for mr angelo yeah, no, no, man. Get, get, getting pretty late for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say this too because I know you had a lot, a lot of the different questions. But yeah, man, May, Mayweather is is it's hard to even argue it. Like oh, so I was gonna hit you for this too. So I'll yeah, maybe sure. we'll end with this one. Yeah, you were like, I think you said it. I want to say it was last week's show. You said something yeah. crazy, man. Like you said something crazy last week where you're like, I think Terrence Crawford would beat Mayweather, and I, I did, and I, 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 I do. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna have to go on. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> because i won't lie to you i do i i'm a fanboy when i say that I'm i get it fanboy. i'm a fanboy i'm not i'm not an objective right you know what i'm saying i'm a fanboy so. all, all respect all res i got nothing but respect for terrence crawford you know how i feel about terrence crawford he's pound for pound the best at 147 right now there's not going to be anybody yeah. that can beat him um you know and again if he moves it to 54 only time will tell and right. he gets to write his own story by moving up to 154 and beating people like a tim zoo beating people right. like uh sebastian Fendora. Oh, yeah beating, that's know, gonna be a talk like, and, 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 and continue to move himself up i mean he he did after beating errol spans talked about how he was willing to fight canelo now, if he's willing to do something like that, man, now we're talking. Now we're now we're talking about that range that of Roberto Duran going yeah. from 165 to 160 to fight yes. Duran Barkley. Now, now you can start talking to me about a conversation, right? right? But at this point in his career, there is no conversation that you can give no, him right. a head that Terrence Crawford would even be in the same world. No, I agree. That's talking I, about Floyd Mayweather. Like, come on. Man, I, agree, bro. I agree. I agree. Hey, Turf gets a. I get. I get that. That's on me. That's on me. I, but again, I'm not saying that he couldn't get there, right? right. We're gonna have to do a few more things, right? No, like, I understand. Yeah, when you talk about the fact that I think, like, again, if my memory serves me correct, 
Floyd goes up, he beats Cotto, moves back down, beats right. uh then he beats um Guerrero. Yep. Then he moves back up to one to two and he beats Canelo. Yes. Like, and, come and, on, and, man. <laughs> All right, stop it. Like, like, and then you're gonna tell me Terrence Crawford, like, stop, man. Like, no, stop. I understand. I do I stand corrected. You are absolutely right. I, it's again, that's the fanboy coming out of me. You know, Floyd used to be my favorite fighter. You know what I mean? In his time, right? He was my favorite fighter and obviously retired and, and Terrence had filled that void for me. Um, so that came from a fanboy perspective. So, but you're and right. You still got too much work to do in order to really put them in that's, that. And that's uh, let the body of work speak for itself. Speak this for is itself. what I mean about how, like, it's one thing to be a fan of, let's say, Jaden Daniels and then say, oh, I'd like to have him. But if you haven't even seen him in the NFL yet, how do you know he's going to be good? Right. Right. And a lot of times in the fight game, you see someone like Terrence Crawford put on the per master masterful that's performance that he did against Errol Spence. Like, no question right. about it. That was the master. Honestly, then now taking away the masterful performances that Floyd Mayweather put, <laughs> put on against like uh, seven pounds. I mean, the champion, I mean, yeah. I, like I can't. Like I like Errol Spence, right? But he's not. You guys are crowning Errol Spence like he's like not. Errol Spence is a good champion. He's just okay? a good fighter. Yeah, he's not even. He's a good. He's a good champion. Like, no, I don't want to take away the fact that Aaron Spence isn't a champion. He's a good champion. No, he is. But you're gonna put him in the same breath as Miguel Cotto, and then you're gonna try to tell me that Terrence Crawford beating Errol Spence somehow puts Terrence Crawford in the, in the same, same bro. Nah, like, come not on, not even close. Not even like, close. It's, it's, no, we can't have. We, we, not ready to have that conversation. No. Though. No, you know, right. although right. I really like Terrence Crawford, and I think that if he continues to progress himself up, then he he can be more than deserving to be talked about. But no, man, when you when you talk about those old like that legendary fighter, I mean, like we we were lucky enough, um, you and I, that if you are a boxing fan, you right. know, um, that we got to see Cotto, right? Yeah. Mayweather, but man, like, think about some of the other fighters that most people miss. Like, do you remember Juan Lascano? The, the, yes. the, the uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, right? no, absolutely. Getting there was an Oscar Larios, you got your Eric Morales, right? Morales, yeah. your Barreras, right? Barreras was a monster. Juan Manuel Marquez, yeah, Marquez yeah. was a monster. There, you know, there's a lot of Prince, Prince, you know, Nassim, right? Nassim like, met. yes, but then, then you don't start giving cadence to um Kevin Kelly. Right, was another one. Kevin Kelly was about Derek Gainer. Yeah, you know what I'm Dude, like, there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of names. Like, like this is what I mean. Is it's it's like it's too hard of a rabbit hole, especially right. with the younger generation now. When we start naming names and you don't even know who you they are, <laughs> it's like, like come on, man. Like they like that's uh, you know. Yep. So, um, but anyhow, yeah, no, uh, uh, no, it's, it, it's definitely, it, thank you. You know, I want to thank you for your time, right? And, no, and I, no, don't. I'm just do a show, so did I not give you content for the next, like, bro, two months? <laughs> you've not only two months, but I'm telling y'all, ladies and gentlemen, trust me, the part two is coming because I am absolutely digging in to the, you know, as, as far as we can dig, you know, I don't want anybody's secrets, particularly people that are still fighting, obviously. But anybody that's giving up, you know, the tricks of the trade, you know what I'm saying? We we going to get into that talk, man. We're going to get into all of it, man. I, I got another four hours. Before maybe you go watch the part two, why don't you guys go do some homework and go watch some of the current fighters right now. There are some really good ones out there. Um, you know, when you're when you, you you can go down the line from heavyweight to cruiserweight on that line, and I'll give you guys my favorite right now, Abdullah Mason. You heard it from me first. Abdullah Mason is absolutely going to be a world champion. Kid is ridiculous. Can you tell me why you like him much? That way, everybody can understand. I like his I like his athleticism. I like his range. He can throw everything. Um and he's got excellent footwork. Uh, the one part I don't like is he he doesn't mind getting hit, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, right? And that's my thing like that's where he scares me because I always look at that fighter as who would I put 100 on and just let it ride for the for his whole career. You know, think about it. if anybody did that with Floyd 
If anybody put a hundred on Floyd's first fight and just I, I, Abdullah Mason fights for top rank, doesn't he? Yes. Okay. I think he's twelve and zero, undefeated, twelve and zero as a professional. Yes. Okay. He's 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 he just fought on that undercard of uh Teofimo Lopez versus um Ortiz. He okay. fought that undercard versus uh I forget who he fought, but he watched him. It was a knockout. Um, I was very excited to see him and see him work because he's he's special in my opinion. I think he has the ability to be special. Don't get me wrong. He's still a young fighter. He's a young fighter. He's so. in the same division as Shakur Stevenson. Yes, dude. Um, I see it all happen. I think he's bigger. I think he's bigger. I think he might be bigger. Man, I, I got to tell you, like, remember how we were talking about Haney Garcia and we kind of... What is your thoughts on uh, on uh, Shakur? Yeah. I, well, I love Shakur, man. I, I really, really... I think he's the sweet... He is the sweet sign. I, I think that he's got a good good head on his shoulder. Pretty, cal you know, very calm in the way he executes things. Um, I, I like him a lot. I got, I got he's nothing... Okay with a bad law. I mean, he's okay with a bad win. You, that's yeah. what I love. I love the fact that he took that bad that bad win the way he took it, right? Because right. he clearly didn't look great in the fight, right? Uh, I, yeah, I, I think he's special. I think yeah. He's like special. remember when you asked me about you know like Haney versus Garcia, and I kind of told yes. you, yes, no, no, and then um, and I can still see Garcia winning that fight. Obviously, like I told you, yes. right? there's a different. It, there's just a difference in terms of spirit, right? But absolutely, that killer mentality. That, fight that made me not so convinced about Devin Haney is when he fought Lomachenko. Right. Okay, you gotta rewatch that fight because and this is where I put Lomachenko in a, a very high level, okay? But say what you want to say, but Lomachenko's older, he's smaller. Yes, yes way it's smaller, fact, way older. The fact that it was even that close. Yeah, exactly. Floyd that, wouldn't have made it that close. You know what I'm saying? I like, understand Floyd, exactly. Floyd wouldn't have made it that close. I know exactly what you're saying. All right, so that's why I was talking. Like, I like I don't I, I I got nothing but respect for Devin Haney, but he's not in that conversation for me. You know what I mean? Like, he's I understand. I get it. One hundred. Right? And, and his body's only getting bigger, which means pretty soon he's gonna gotta move up to one forty seven. So if I were to ask you right now, if Boots Enos, uh, he's going to destroy. Haney. Haney. He's gonna destroy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, like you never had that feeling, like when With, Floyd moving nah, up. Nah, nobody. We never. You never thought Floyd would get destroyed. 40. I mean, Manny Pacquiao was walking around at one forty, and you still didn't want to bet against them when you'd fight someone like Joshua Claudi or, at one fifty four. Exactly. You know, what, you know what I'm trying to say? Or he destroyed Margarito, or when he moved up to fight. Wouldn't touch him. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Is like, like Haney doesn't give me that feeling. Like I we're. Agree. Or you're so generational that you could fight as low as 35 or as high as 40, 54, and that you'd be able to carry your own. It, I don't get that feeling. So no. that's why I'm like, you know, eh, I mean, I, 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 I'm being honest. I'm probably not going to pay for Garcia. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest about No, it. I get it. I get it. Um, you know, but if you're paying for it, Turk, feel free to go ahead and show it to me. Uh, <laughs> I got you, Doug. Watch it with you on, on live video. That's fine with me. You know, we, can, we can watch it together. That's fine. Exactly. Exactly. So, Give our commentary. Yeah, yeah. But no, but like, uh, like uh, again, in, in 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 this era right now, if we're going to end with just boxers for people to watch again, we'll go watch Inui. Inui is yeah, real. Yeah. What I'm saying is the monster. Uh, that is his nickname, the monster. I'm not just calling him a monster. That's his nickname. He's the yeah, monster. No, he's, 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 yeah. he's definitely worth the money to watch. That, that guy. That, when you brought out Zarate, I was I was thinking that. Like, man, yes. you start talking about punchers. Carlos. Yeah, like Carlos this guy. The, what was his nickname? Carlos the – what was it? The Carlos the, the Massacre? What was it? Oh, man. You know El Terrible. El, no, I don't think it was El Terrible. Carlos Zarate? L L Kanyas Kanyas I don't he's he wrote it down I just can't read you know boxes you can't read that yeah let me see Carlos Zarate was uh, the L Kanyas the L boxing hall of fame man I'm trying to find it there. 
I don't, I, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't remember it either, but he was definitely top, definitely top 100 as a, as a oh, easy. Oh, easy. Easy. <laughs> yeah, no, easy. Easy. He was, he was, he was, it's Kanas. His alias was Kanas. That, yeah, and that is what he put on the glove. El Kanas. Okay. I don't know what that is. El Kanas stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no. No. But they, but yeah, but they're, and then they're, again, like uh, 135 is exciting because you got Javante Davis, uh, yes. Stevenson, that, um, and you know, like there's other there's others in there, and then you move up to 140, then you get to 147, and then again, man, Terrell Spence is still the name, but Bootsiness is really good as the IVF champion. Like, can't, yes. can't can't throw no shade on that. Um, uh-huh. And then this weekend we just saw, so I think at 54, it's it was Tim Zhu. Sebastian Fendora, um, Matias, I think is the IBF. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. I think it's him. Um, and then uh, I think that, that their plan was to have Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford move up, and then and then you start to get to 160 because um, I mean, I mean, it goes without me. That, you know, I guess we could end with this. Like boxing yeah. is such a sport where you have to respect the ones that put in the work. So right. when I say a name to you, like Eris Londi Lara. We'll end with this, all right? Eris Londi Lara is about to be 41 years old, and he just knocked out that guy. Still fight. Okay. He's not, he's turned himself into more of a power puncher. This is a guy who was a Cuban Olympian. Cuban boxing specialist. So so let me explain to you how hard it is to fight, to have stayed, to have had a career, still be a world champion, and still be significant to this day. Here is Eris Landi Lara, who's about to be 41 years old. And if you want some highlights about his career, early in Canelo's career, yeah. Eris Landi Lara's loss to Canelo is still one of the more controversial losses because a lot of people felt he won. That Lara actually beat Canelo at 151 yeah, points. Okay, right. Okay. Now again, I I'd have to rewatch it a few times. <laughs> All right, you know, to keep an honest. Split hairs. Okay, right. but. Right. Okay, now, now, now I'm really gonna take you back. I'm really gonna take you back. All right, Terrence Crump. 2011, I think is the year, and there was a a champion at this time by the name of Paul the Punisher Williams. Oh yes, okay. I and I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that was Eris Landi Lara's first loss. Yeah, Paul the Punisher, man, he had a punch. So, so imagine yeah, fighting a world fun. champion in 2011 in a right. young career of Arislan De Lara at the time loses that fight, and it's 2024, bro, and he, <laughs> he just defended. He just defended the 160 pound title and knocked the guy out in the second round. Like, yes. come on, man. Like, come on. And then you're gonna try to tell me that another person from another sport who has not dedicated his craft to the sport of boxing in like both that. the amateurs and in the pros can somehow go in there and fight someone the level of a 41 year old Eris Londi Lara. Come on, man. Stop talking. Yep. All right. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, I agree. I agree. So yeah. So so anyways, uh, yeah. This is this has been as everything as I expected part 1 of part 2, maybe even part 3 and 4, it all depends, right? Because I I, I could spend 5 hours on just Floyd and Pacquiao. Oh, just on Floyd and Pacquiao 5 more hours. So I, I could spend pa- 5 hours on I just Pacquiao. Just <laughs> no, I was going to say just one out of the yeah, one out of these guys. Don't worry, I'm going to figure it out. I, you know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. I will right. ask some questions y'all want to. Um, this is just an amazing show, man. I, I can't thank you enough, man. This is this is just gold for the public. It's gold, man. It's gold for the fans. And uh, well, you're 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 a tech guy, so you'll be able to chop this up however you want to, and have a ton <laughs> of different pieces. So uh, you'll be able to do that, and then um, and then yeah, no, I thought we had a lot of really. Uh, great content for today and that great, i want to thank everybody who stuck it out for almost five and a half hours man. Yes, sir. Thank you to all you guys um uh again for me and turf like we could be we could be sitting in a sunday table having sunday <laughs> dinner and we could talk about this stuff for hours all day all day, all so, day. Uh, 
Thank you to you guys. I hope that we were able to bring you some of the Raider content. <laughs> I know, right? I tried. I told you. I put a little bit of drops in there, but. Right, right, right. Thanks to Chris Kimber for uh yes, so. for shout out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. And then, yeah, thanks, Turf. I, I really appreciate you, man. I pre no, appreciate your friendship. I, 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 you know, I can't wait for you to be back here in Vegas, and then we'll do a little, a little thing together. Uh, yes, sir. Ourselves. But uh, have fun at the draft, man. You and Real Chris good. and everybody, man, have a blast at the draft. That's gonna. Will be do, awesome. man. Okay. Will do. All right, Raider Nation. Peace. We love you. Till the next time. We are out of here. Uh, I mean, I don't see how we can't be happy about that. Decomposing uh, it back. It should.